Section 1 and these are the names and explanation of the title verse proceeds from a discussion of the meaning of the quotation and they who are wise this we learn contains the secret of the firmament which illuminates the garden of Eden and the tree of life those imbued with supernal wisdom, the internal and external angels and the life-giving souls born of the tree of life, inhabit the tree and these beings merit eternal life the branches of the tree spread over all forms and beings of holiness and the fruit of the tree gives life to all the side of impurity however does not dwell in the tree of life and derives no nourishment from it there follows a description of the splendor of the tree which ascends to great heights and the one radiation in the tree which contains the colors white red and green rising in direct light and descending in returning light these colors come to rest only in the tree from this tree the twelve tribes of Israel went down into the exile of Egypt with the light that does not illuminate Malchut accompanied by multitudes of heavenly hosts the relevance of this passage a reading of this section reveals the connectedness of all forms and beings of holiness including humans animals plant life and even stars and constellations we are reminded that there is a clear distinction between the sides of evil and purity and it is incumbent on us to consciously position ourselves on the side of purity if we desire to merit the rewards of spiritual nourishment and everlasting life one and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob every man came with his household Shema 11 and they who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever Daniel 123 and they who are wise are those who observe the secret of wisdom shall shine means they illuminate and sparkle with the shine of supernal chakma and as the Brightness means the brightness and sparkle of the river that emanates from Eden. This is a concealed secret that is called firmament, for in it are located the stars and the constellations, the sun, which is the Zeir, and moon, which is the Mukba, and all the candles that give light, which are all the lights that are in the world's Briya, Yitzra, and Asiya. The brightness of this firmament illuminates the garden, which is Malchut, and the tree of life, which is Typhur, it stands in the center of the garden, that is in the central column, its branches, its fire, cover all forms, Nefesha, trees, Rishat, and spices, Neshamat, in the garden that are in fitted vessels, meaning they have three columns, right, left, and central, and all the animals of the field who are the external angels find shelter in its shadow, and all the birds of heaven, the internal angels sit under its branches, three, the splendor of the fruits of the tree, which are the souls that are born from IT, gives life to all it exists forever the other side of impurity does not dwell in it meaning that the other side has no nourishment from the tree of life which is zeir and in greatness only the side of holiness is nourished fortunate are those who taste from it for they live eternally as is written and he will take also from the tree of life and eat and will live forever Beersheet 322 they are called wise ones and merit life in this world and in the world to come for the splendor of this tree which is zeir and rises higher and higher when rising it is a distance of 500 parsangs when rising higher it spread is 600,000 parsangs in this tree there is one radiation which is malchut in which body all the colors white red and green which are the secret of the lights of chesed bura and typharet are found these colors rise in uriyash are direct light and descend in or chose a returning light and they do not settle in any place except in this tree because it is a secret of the central column 5. When the lights emanate from it from the tree to appear in the glow that does not illuminate these lights sometimes settle and sometimes do not settle in it they are sometimes found and sometimes not found because they settle in no other place except this tree from this tree emanated twelve tribes whose boundaries are therein contained they descended in this splendor that does not illuminate into the exile of Egypt with many supernal camps this is the meaning of and these are the names of the children of Israel section 2 the word of Hashem was from Rabbi Shimon's discourse on the title verse we learned that the word Hail is repeated in the title quotation because the first refers to the exile in Egypt and the second to the Babylonian exile Rabbi Shimon reinforces Ezekiel's role as a faithful prophet in his comparison of the Babylonian and the Egyptian exiles the Babylonian captivity we learned caused far more pain and suffering for the children of Israel and the Egyptian exile the children of Israel were able to endure the exile in Egypt patiently because they were familiar with the suffering of their father the righteous Jacob however the Babylonian exile brought suffering to the point of despair and they came to believe that God had deserted them as a result they were pitted in heaven and on earth and God called his entire celestial army together and sent them to be with the children of Israel in captivity when they arrived the spirit of prophecy descended on Ezekiel he announced his vision to the children of Israel but they did not believe him thus he was compelled to reveal his entire celestial vision to them at this their joy and love for God returned this is why Ezekiel revealed the whole of his vision and with the permission of God the relevance of this passage a reading of this section will strengthen our inner resistance to suffering and make us more aware of the increased spiritual help we are able to Receive in times of sorrow read in conjunction with Ezekiel it will open up the prophet's vision revealing the depths of hidden meaning contained therein and bestowing it upon us like a blessing. Six Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying the word of Hashem was had hey, oh, hey, oh, 11 he asks why is the word hey, oh, repeated twice we should further ask why Ezekiel revealed all that he saw if he was a faithful prophet should one whom the king brought into his sanctuary reveal what he sees he answered certainly Ezekiel was a faithful prophet and all that he saw was by faith and whatever he revealed was with the permission of the Holy One blessed be he and always as it should have been seven Rabbi Shimon said even though pain comes to him temporarily someone who is accustomed to suffer pain bears his yoke and does not worry but when pain comes to one who has spent all his days in pleasures and luxuries and is not accustomed to pain this is complete pain and deserves weeping. Eight Israel was accustomed to pain when descending into Egypt for all the days of that righteous man their father were spent in pain therefore they endured the exile properly and did not worry greatly but the exile of Babylon was in complete pain it was a pain for which both those above and below what nine those above what as it is written behold the mighty one shall cry outside Yeshua 337 those below cried as it is written by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down Tehillim 1371 they all wept over the exile of Babylon why because previously they had the luxuries of kings as is written the precious sons of Zion Yeshua 4210 as we learned Rabbi Yitzhak said what is meant by the verse on the mountains I will take up a weeping and wailing Yermeo 99 the mountains that are referred to are the loftiest in the world and who are these lofty mountains they are the precious sons of Zion comparable to fine gold and now they are descending into exile with grindstones on their necks and their hands tied behind and when they arrived in the exile of Babylon they thought that they would never have support because the Holy One blessed be he had forsaken them and would no longer watch over them. 11 we learned that Rabbi Shimon said at that moment the Holy One blessed be he summoned all his company all the chariots and camps and his officers and all the hosts of heaven and he said to them what are you doing here my beloved children are in the exile of Babylon. And you are here arise all of you to send to Babylon and I with you this is the meaning of thus says Hashem for your sake I have sent to Babylon Yeshua 4314 this refers to the Holy One blessed be he and will bring down all of them as fugitives but these are all the supernal chariots and camps 12 when they descended to Babylon the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit of prophecy rested on Ezekiel and he saw whatever he saw and said to Israel behold your master is here and all the Hosts of heaven and the chariots that have come to dwell with you they did not believe him until he was obliged to reveal all that he saw. I saw this I saw this and if he revealed more whatever he revealed was altogether necessary as soon as Israel saw this they rejoiced and when they heard the words from Ezekiel's mouth they no longer feared their exile at all because they knew that the Holy One blessed be he would not leave them and everything that he revealed he revealed with permission. 13 we learned that in each and every place to which Israel was exiled the Sheshanah was exiled with them and here by the exile of Egypt it is written and these are the names of the children of Israel Shemot 11 and he asks since it is written the children of Israel why does it conclude with Jacob it should have said who came with him and he answers these are the names of the children of Israel refers to the supernal chariots and camps that descended with Jacob together with the Shechanah into the exile of Egypt. This also answers why Heohei Yeshua 13 is written twice. The first Heo refers to the exile of Egypt, and the second Heo refers to the exile of Babylon. Section 3 Come with me from
Title verse he explains that this verse contains allusions to the mystical union between voice and speech. The relationship between these forms is one of interdependence as wisdom cannot be transmitted orally without the throat, breath, tongue, and lips, all of which are referenced in the verse. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section reveals the multiplicity of interpretations offered by the Zohar that the Torah was designed as human law and that it is in our own lives that it must be implemented. Understanding this, we will grow more conscious of our unique role and its accompanying obligations in this world, giving us greater access to the light that drives all shadows away and hastens our return to the home we yearn to see again. 14. And these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob. Every man came with his household. Shemot 11. Rabbi she opened the discussion saying, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride with me from Lebanon, look from it. Top of Amana from the top of Sinir and German from the lion's dance from the mountains of the leopards. Sher Hashem 48. This verse refers to the congregation of Israel, which is Malchut at the time that Israel left Egypt and approached M.T. Sinai to receive the Torah. The Holy One blessed be he said to her with me from Lebanon, meaning that she comes from the supernal Eden, which is Chachma that is called Lebanon. Bride means whole like the moon that is made whole by the sun with all the light and sparkle, which are Oyashar, direct light and or chosen returning light. Come with me from Lebanon in order that your children shall receive the Torah until Malchut can receive Chachma, which is called Lebanon. The children of Israel cannot receive the Torah because they lack the first three Sfirah 15. Look at Tashiri from the top of Amana. Tashiri has the same meaning as in there is not a present at Tashiri. Bring Ishmuel 97. Likewise, Tashiri means accepting. Present for your children from the top of Amana, meaning when they came in the beginning with supernal faith, have Amunah and said, All that Hashem has spoken, we will do and obey Shema 247, and they were equal to supernal angels as is written about them. Bless Hashem, you angels of his, you mighty ones who perform his bidding, here heading to the voice of his word. Tehillim 10,320. Then the congregation of Israel received the present, which is referred to in Tashiri from the top of Amana, which means additional Mokin 16 from the top of Sinir and Sher Hashem 48. This was Mount Sinai that they approached and gathered under, as is written, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Shema 1917 from the lion's den. Sher Hashem 48. These are the children of Seir that the Holy One blessed be he invited to receive the Torah, but they did not want to accept it from the mountains of leopards. If it are the children of Ishmael, as it is written, Hashem came from Sinai and rose. From Seir to them he shone forth from Mount Paran and he came from holy multitudes. Devarim 332 Paran is the children of Ishmael 17. What is the meaning of and he came from holy multitudes? Ibid we learned that when the Holy One blessed be he wanted to give the Torah to Israel camps of supernal angels came and said Hashem our ruler how majestic is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Tehillim 82 then they asked that the Torah be given to them and not to Israel 18 the Holy One blessed be he said to them are you mortal as written when a man shall die in a tent. Bar 1914 and if a man have committed a sin worthy of death and he is put to death. Devarim 2122 do you have sins that you need laws is there robbery or stealing among you as written you shall not steal. Shema 2013 have you women as written you shall not commit adultery. Ibid do you have falsehood that it says do not bear false witness against your neighbor. Ibid 14 do. You have coveting that it is written you shall not covet but 13 why are you requesting the Torah immediately they said Hashem our ruler how majestic is your name in all the earth but who have set your glory above the heavens is not written therefore it says and he came from holy multitudes Devarim 332 meaning that he came from negotiating with the angels then it says from his right hand went a fiery law for them which is the Torah which is likened to fire because of it. Judgment that is in it thus Seir and Ishmael did not want to accept it upon themselves and the angels could not accept because they do not have the quality of judgment 19 Rabbi Yossi explains this verse as referring to when the Sheshanah descended into exile in Egypt because of the question of Rabbi Abba who asks did she come from Lebanon indeed she ascends to Lebanon it should have said ascend with me to Lebanon he explains it to be at the time the Sheshanah descended from the place. Lebanon into exile in Egypt, therefore it says, Come with me from Lebanon. And in order to answer the previous question of why it does not say, Ascend with me to Lebanon, Rabbi Shimon said this verse is based upon the secret of the union of faith, which is Malchut. It says, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. Sure, Hashem 48, voice, which is Zeir and said to speech, which is Malchut with me, because voice comes to speech and leads it so as to be one without any separation for the voices. General being the light of Shesedim, which is present in all the great speeches, particular, being the light of Chakma, which is in the left column of Bana and which is present only in Malchut, therefore the general needs the particular as Zeir and does not have the three first Tyrod except for the light of Chakma in Malchut, and the particular needs the general for the light of Chakma that is in Malchut does not illuminate except when it is clothed in the light of Shesedim that it Receives from Zeir Anpin, which is general voice is not complete without speech and speech is not complete without voice. Therefore, it is written with me from Lebanon, my bride, because the essence of both comes from Lebanon, which is Bana 20. Look from the top of Amana. This is the throat, which is Bana, which receives from the palate, which is the secret of Chakma, from which breath emanates, which is Zeir Anpin, to complete everything from the secret of concealed and hidden Lebanon. That Zeir Anpin opens with the secret of the central column from the top of Shenir and German is the top and the middle of the tongue, which is the secret of Typhoret, and its tip is the secret of Dad that articulates speech from the dens of lions. These are the teeth, which are Netzash and hot from the mountains of the leopards. These are the lips, which is Malchut, and all these Sfirot, which are of Zeir Anpin, are the completion through which speech is completed, which is Malchut, the Nukba of Zeir. And in section 4 do not eat the bread of one who has an evil eye. Rabbi Shia explains that if the children of Israel in Egypt had not tasted the bread of the evil Egyptians they would not have suffered the oppression of the Egyptians and they would not have remained in exile when Rabbi Yitzhak points out that the exile was a fulfillment of a divine decree. Rabbi Shia reminds him that the decree does not mention Egypt specifically thus Rabbi Yitzhak understands and embraces the concept that one should not partake of the bread of an evil man. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section warns us against accepting or enjoying the gifts of those whose intentions are not pure as dire and unforeseen consequences may ensue by refusing to benefit from the fruits of evil we may avoid punishment and maintain our connection with the eternal 21 and these are the names of the children. Shema 11 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying do not eat. The bread of him who has an evil eye nor desire his dainties. Mishlei 236 Do not eat the bread of him who has an evil eye because the bread or benefit from that person who has an evil eye is not worth eating or benefiting from when Israel descended into Egypt. Had they not tasted the bread of Egypt they would not have been forsaken in exile in Egypt and the Egyptians would not have been able to harm them. 22 Rabbi Yitzhak said to him but it was decreed that the children of Israel should be in exile and it was incumbent that it be fulfilled even if they did not eat their bread. He said to him all this is right but it was not decreed that the exile be necessarily in Egypt since it is not written your seed will be a stranger in the land of Egypt but rather in the land that is not theirs. Beersheet 1513 and it could even be in a different land. 23 Rabbi Yitzhak said one with an who eats more than other people or one who follows his intestines meaning that he is Accustomed to fill his stomach with dainties should slaughter himself rather than eat his bread if he meets that evil-eyed one for there is no worse bread in the world than the bread of an evil-eyed person it is written because the Egyptians could not eat bread with the Hebrews because it was an abomination to Egypt. Beersheet 4332 meaning they could not look upon the Hebrews as they ate such as the bread of an evil-eyed section 5-3 who reject the Shechinah. This section discusses the three types of people who drive the Shechinah from this world and make it impossible for God to fix his abode here thereby causing prayers to go unanswered. These people are those who cohabit with women during menstruation, those who lie with heathens and those who intentionally abort the embryo thereby preventing it from coming to fruition. The world is judged for these sins we're told and meets with war, famine and pestilence as a result we learn that in
Wherever they go, the Shechinah is repelled by them. 25 And in addition, he brings bad sicknesses upon himself and on the children that he will beget as soon as a person comes near to a menstruating woman that impurity leaps onto him and remains stuck in all his limbs. The children that he begets at that moment draw on the spirit of impurity, and all his days he will be in impurity because the edifice and foundation of the baby is greater and stronger than all the impurities of the world. And as soon as a man comes near to a menstruating woman, her impurity leaps on him as is written, and her menstrual flow be upon him. Vayikra 1524 26 to one who lies with the daughter of a strange Gentile woman who inserts the sign of the Holy Covenant into another domain as written, and has married the daughter of a strange El Malachi 211. We have learned that there is no jealousy before Hashem like the zeal for of the covenant, which is the covenant of the Holy Name and the secret of the faith. It is written, and the people began to commit harlotry with the daughters of Moab. Bar 251, and immediately the anger of Hashem was kindled against Israel. Abid 327, the leaders of the people who know this and do not protest are punished first, as is written. Take all the chiefs of the people and hang them up before Hashem against the son. Before Rabbi Abba said what is meant by against the son, it means against the covenant that is called son of which it is said for Hashem Elohim. Is a sun and shield. Tehillim 8412. The sun and shield is the holy covenant in the same way that the sun shines and illuminates the world. The holy covenant shines and illuminates the body of man in the same way that a shield protects the man. So does the holy covenant protect the man, and there is no injury that can approach one who protects it. This is against the sun. 28. The leaders of the people are caught in every generation if they know of the sin and are not zealous in guarding against. It is incumbent upon them to be zealous in upholding this responsibility for the Holy One. Blessed be he in this covenant against all who would bring this holiness in another domain. About this is written, You shall have no other Elohim before me. Do not bow down to them and do not worship them. For I Hashem your Elohim am a zealous El Shema 203 to 5. And it is all the same zeal either one who lies with a Gentile woman or one who worships idols. Therefore the Shechinah is repelled by him. One who is false to the Holy Covenant that is sealed in the flesh of a man is as though he is false to the Holy Name. Because one who is false with the seal of the King, which is the Holy Covenant, is false to the King himself. Therefore he does not have any part with the Elohim of Israel unless it is through the power of constant repentance. 29 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying, And when they forgot Hashem their Elohim, Ishmuel 129, and, and they forsook Hashem, Shoftim 213, and he asks what is. And when they forgot and, and they forsook and he answers they repelled from themselves the holy covenant they circumcised but did not uncover until Deborah came and offered this by introducing prayer uncovering of the corona throughout Israel as it says in time of tumultuous strife have P-R-A-O-T in Israel when the people willingly offered themselves praise Hashem shoved him 5233 one who slays his children meaning the embryo that his wife conceived by having intercourse with her on the 90th day of conception which he slays the embryo and causes it to be killed in her belly or he does some action that causes her to abort the embryo he thus demolishes the building of the holy one blessed be he and his craft there are people who slay a person and such a one slays his children 31 the three evils done as explained the whole world cannot bear therefore the world deteriorates little by little although it is not known how it comes about the holy one blessed be he removes himself from the world and destruction and famine and death come to the world these are the three evils he slays his children he demolishes the structure of the king namely he abolishes the embryo which is the structure of the holy one blessed be he and he repels the Shechinah who robes in the world but can find no rest for these evils the holy spirit weeps and the world is judged woe to that man woe to him better that he was not created in the world 32 fortunate are Israel even though they were exiled in Egypt they were guarded against all these three from the impurity of menstruation from daughters of foreign deities and from killing the children they attempted actions in public to awaken the state of being fruitful and multiplying as he says further even though it was decreed that every son that is born you shall cast into the river Shema 122 there was not found among them a person who would kill an embryo in the stomach of a woman all the more so after birth through this merit Israel went out of exile. 33 They guarded themselves in Egypt from the impurity of menstruation. For Rabbi Shia taught what is the verse, and he made the labor of brass and its pedestal of brass of the mirrors of the women assembling. Shema 388 Why did the women merit this to bring the mirrors to the tabernacle? Because they guarded themselves in the exile in Egypt, so that after they became purified from the impurity of their menstruation, they came and adorned themselves and looked in the mirror at their husbands and aroused them to be fruitful and multiplying. So they were guarded against the impurity of menstruation in the exile of Egypt. 34 They were guarded in Egypt from the daughter of a foreign meaning foreign women, as is written, all the hosts of Hashem left. Shema 1241 And the tribes of Yah as a testimony to Israel. Tehillim 1224 Assuredly, for there is no mixture of a foreign nation, as written, these are the names of the children of Israel. Shema 11 The tribes of the children of Israel Yehoshia 45 Speak to the children of Israel All this points out that there is no foreign mixture in them 35 You may ask why it is written and he was the son of Egyptian man Vayikra 2410 to 11 And he answered certainly there was one and the verse made him known as written and he was the son of Egyptian man and his mother's name was Shelomit the daughter of the Brio of the tribe of Dan They were observant in Egypt to fulfill being fruitful and multiplying as it is written and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly Shema 17 Assuredly the children of Israel were guarded in Egypt from all these the impurity of menstruation foreign women and from killing children Therefore the children of Israel came into Egypt and the children of Israel went out to freedom It is written and these are the names of the children of Israel who came because came signifies not to remain but rather that they would go out from there and this is through the merit of observing the three things mentioned above section 6 every man came with his household while walking Rabbi Yossi asks Rabbi Lazar to explain Rabbi Shimon's interpretation of the verse and these are the names of the children of Israel if this verse refers to God and the heavenly hosts and chariots who went into captivity with Jacob he asks what is the meaning of each man and his household came Rabbi Lazar confirms Rabbi Shimon's interpretation and discusses the distinction between the house of Hashem and the house of the king this leads to a brief explanation of the shifting gender attributed to the king and the various grades of angels the higher level is always referred to as male which implies an active quality in relation to the lower level which is referred to as female and implies a passive receptive quality thus he concludes symbolically the title verse refers to the angels who are called his House Rabbi Yossi then draws from Rabbi Zelazer's explanation to interpret the verse. A closed garden is my sister as a reference to the children of Israel who must be tended and nurtured like a garden or vineyard. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section opens us to a greater understanding of the vast array of heavenly hierarchies that are concerned with implementing God's great plan. It serves to foster greater humility in our hearts and also greater determination to follow the path of truth and thus participate in the work rather than hindering its progress. 36 And these are the names of the children of Israel. Shema 11 Rabbi Lazer and Rabbi Yossi were traveling while they were walking. Rabbi Lazer said to Rabbi Yossi, Open your mouth and let your words illuminate. He said to him, If it pleases my master, may I ask him one thing that I find difficult? I have heard from the holy luminary that he used to say that, and these are the names of the children of Israel. Means Israel Saba who came into Egypt means all the hosts and camps of angels who descended into exile with Jacob as it is written with Jacob and according to this it is difficult why does it say every man came with his household Shema 11 do angels have households he said to him certainly it is so that the angels came each one with his household for so we have learned anyone who receives from another is considered as household to the giver therefore every man came with his household means the giver and the receiver which also applies to angels 37 Rabbi Lazer opened the discussion saying and when Solomon finished building the house of Hashem and the house of the king I may lodge him 91 he asks since it said the house of Hashem what is the meaning of the house of the king you may reason that of Solomon it is said the house of the king yet it is not so indeed the house of Hashem refers to the temple and the house of the king refers to the holy of holies 38 and he explains his words, the house of
With his household means male and female for every higher level among them is considered as male in relation to the lower level and every lower level is considered as female to the higher level and male to its lower level 39 and these are the names Shemot 11 Rabbi Yossi opened the discussion saying a garden locked is my sister my bride a spring shut up a fountain sealed Sure Hashem 412 a garden locked refers to the congregation of Israel the Mukba as Rabbi Lazar said just as one must cultivate a garden water and prune it so too does the congregation of Israel needs to be cultivated watered and pruned which is the service of the righteous to raise male and female waters and to prune the klipot that's around the Mukba therefore it is called garden and it is also called vineyard for Israel meaning the house of Israel which is the Mukba needs to be cultivated watered and pruned just as the vineyard does it is written for the vineyard of Hashem Sevoti. Is the house of Israel in Shayah 57 and it is written and he broke ground and cleared away its stones of it. 2 section 7 the wheels of the holy chariot travel in this long and highly complex section Rabbi Shimon describes the nature and workings of the holy chariot one of the quintessential emblems of Kabbalah and thus of enormous importance to anyone seriously practicing this discipline it cannot really be summarized but must be read carefully many many times. Before it will begin to unfold its profound meaning which sheds light on numerous related concepts like the three columns and the secret names of God the relevance of this passage the very act of studying the section arouses the will and mental capability to understand its deeper meanings opening long unused areas in the brain that are required to assimilate such knowledge truth here is at so potent a level that we can often feel it burn within our minds which signifies profound. Transformations are taking place that prepare the mortal flesh to merge with the immortal and eternal one at the end of days to suffer. And the 40 mission Rabbi Shimon said, We open our eyes and see the wheels of the holy chariot traveling in their travels, and the sound of a song sweet to the ears, which is fine and good for the heart, symbolizing Malchud, which ascends and descends and walks, but does not travel. Thousands upon thousands tremble, and tens upon tens of thousands start with the singing of Chakma from below upwards. 41 to that pleasant sound from the traveling of the wheels stand 450,000 eyed ones who gather into one group on the right side. They see it, do not see, and are completely present. The two other sides, which are left and center, turn white because of them, meaning that their judgments, which are red, are changed because they receive Shesedim from the right column, and on the left side are 250,000. 42 the 250,000 mentioned earlier, the weeper sob and wail. From their dwellings whence they come and they commence with judgment and conclude with judgment they sob a second time and the judgment is revealed and the books are opened to look at the judgments that are in them at that moment the judge who was standing over them ascends and sits on the chair of judgment and the singing subsides before the judgment is concluded 43 here he explains the two actions of the right column and says those who have eyes of the right side encircle together with 18,000 others they blow that is drosh acidim which is called blowing a simple sound and then those who are receiving chakma from the right column do not sob or wail they commence with singing drawing chakma and the 250,000 ones who sob tremble 44 he blows and draws chasidim a second time which is the second action on the right column without sobbing the protectors eeir and travels from that throne of judgment and sits in the throne of mercy to draw many chasidim at that moment he meaning Z-E-I-R and mentions the holy name Y-U-D-H-A Bob fully spelled to amount numerically to 45 Y-U-D Bob Dalat Hayalat Bob Aleph Bob Hayalat for with this name life is drawn for everyone 45 here he explains the two actions of the central column he commences Z-E-I-R and which is the central column saying one time Yad Bob Dalat Hayalat Bob Aleph Bob Hayalat Y-U-D Bob Dalat Hayalat Bob Aleph Bob are the secret of the three columns right left and central that are included in Z-E-I-R and the last Hayalat I-S the that receives from them as is written and proclaimed the name of Hashem Shema 345 the holy wheels of the chariot commences before and thousands of thousands which is the secret of Chakma and tens upon tens of thousands which is the secret of Shesedim attire them and recite songs of angels praise and say blessed is the honor of Hashem from his dwelling place so that the shall be blessed from Z-E-I-R and and receive from it chakma tired in Chesedim 46, then that garden namely the Sheshana comes, which is hidden in 250 worlds. This is the precious Sheshana in its shine of chakma that goes out from the shine of chakma and combines and hides in the shine of Chesedim and the shine is drawn from it to the four directions, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Malchud, which are the four branches, in order to provide for them in Mokin. This is the secret of the verse and from hence it was parted and branched into four streams. Bear she 210 and the shine is drawn from it to all that are below and it is called the Garden of Eden 47. That old man commenced speaking again referring to Zeir and for after it ascended to Eric and it is also called old and this is the second action of the central column which is Zeir and he protects everything meaning both the drawing of chakma and the drawing of Chesedim and mentions the name of Babala and they all. Commence by drawing the lights from the thirteen measures of mercy who has seen these strong lights which are the highest of the high strongest of the strong the holy chariots and the heavens and their hosts tremble and shake with great fear and praise the holy name and recite poetry fortunate are the souls of the righteous who are present in this luxuriousness and know this about this it is said who would not fear you king of the nations for to you it is fitting your male one hundred and seven end of Tisipta. 48 Rabbi Shimon said when the Shechanah descended into Egypt one beast of the four living creatures of the holy chariot whose name is Yisrael descended in the form of that old man mentioned in the previous verse who is Zeir and, and forty two holy attendants descended with it meaning forty two angels and each one had a holy letter from the holy name of Mem bet forty two these angels that attend the living creatures whose name is Yisrael are called the children of Yisrael and are drawn from the name of Mem bet forty two which is the secret of the first three Sfirot of that living creatures and they all descended with Jacob into Egypt this is what is written and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob Shema 11 Rabbi Yitzhak said this is the meaning of the children of Israel followed by E.T. Jacob instead of with Jacob 49 Rabbi Yehuda asked Rabbi Lazar the son of Rabbi Shimon you learned from your father the portion of and these are the names that he explained by the supernal secret and that the children of Israel are 42 holy angels as explained above so what is the meaning of every man came with his household angels do not have a household Rabbi Lazar said to him what my father said means the supernal angels those who are higher than those who are lower among them this is what is written every man came with his household the higher angel is called man and the one lower than him is called his household likewise my father said that all the angels in the higher level are called males and those in the level below them are called females and are called household because a female receives from the male and she is like a house to him. Section 8 With Jacob every man came with his household in reply to the question posed by Rabbi Yitzhak. Rabbi Lazar affirms that the Shechanah did indeed accompany Jacob into Egypt. A discussion ensues in which Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yehuda each side. Verses that indicate that thousands of celestial beings accompanied the Shechanah. Rabbi Lazar explains that in the verse and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot about 600,000 footmen. Shemot 1237 The reference to the children of Israel is an allusion to the celestial host God's servants who naturally went with God when he went down into Egypt with Jacob as was promised. Moreover we are told that the children of Israel hurried to depart from Egypt because they Realize these celestial beings were detained for their sake. Rabbi Abba then cites the verse Come and behold the works of Hashem who has made desolations have Shemot in the earth. Talim 469 and explains that the word desolations can also be read as names in corroboration with Rabbi Shia's statement that earthly counterparts exist for all that is in heaven. Rabbi Abba concludes that just as there are holy names in earth, so are there holy names on heaven. Thus, and these are the names of the children of Israel refers to the angels who came to Egypt. Rabbi Yehuda then provides an interpretation of the verse Behold the litter that of Shlomo Shur Hashirim 37 to reveal that this verse also refers to the angels that went with the Sketchanah into Egypt. Finally, while traveling with Rabbi Yusi, Rabbi Shia deduces that since all of Israel went with Moses to meet his father in law, God's heavenly company would certainly
Ram ceased to code about 600,000 footmen, but it does not say 600,000, rather, it says about 600,000. This implies that as the 600,000 below left, so those 600,000 holy chariots from above who were with them left 51 come. And behold, this is the secret of the matter. When those holy chariots and holy encampments departed, the children of Israel then saw and knew they were being detained from leaving because of them, since they were not leaving, and all the haste of Israel was for them. This is the meaning of what is written and could not delay. Shemot 1239, it should have said, and they did not want to delay, but instead it is written and could not, and this was out of necessity because of the host of angels that were tarrying for them. And it is actually understood from here that the children of Israel in the phrase were all the children of Israel of the firmament, namely the angels, thus it is written, the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob Shemot 11 it does not state and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with him but and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob meaning who came to Egypt in the beginning referring to the angels as stated previously and with whom did they come with Jacob 52 Rabbi Yehuda states we have a situation involving a minor to major inference at the time when Jacob was saved from Laban it is written and Jacob went on his way and angels of Elohim met him Bershi 322 then when he descended into Egypt the Holy One blessed be he said I will go down with you into Egypt Bershi 464 and if the master descends is it not the rule all the more so that his attendants will descend with him thus it is written who came into Egypt with Jacob Shemot 11 instead of with him Rabbi Yaakov of the village of Shin and asks in the name of Rabbi Abba who are the children of Israel mentioned here. And he answers those who are actually called the children of Israel, namely the tribes. 53 Rabbi Abba opened the discussion to bring proof to his word, saying, Come and behold the works of Hashem who has made desolations have Shemot in the earth. Talim 469 Do not pronounce it Shemot, but rather Shemot lit names. This follows a similar thought expressed by Rabbi Shia that is the Holy One, blessed be he has done in heaven, so has he done on earth, just as there are holy names in heaven, so are their holy names here on earth. These are the names of the tribes of which it is written, These are the names of the children of Israel. Shemot 1154 Rabbi Yehuda said that 600,000 supernal angels descended with Jacob on the day that Jacob descended into Egypt. Rabbi Yehuda commenced to bring proof of his words, Behold the litter that of Solomon, 60 valiant men are round about it. Sure, Hashem 37 There are locks that are forged to accommodate a key, and the keys turn inside. The lock the locks are in the seventh sphere of Malchut and they are carved in the sixth sphere of Yezid. This is the meaning of what is written. Sixty valiant men are round about it. Fifty-five he continues to explain the entire verse and says, Behold, the litter refers to the Sheshana, which is called Bed of Solomon. Shlomo refers to the king to whom the peace had shalom belongs. Zeirn and the central column that brings peace between right and left. Sixty valiant men are round about it are the six hundred thousand supernal angels of the host of the Sheshana that descended with Jacob into Egypt. The reason that their number is sixty is because the Sheshana has the shape of the key of the mighty men of Israel refers to supernal Israel, which is Zeirn and for Bureau my eyes drawn to them from there the verse, and these are the names of the children of Israel. Every man came with his household refers to them and their customs because came with his household means his Ways and customs for every angel has a particular task after which he is named. As we know, 56 Rabbi Shia was traveling from Ishajalot. He was riding on a donkey, and Rabbi Yossi was with him. Rabbi Shia dismounted, waving his hands toward Rabbi Yossi. He said to him, If the people of the world knew the great respect given to Jacob when the Holy One blessed be, he said to him, I will descend with you into Egypt. Bershi 464, they would lick the dust in the three parts hangs around his grave. Thus, our teachers, the greatest men in the world, the sages of the Mishnah, expound upon it. It is written, Moses went out towards his father in law, Shemot 187, and they explain when Aaron saw Moses going out, he joined him, Eliezer and the princes and the elders accompanied him, and the heads of the house of the fathers and men of Mark in the congregation, and all Israel accompanied them. So it came about that all of Israel went out to meet Yitro because who would see Moses and Aaron and the princes going? Out and not accompany them thus because of Moses they all went out now if this occurred because of Moses when the Holy One blessed be he said I will descend with you into Egypt certainly the whole heavenly court descended with him now it is comprehensible why in the beginning the Holy One blessed be he said I will descend with you into Egypt which insinuates that he alone would descend and afterwards it says and these are the names of the children of Israel which means all the heavenly court for by Moses also it is written and Moses went out yet all Israel went out with him section 9 the word of Hashem was upon meeting Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shia immersed in discussion Rabbi Abba offers an additional verse to reinforce their conclusion that the angels accompanied the children of Israel into Egypt he alludes to the vision Ezekiel revealed to the children of Israel to prove that God had not and would not abandon them in captivity in Babylon just as God was with them in Babylon, Rabbi Abba explained so he and his heavenly company went with them into Egypt. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section reminds us that God never abandons the righteous, especially during times when we most despair, fostering in us the confidence required to persevere in the task of bringing down divine light into a world of shadows. It is invaluable for those who may feel their energy sapped or their resolve weakening, granting them strength and it. Courage to always stand after a fall and carry on in the truth rather than succumb to inducements of an easier life offered by those whose real purpose is to thwart the great plan imprisoning God's people in this cage of materialism. 57 While they were still traveling, Rabbi Abba met them. Rabbi Yossi said, Behold, the Sheshanah is here because one of the masters of the mission is here with us. Rabbi Abba asked, What are you engaged in? Rabbi Yossi said, I will descend with you into Egypt. Bershi 464. When Jacob descended into Egypt it is written now these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt. Shemot 11 you learn that they all descended with Jacob into Egypt. The implication is that all the chariots and hosts descended with Jacob into Egypt and not the Holy One blessed be he alone as is implied in the verse I will descend with you into Egypt. 58 Rabbi Abba said to him yet this one was alone he opened the discussion saying the word of Hashem came to Ezekiel the priest the son of Buzi in the land of Chaldeans by the river Kebar Yeshizkel 13 there are three difficulties here one difficulty is that we learn that the Shechinah does not dwell outside the land of Israel while the prophecy of Ezekiel is in the land of Chaldeans another difficulty is that he was not trusted like Moses as is written for he is the trusted one in all my house Bimidbar 127 but he Ezekiel revealed and publicized all the treasures of the king more than Moses and another. Difficulty is that apparently he was not of a wholesome mind for if he was of a wholesome mind he would not have revealed so much. 59 he answers rather this is the explanation of our mission heaven forbid that he revealed more than necessary because Ezekiel was perfect in his opinion whatever he revealed was with the permission of the Holy One blessed be he and it was necessary that he reveal whatever he revealed for so we have learned one who is accustomed to bear pain as mentioned earlier in the Zohar verses 7 to 14 and all was necessary and never did the Holy One blessed be he leave the children of Israel in exile before he came and caused his Shechina to dwell with them and of course it was with Jacob who was descending into exile that the Holy One blessed be he and his Shechina and the supernal Holy Ones and the chariots all descended with Jacob as it is written who came into Egypt with Jacob Shemot 11 and with this is the answer to the question of Rabbi Yosi above. That even though it says I will descend with you into Egypt, it does not imply he alone, but rather with his Shechina and his hosts and his chariots. For this is the way of the Holy One, blessed be he in all exiles, as Ezekiel revealed by the exile of Babylon. Section 10. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. In this section, Rabbi Yitzhak first explains that he who studies Torah and performs good deeds will inherit a complete world, while he whose good deeds are incomplete will inherit according to what he deserves. He who does not study Torah or acquire any good deeds will inherit neither this world nor the world to come. Following this, a discussion of the title verse begins. Rabbi Yehuda explains that God addressed these words to the Shechina in the upper sanctuary and announced that the children of Israel would rece
Acquire good deeds will inherit a complete world and all who do not study Torah in this world and do not do good deeds will not inherit this or that, meaning not this world and not the world to come you may wonder why it is said either he inherits a complete world or he loses two worlds and yet we have learned there is one who inherits according to his station and what is deserving to him meaning there is a middle way Rabbi Yitzhak said we did not learn that he does not have two worlds except for one who has no good deed at all but one who does have good deeds even though they are incomplete inherits his world according to what he deserves both in this world and in the world to come 61 Rabbi Yehuda said if people knew the love that the Holy One blessed be he has for the children of Israel they would roar like lions to pursue him and adhere to him at the time that Jacob descended into Egypt the Holy One blessed be he summoned his company of angels and said to them all of you Descend into Egypt and I will descend with you. The Shechinah said, Master of the universe, are there hosts without a king? For the Shechinah is considered the king of angels because they all flow from her. He said to her, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. You will come with me from Lebanon, from the place of Eden, which is Chachmah, that is refined in all its actions. Bride is the Shechinah, which is the bride under the canopy. It follows what we have learned that Rabbi Yehuda said, What is the meaning of And it came to pass on the day that Moses had finished Hephelo. Bimid bar 71 Kelo is spelled without a vav, for this is the day that the Kalalit bride enters the Shepha wedding canopy. And the bride is the Shechinah, which is in the temple. The bride under the Shepha 62 with me from Lebanon. Sher Hashem 48, meaning from the place of the supernal temple, look from the top of Amana. He asks from the top of what and answers from the head top of those who have faith have Amuna. And who are the Jacob and his sons from the top of Senir and German, for they are destined to receive my Torah from Mount German, meaning Mount Sinai, which is called German, to protect them in exile, which is called German, derived from destruction. Hetram from the lion's dens is in reference to the nations that serve idols who are compared to lions and leopards that oppress Israel with all types of hard labor. 63 Rabbi Abba said, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. And he asks, Is she coming from Lebanon? Yet she is going up to Lebanon and she is ascending to Lebanon to receive Chakma. Thus it should have said, Ascend with me to Lebanon. Therefore Rabbi Abba said, When the Shechinah descended into Egypt, 600,000 ministering angels descended with her and the Holy One, blessed be he was first as is written, and their king passed before them and Hashem at their head. Misha 213 64 Rabbi Yitzhak said, Come with me from Lebanon, my bride refers to the Shechinah with me from Lebanon means from the place of the supernal temple which is by the look from the top of Amana means from the place of the temple above and the temple below for Rabbi Yehuda said the Shechinah has never moved from the western wall of the temple as is written behold he stands behind our wall Sher Hashem 29 and he is the top of Amana for the whole world from the top of Sinir and German means from the place whence the Torah went out to the world meaning Mount Sinai which is called German and why I ask this in order to protect the children of Israel the lion's dens Shem Hashem 48 are the nations who worship idols Rabbi Yudan says the lion's dens refers to scholars who study the Torah in the Torah academies and synagogues who are lions and leopards in the Torah section 1170 souls in reference to the title verse Rabbi she asks Rabbi Shimon to explain the significance of the number 70 and why the Torah First enumerates the sons of Jacob as twelve and then as seventy. Rabbi Shimon's explanation is that seventy corresponds to the seventy nations of the world and the nation of Israel was equal to all of them. Furthermore, we learn that just as the world cannot exist without the four wines, the other nations of the world cannot exist without Israel as the twelve tribes illuminate the seventy nations. The relevance of this passage a reading of the section will reveal that the privileged and illuminating role of the nation of Israel and the dependent position of the other nations means that the righteous and those following the path of truth carry a heavy burden since the world is sustained by their goodness. This will summon up reserves of strength within us because so many depend upon our actions for their existence and we cannot afford to fail them for in failing them we are failing God. 65 Rabbi Shia was sitting before Rabbi Shimon he said to him in the beginning why did it? Torah count twelve sons of Jacob yet afterwards they were seventy as is written all the souls of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were seventy Beersheet 4627 and what is the reason that they were seventy and not more Rabbi Shimon said to him it corresponds to the seventy nations in the world they were one nation equal to them all sixty six and he also said to him come and behold let us consider the keys that illuminate their branches are set in their travels meaning when they are illuminating in the journeys of the three columns and are appointed over the seventy nations that emanate from twelve engravings and knots that surround them in their travels in the order of the three columns striking against the four directions of the world that is Jesus Bure Tiferet and Malchut this is what is written he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel Devarim 328 meaning that the number twelve that is in the children of Israel illuminates to the seventy nations and this is what is written as the four winds of the heavens have I spread you abroad Zechariah 210 so that the three columns illuminate in all the four directions, Chesed and Burah Tiferet and Malchut, to show that they exist for the sake of the children of Israel who are the twelve tribes as mentioned earlier it does not say in the four but rather as the four because as it is impossible for the world to exist without the four winds so it is impossible for the world to exist without Israel section 12 that let the feet of the ox and the ass Rabbi Abba opens a discussion of the meaning of the title verse he explains that the children of Israel are worthy in the sight of God because they so beside all waters that is according to righteousness references then made to the book of Rabbi Yubasaba it describes the chamber of guilt which is of the side of mercy and the chamber of merit which is of the other side children. Longevity and sustenance we learn do not depend on either chamber but rather on Basil the children of Israel cleave to the side of holiness thereby banishing the evil symbolized by the union of the ox and the ass the relevance of this passage a reading of this section provides insight into recondite meanings contained in the scripture enabling us to avoid drawing judgment together with impure intentions since this path leads to great suffering and destruction and will also heighten our powers of discernment helping us to make better wiser choices in both this life and the eternal 167 now there arose a new king Shemad 18 Rabbi Abba commenced blessed are you that sow beside all waters that let the feet of the ox and the ass range freely Yeshayah 3220 fortunate are Israel who Hashem desired more than all the nations and, and who he brought close to him as it is written Hashem has chosen you to be a special possession to himself Devarim 142 it is also written for Hashem's Portion is his people Jacob is a lot of his inheritance to Barim 329 and Israel cleave to the Holy One blessed be he as it is written but you that did cleave to Hashem your Elohim are alive every one of you this day Barim 4468 and they are therefore righteous before him because they sow beside all waters and he asks what is beside all waters and he says they sow for righteousness have Tzedakah meaning they elevate Mayim and female waters to draw Mokin into Malchut so it will be called Tzedakah for without Mokin it is called Tzedakah just as without Hay and of one who sows for righteousness it is written for your kindness is great above Hebmiel the heavens have Shamayim Tehillim 1085 Miel Shamayim also means beside to all waters have Alkol Mayim and what is above the heavens it is the world to come which is Bina that is above Zeir and which is called heavens and Israel sow seeds meaning they elevate Mayim and female waters beside lit above. Above all waters which is by in order to draw Mokin to Malchut so that it should be called Tzedakah 69 in the book of Rabbi Yubasaba it says as follows it is written this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the sentence by the words of the Holy Ones Daniel 414 for all the verdicts in this world and all the decrees and all the questions are all in one chamber where 72 judges deliberate the sentences of the world and that chamber is called the chamber of merit because when a person is judged his merit is presented first 70 this is not so in the level of the other side where there is a place called guilt because all the actions in that place are of the serpent the wife of harlotry and their only purpose is to condemn the person and to slander the serpent before his master 71 those that are in the chamber of merit are called sweet waters clear waters those that are in the chamber of guilt are called the bitter water the bitter water that causes the curse be midbar 518 in that chamber of merit these three
Side of all supernal holy ones when the ox and ass join together they become two evil plagues of the world the ox is the side of severe judgment and originates in the cleaving of the side of holiness when the ass joins with it from the other side of the clipot they become two evil plagues of the world 74 hence Shimon had in him the strength of severe judgment as he had in himself the aspect of the ox and when they combine the world cannot tolerate it therefore you shall not plow with it. Ox and an ass together Devarim 2210 Therefore Jacob sent this to Esau I have oxen and asses Bear she 326 Meaning that he subjugated them to holiness And had Jacob not humbled himself A great fear would have fallen on Esau Because he had the power to overpower these two forces Section 13 Now there arose a new king The section begins with an interpretation of the title verse found in the book of Rabbi Hamnon Esau From this we learn that the rise to power of any Nation is a result of the subjugation of the children of Israel as seen in the examples of Egypt, Babylon and Rome. This is because the nation of Israel is equal to all the other nations combined and therefore when a nation dominates the children of Israel its celestial chieftain gains dominion over the chieftains of the other nations according to Rabbi Shia the impending rise or fall of a nation is announced on earth through small children, simple-minded people and the behavior of birds. Thirty days before the event while these proclamations usually go unnoticed if a nation is deserving the leaders receive news of the imminent disaster so that they can call their people to repent and return to God while there is still time when a nation falls from power Rabbi Yitzhak explains God first punishes its celestial representative the chieftain passes through a river of fire his power vanishes and the event is proclaimed above and later below this relates to Rabbi Yossi's profound. Experience which he describes to Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Abba, and Rabbi Yehuda while they sit at the gate of Lita that morning. Rabbi Yossi tells him a bird informed him of the raising up of three rulers on earth and the deposing of an existing ruler. When asked about their identity, the bird threw down three arrows from his right wing and one from his left wing. On examining these arrows, Rabbi Lazar interprets their significance as an indication of the impending domination of the Egyptians and the children of Israel by three great rulers in Rome. Three children who pass by the rabbis in succession and announce imminent doom for Egypt reinforce this interpretation. This leads to a discussion of the importance of sages without whom man would not be able to understand the Torah or God's commandments. Finally, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon discuss the title verse, revealing that the new king is a reference to the Pharaoh who, like a cash grocer, rose through the power of his wealth and not. Because he was worthy the relevance of this passage a reading of this section attunes us more fondly to the wisdom that God reveals to us through condits we often fail to recognize heightening the significance of all things around us by making us more fully conscious of the Creator's presence within his creation in time we will come to see that no thing is without meaning and value and that previously ignored or even despised aspects of the world have much to teach us if we do but pay attention to them 75 now there arose a new king over Egypt Shema 18 in the book of Rabbi Hamnon Asaba it is written thus what is the meaning of now there arose a new king over Egypt come and behold all the nations of the world and all the kings in the world did not become secure in their dominion save for the sake of the children of Israel Egypt did not rule over the whole world until the children of Israel came and entered into exile there then they overpowered all the nations of it. World Babylon did not acquire power over all the nations of the world only so that the children of Israel would be in exile by the Medum acquires power over all the nations of the world only so that Israel will be exiled among them for these nations were once humble among the other nations and were lower than all of them and because of Israel they became strong 76 Egypt was lowlier than all the nations for it is written of them from the house of bondage Shema 202 they are called actual slaves because the Egyptians were formerly lowlier than all the nations Babylon was lowly as it is written behold the land of Chaldeans this people was not Yeshua 2313 Edom was lowly as it is written behold I make you small among the nations you are greatly despised Obadiah 1277 and they all received power only on account of Israel for when the children of Israel were in exile among them they immediately become powerful over all the nations in the world what is it? Reason because Israel alone are comparable to all the nations in the world when Israel began their exile in Egypt. Egypt immediately experienced an elevation and their rule was strengthened above all the nations as it is written now there arose a new king over Egypt. Shema 18 arose means they rose and became strong and the angel who is the minister appointed to the rule of Egypt was strengthened and rose he was given power and dominion over all who were appointed over the other nations. Because dominion I is given first to the one who is appointed above and then to his nation below therefore the verse says now there arose a new king over Egypt this is the one who was appointed over them he was new because until that time he had no dominion over the other nations then he was raised to rule over all the nations in the world and this was fulfilled for three things the earth is disquieted for a slave when he becomes king Mishlei 3021 because the Egyptians were slaves 78. Rabbi Shia said 30 days before power comes to a nation on earth or before a crisis comes to a nation on the earth it is announced in the world sometimes it is given over to the mouth of a child and sometimes to people who have no sense and sometimes it is given over to the birds and they announce in the world and nobody listens to them and when people are righteous it is given over to the leaders the righteous of the world so they may notify the people and repent to their master and if it people are not righteous then it is as we said 79 Rabbi Lazar was once sitting in the gate of the city of Lod with Rabbi Abba Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yossi said I will tell you what I saw this morning I got up with the morning light and I saw a bird that is an angel that was flying it raised itself three times and lowered itself one time and was saying exalted ones exalted ones on this day the firmaments are soaring three upright overseers rule over the world and one is Sitting yet not sitting he also wants to stand and not sit he passed through a burning fire his position is removed and his dominion removed and three pillars supernal rulers stand over the world 80 I threw a clod of earth towards that bird and I said to it bird bird tell me of the three who are appointees and the one who was removed from rulership who are they it cast three arrows at me from the right wing which is the secret of Zeir and and one from the left which is the secret of it. Look but I did not know to what it was alluding meaning I did not know the new thought it was trying to teach me 81 Rabbi Lazar took those arrows lowered them to his nostrils and blood started to flow from them an allusion to judgment colored red he said surely there are three rulers among the nations standing in the city of Rome on earth because they are drawn from Chesed Bura and Tiferet of Zeir and and they will impose evil laws against Israel from the side of the Romans this means that the blemish that Israel caused in Shesed Bura and Tiferet enabled the Romans to destroy the temple and to impose evil decrees he took that arrow that the bird threw from its left wing smelled it and a black fire burst forth from it this is a left color that is unique to the Nukba which is not included in the three colors of the rainbow white red and green which come from the three columns Shesed Bura Tiferet and do not contain black he said they have deposed the rule of it Egyptians who draw the light of the left from above down in the future a Roman king will pass through the whole land of Egypt and will appoint in Egypt officers and warriors he will destroy buildings that were built and drawn from the left side and will rebuild ruins that were destroyed because they were from the right and Egypt had no desire for them Rabbi Lazar threw those arrows to the ground meaning that he threw their illumination from above down the three arrows fell upon the one from it Left side and the one from the left side was burnt and the three arrows of the right side remained as shall be explained 82 while they were still sitting a young boy passed by and was reading the burden of Egypt behold Hashem rides on a light cloud and comes to Egypt Yeshua 191 his friend a second boy passed and said the land of Egypt will be desolate a third friend passed and said the wisdom of Egypt is lost they saw that the arrow of the left wing was burnt and the arrows that were on it were not burnt 83 Rabbi Lazar said that of the bird and that of the boys are all one thing for the children with their verses also said that Egypt which is the left column that illuminated from above down will become desolate and will be destroyed this is all a supernal prophecy that was given to birds and children and the holy one blessed be he wanted to show us the supernal secrets he effected and this he has sent to us this is what is written surely Hashem Elohim will do nothing without revealing a secret to his servants the prophets Amos 37 84 sages are always superior to prophets because the Holy Spir
Announcement is made throughout the whole world until it reaches the birds and children and those fools among the people who know not what they speak. 87 Now there arose a new king. Shem 18 Rabbi Shia said a new king means actually literally new Rabbi Yossi says that it means that he made new decrees that no king had decreed until now who did not know Joseph. If it means that he did not know all the good that Joseph did in Egypt as is written and Joseph brought the money to the house. A pharaoh bear she 4714 and he kept them alive during the years of famine he did not remember and pretended not to know all this 88 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda were sitting and studying Torah before Rabbi Shimon Rabbi Yehuda said it is written now there arose a new king over Egypt we learned that he arose of himself one who was humbled arose to reign even though he was not worthy of ruling but by the power of riches he arose Rabbi Shimon said so it was similar to a Kashgarosh who was not worthy of ruling but he arose to rule by himself and he arose by the power of riches and wanted to destroy Israel from the world this is also the case with Pharaoh he was not worthy of ruling yet he arose and ruled by himself and wanted to destroy Israel from the world as is written and he said to his people come let us deal wisely with them Shemot 19 to 10 when a king arises above meaning the appointed angel then a king arises below section 14 the burden of Egypt on their way to Tzibri Rabbi Lazar Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yossi encounter a Jew who quotes the title verse and then asks them why God himself came into Egypt rather than simply exercising his will from above the reason we're told is that God came for the sake of the Shechina to raise her up as he would do when the Roman captivity of the children of Israel ended God did not go to the Shechina during her exile with the children of Israel in Babylon because of their sins in Egypt however. They remain pure whosoever holds the children of Israel captive becomes accountable to God and he punishes their supernal representatives and those who worship them below God punished Egypt severely in spite of the relatively good treatment given to the children of Israel at first we may therefore conclude that all the nations who have oppressed the children of Israel will receive punishment including Rome and Assyria, the nation that oppressed them without cause and stole their land. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section makes us more zealous to follow the path of righteousness by reminding us that all those who deserve to be punished severely shall receive their just deserts in the end none can escape the consequences of his actions because there is no one who can hide from the eyes of God or his own conscience this instills gratitude in us for God's mercy for finding ourselves born into a life in which we are able to approach the light and be aware of the still small voice within correcting our path before we lose our way and waste the precious gifts bestowed upon us 89 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yossi were journeying from Tiberias to Tzipari while they were walking a Jew met them and said the burden of Egypt behold Hashem rides on a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence Yeshua 191 come and behold all the kings of the world and all the nations of the world are considered as nothing before the Holy One blessed be he as is written and all the inhabitants of the earth are considered as nothing and he does according to his will in the host of heaven Daniel 432 here in Egypt despite all these acts of power and the raised hand that the Holy One blessed be he revealed it is written behold Hashem rides upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt what is the difference this was not so by all the nations of the world rather the Holy One blessed be he ordered a decree and it was done yet here in Egypt he himself came to carry punishment upon them as is written and shall come into Egypt and and I will pass over the land of Egypt I am Hashem Shemot 1212 90 and he answers because the king came to take out the queen that was there and because of the honor of the queen who is the Shechinah that descended with them to exile he came since the Holy One blessed be he wanted her honor he came to raise her and extended his hand to her so as to lift her up as the Holy. One blessed be he will do at the end of the exile of Edom 91 Rabbi Yisa said if it be so that the Holy One blessed be he came to Egypt because of the queen why was it not also thus in the exile of Babylon when the queen was also there he said to him we have learned that the sin caused it because they married foreign women and they brought the Holy Covenant into foreign domain therefore the miracles and signs were lost from them that should have been done for them not so in the exile of Egypt where they were all the tribes of Yah the children of Israel came into exile and the children of Israel left exile meaning without sin 92 by the exile of Edom the Holy One blessed be he wishes to be honored in the world and to come himself to uplift the matron and shake the dust from her woe to the one who is present before him at the time when he will say shake the dust off yourself arise and sit down O Jerusalem lose yourself from the bands of your neck Yeshua 522 who are the king and the people who will stand up before him 93 and the idols of Egypt shall be moved from before him Yeshua 191 it is written the idols of Egypt of the stones and trees of which they made the idols but on all the levels of the supernal appointees and those who worship them below they are moved and punished wherever Israel exiled the Holy One blessed be he seeks them and they are accepted from among those nations 94 come and behold it is written thus said Hashem my people went down a time to Egypt to sojourn there and Ashur oppressed them without cause Yeshua 524 this I asked the complaint that the Holy One blessed be he made against Assyria he said see what Assyria has done to me to Egypt upon whom I have rendered all these punishment my people descended to sojourn among them and the Egyptians accepted them among them and gave them the best of the land which is the land of Goshen even though the Egyptians persecuted them in exile they did not take away the land from them as is written only in the land of Goshen where the children of Israel were Shemot 926 it was the best part of the land of Egypt as is written in the best part of the land in the land of Ramses Bereshit 4711 which was in Goshen moreover they caused them no loss as is written but of the cattle of the children of Israel Shemot 96 so we see that they did not steal their animals yet still altogether they were punished with many punishments 95 and Ashur oppressed them without cause Yeshua 524 for they cast them in the land at the end of the world and took away their land now the Egyptians who had done so many favors for the children of Israel were punished with so many punishments then Ashur Edom and the other nations that oppressed them and killed them and took away their money would most certainly be punished for the Holy One blessed be he desired to glorify his name over them as is written I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I Will make myself known Yachiskel 3823 this happened in Egypt with one king and in the complete redemption that will come about it will be with all the kings of the world section 15 the coming of Messiah in this long and complex section Rabbi Shimon first describes the time when God shall make himself known throughout the world which is a prelude to the arrival of the Messiah we learn that when God reveals his glory to the world all the nations and their kings will rise up against the children of Israel and the children of Israel will suffer greatly a pillar of fire reaching from heaven to earth will appear for 40 days at this time the Messiah will rise in Galilee and begin to wage war on the world from there because this is where the devastation first began the earth will shake and everybody will seek refuge in caves and rocky places as alluded to in the verse and they shall go into the holes after 40 days a bright star from the east will Battle with seven stars surrounding it, extinguishing them night after night for a period of seventy days. Then the one star will be hidden, and the Messiah will be concealed in the pillar of fire for twelve months, though it will not be visible to the world. After the twelve months, the Messiah will ascend to receive the power and the crown of the kingdom, and the pillar of fire will again be visible on earth, and the Messiah will reveal himself and declare war on the world. Many nations will join him to wage war on the nations of the world, which will unite to fight against him. Then a time will come when the world will remain in darkness for fifteen days, and many of the children of Israel will perish. Rabbi Shimon then explains to Rabbi Lazar that the Messiah resides in the lower garden of Eden, surrounded by saints, angels, and the souls of the righteous. There is a concealed place in Eden called Bird's Nest, which is revealed to the Messiah by the bird that awakens daily in the garden. In the bird's nest is the cloak of majesty and the images of all the nations that banded against Israel are woven into this garment. The Messiah enters this place and sees the patriarchs visiting the ruins of God's sanctuary and God trying to comfort Rachel who weeps incessantly then he weeps loudly and all of Eden shakes and laments with him when he cries for a second time the holy throne summons them and they ascend to above their God makes them swear to avenge the children of Israel through the Messiah and to draw God's goodness towards the children of Israel so that they may enjo
Jericho after 12 months a Messiah will be revealed to the world in Galilee and those who study the Torah will surround him and give him additional strength after waiting for another 12 months he will raise the Shechina and gather the exile from the world and God will perform for the children of Israel the signs and wonders that he did in Egypt Rabbi Shimon next discusses the doctrine of faith contained in the verse O Hashem our Elohim other masters beside you have had dominion. In exile we learn the children of Israel are ruled by the other side the Shechina is separated from her spouse and the two names of God are also separated during the first exile Israel had no divine light to guide her however upon their return to the Holy Land not all of the children of Israel were righteous and pure and therefore the light that returned to guide them was weaker than it had originally been consequently Israel was involved in many wars until the destruction of the second temple and the Roman captivity was prolonged after 1266 years we are told God shall perform many miracles and wonders and after another 66 years the holy name will be perfectly engraved above and below after a further 132 years the holy land will be purified and God will shake the wicked from the earth and raise the dead finally 144 years later the remaining dead of Israel who are in other lands will also be raised and the other side will be destroyed and the Shechinah will be crowned and the holy spirits of the children of Israel will be invested with new holy bodies and they shall be called saints after 1266 years we are now told God shall perform many miracles and wonders and after another 66 years the holy name will be perfectly engraved above and below after a further 132 years the holy land will be purified and God will shake the wicked from the earth and raise the dead finally 144 years later the remaining dead of Israel who are in other lands will also be raised and the other side will be destroyed then after the seventh millennium the Shechinah will be crowned and the holy spirits of the children of Israel will be invested with new holy bodies and they shall be called holy ones the relevance of this passage most of all reading of this passage fills us with awe and wonder at the grandeur and majesty of God's great plan knowing of the events that await us we will cling still more devoutly to the truths of Torah and lend our prayers to the energy building up for the fierce yet triumphant days of the Messiah when all that was and all that is will combine to form all that ever will be the hope of these days has sustained righteous men through many a dark time and the consciousness of this will elevate our souls to sing with joy at the sheer wonder of creation and the mystery of time wrapped in eternity 96 Rabbi Shimon raised his hands wept and said woe to he who is present at that time and blissful is the portion of he who is present and will be Able to attend at that time, and he explains woe to he who is present at that time, because when the Holy One blessed be, he comes to visit the gazelle who is the Shechinah, he will observe who is standing by her, and all those who are with her, he will contemplate the actions of each and every one, and no righteous person will be found as is written. And I looked, and there was none to help. Yeshayah 635. And how many troubles upon troubles will there be for Israel? 97. Happy is he who is present, because he who is present at that time with faith will merit that light of joy of the King in relation to that time. It is written, and I will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. Zechariah 139. 98. After these troubles have been aroused against Israel, all the peoples and their kings will counsel together against them, raise many bad decrees, and come upon them with one mind. There will come troubles upon troubles, and the later troubles will cause the earlier. Once to be forgotten then a pillar of fire shall be seen there standing from above down for forty days and all the nations of the world will see it. 99 at that time the king Messiah will arise to go out of the garden of Eden from the place called the bird's nest and he will become revealed in the land of Galilee on the day that Messiah goes there the whole world will tremble and all the people of the world will hide in the caves and cracks in the rocks and will not expect to survive and concerning that time it is written and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and in the caves of the earth for fear of Hashem and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth terribly Yeshua 219 100 and he explains for fear of Hashem this is the trembling of the whole world and for the glory of his majesty is Messiah when he arises to shake the earth terribly refers to when Messiah will arise and be revealed in the land of Galilee because this was the first place in the holy land that was destroyed by Ashur therefore he will be revealed there before any other place and from there he will stir wars all over the world 101 after 40 days the pillar will stand from the earth to the heaven before the eyes of the whole world and Messiah will be revealed there will arise from the east side a star that will glow with variety of colors and seven other stars will surround that star and will war with it on all sides three times a day up to 70 days and all the people of the world will see 102 and that star will do battle with them with flames of fire that will burn and sparkle in every direction and it will smite them until it will swallow them every night and by day again it shall take them out where they will battle before the eyes of the whole world and so it shall ensue every day for 70 days after 70 days that star will be hidden and Messiah will be concealed for up to 12 months and the pillar of fire will return as originally and in it Messiah will be concealed and that pillar is invisible 103 after 12 months Messiah will be elevated within that pillar to the sky and there he will receive the power and crown of the kingdom and when he descends to the earth that pillar of fire will again appear as originally before the eyes of the whole world afterwards Messiah will appear and many nations will gather to him and he will wage wars throughout the entire world at that time the holy one blessed be he will rise with his might against all the nations of the world Messiah will be publicly known throughout the world and all the kings of the world will join together to do battle with him 104 many of the oppressors of Israel will turn and join these nations to war against the king Messiah then will the world darken for 15 days many of Israel will perish during the darkness of this it is written for behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples Yeshua. 602 105 he opened the discussion saying if a bird's nest chance to be before you in the way in any tree or on the ground whether they be young ones or eggs and the mother bird sitting upon the young or upon the eggs you shall not take the mother together with the young but you shall surely let the mother go to barm 226 we have explained this verse and it is one of the concealed commandments of the torah we have in it concealed secrets of the torah paths and ways known to the friends in the 32 paths of the torah 106 rabbi shimon said to his son rabbi laser laser when messiah awakens so many other signs and miracles will be aroused in the world come and behold in the terrestrial garden of eden there is one place which is concealed and hidden and is not known and it is woven with many colors therein are hidden a thousand pleasant chambers and no one enters them except for messiah who is ever present in the garden of eden 107 the entire garden is surrounded by many Chariots of the righteous and Messiah stands over them and over many hosts and camps of souls of the righteous who are there and Messiah enters that place on the first day of the month and festivals and Shabbat where there are a thousand chambers of pleasures to delight in all these chambers one hundred and eight innermost from all these thousand chambers of pleasures there is one place concealed and hidden that is entirely unknown called Eden there is no one who can conceive it Messiah is concealed outside around that place until a place called bird's nest is revealed to him this place is announced by the bird which awakens daily in the garden of Eden 109 in that place called bird's nest the images of all the nations that gathered against the children of Israel to harm them are woven in a garment called the cloak of majesty Messiah enters that place raises his eyes and sees the patriarchs who entered the house of Elohim that was destroyed until he sees Rachel with tears on her cheeks and the Holy One blessed be he is consoling her but she refuses to accept condolences as it is written she refuses to be comforted for her children Yermea 3114 then Messiah raises his voice and weeps and the whole garden of Eden shakes all the righteous who are there break down and weep with him 110 he cries bitterly a second time and the firmament above the garden trembles so too do 15 million supernal angels until Messiah reaches the supernal throne and the Holy One blessed be he motions to that bird it enters its nest sits next to Messiah and cries whatever it cries and awakens whatever it awakens 111 this continues until from the Holy Throne which is by that same bird's nest is called three times namely the three columns one after the other Messiah and everyone then ascend above to Bina and the Holy One blessed be he makes them swear to remove the wicked kingdom from the world through Messiah to avenge Israel and to draw all the goodness that the Holy one blessed be he will do for his people the bird's nest and Messiah then return to their places and Messiah is again concealed in that place that is the bird's nest as previously 112 at the time that the Holy One
meaning from the left column for at the moment that chakma from above is drawn to below its light is converted to a flame of fire in the firmament and they stand opposite each other for 40 days the flame which is from the left column separates itself from each of chakma and bina and malchut that are in the central column each made up of ten spirats so they are 40 and all the people of the world will be confused at the end of 40 days meaning the last sphere which is malchut of malchut the star and the flame will wage war before everyone's eyes and the flame will spread with a fiery conflagration within the firmament on the north side many rulers and kings and nations will become confused by this meaning from the strengthening of the flame 114 and the star will ascend to the south side which is the right column and the light of Chesed and Chesed and will again illuminate the world as it will rule over the flame and the flame will be swallowed bit by bit in the firmament because of the star until it is no longer visible and the star will make pathways in the sky in 12 borders and when its three columns will be included in each one of Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut three times four are 12 pathways and these lights will stand in the sky for 12 days for even Malchut itself illuminates only in the three columns Chesed, Bura and Tiferet but Malchut in it does not illuminate therefore there are only 12 lights 115 when he desires to draw their illumination after 12 days meaning to the aspect of Malchut all the people of the world will tremble because of the attribute of judgment in Malchut the sun will be darkened at midday as it was darkened on the day that the temple was destroyed to a point that both heaven and earth will not be visible and a sound will erupt in thunder and lightning meaning a sound from the attribute of judgment in Malchut the world will shudder because of that sound and numerous hosts and companies will perish because of it 116 and that day which is Malchut will cause there to be ignited in the great city of Rome, which is the secret of Bina Oklipat, a flame of fire which is the judgments of the left that sound will be stirred up in the whole world which is from the attribute of judgment in Malchut that is these two kinds of judgments will be combined and will burn many towers and many palaces and many towers will collapse and many potentates and ministers will fall. On that day all of the meaning all of the judgments will gather upon it to cause harm and all the people of the world will be unable to be saved 117 from that day for 12 months time that is until the illuminations of the 12 boundaries also in Malchut shall be remedied, because in Zeir and they are called 12 days but in Malchut they are called 12 months, all the kings will counsel and will make numerous decrees and numerous persecutions against Israel and they will succeed with them as we learn fortunate is he who will chance to be there meaning in the days of messiah fortunate is he who will not be there that he will be saved from these judgments and the whole world will be greatly confused 118 at the end of 12 months meaning after the 12 lights in malchut are rectified there will arise a tribe in israel which is the king messiah who will awaken in the garden of eden all the righteous will crown him there and will gird him with weapons with engraved letters of the vessels of the holy name 119 a voice will explode in the branches of the trees in the garden that cries powerfully and says awaken supernal holy ones arise before messiah behold it is the time for a wife to join with her husband meaning tiferet with malchut her husband tiferet wishes to avenge her in the world raise her and shake the dust off her 120 then they will all arise and will gird him with weapons as before abraham at his right isaac at his left Jacob before him Moses the faithful shepherd above all these righteous walking and dancing in the garden of Eden 121 as soon as Messiah is perfected through the righteous in the garden of Eden he will enter as before in this place that is called bird's nest he sees a picture of the destroyed temple and all the righteous who were killed there then he takes from their ten garments called garments of jealousy to be hidden there for forty days and not to be revealed at all 122 at the end of forty days a voice will stir and will call from the supernal throne which is binded to the bird's nest that conceals the king Messiah then he is raised up and the holy one blessed be he sees the king Messiah who is dressed in garments of revenge and is girded with his weapons he takes him and kisses him on his head 123 then 390 firmaments tremble and the holy one blessed be he beckoned to one firmament that had been concealed since the six days of creation and took a crown engraved with holy names from one chamber in that firmament the holy one blessed be he who crowned himself with this crown when Israel crossed the sea to take revenge on the chariots and riders of Pharaoh then crowned the king Messiah with the crown 124 once Messiah was crowned and perfected with all these perfections the holy one blessed be he took him and kissed him again who saw this the holy chariots and companies of supernal angels that surround him and give him presents and many precious things he is crowned with them all 125 he enters there into one chamber and sees all the supernal angels who are called the mourners of Zion they weep over the destruction of the temple and weep constantly and they give him a royal purple garment to avenge then the holy one blessed be he conceals him in that bird's nest and he is hidden there for 30 days 126 after 30 days having disappeared in that bird's nest he will descend ornamented with all those adornments from above with many holy companies around him and the whole world will see one light suspended from the sky to the earth it will remain seven days in the secret of Chesed, Bura, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazet and Malchut in Malchut and can be found illuminating even in Malchut of Malchut all the inhabitants of the world will wonder and be shocked and will not understand at all except for those sages who know these secrets, blessed be their portion 127 and all these seven days he will be adorned on the earth, which is the secret of Malchut, in that bird's nest which is the secret of the verse if a bird's nest chance to be before you to 226 that alludes to the king Messiah who is adorned with a bird's nest which places it in the way which is the grave of Rachel for she stands on the crossroads Messiah is also adorned with the light of Malchut of Malchut that is capable of the gathering of the exiles therefore he will bear these good tidings to her and console her then she will Except consolations unlike as described previously she refuses to be comforted for her children because they are not Yermeah 3114 and she will arise and kiss Messiah 128 then shall the light arise from that place that I as Rachel's grave and settle in Yeriko the city of trees as is written in any tree Devarim 226 which is Yeriko the city of palm trees that Joshua was not able to mend completely therefore he said curse be the man before Hashem that rises up to build the city. Yeriko Yahashua 626 because it is drawn from the attributes of judgment which is in Malchut of Malchut and now Messiah will mend it with the light of the seven days or on the ground Devarim 226 this is Jerusalem which is the external part of Malchut and he will be concealed in that light in the bird's nest for twelve months 129 after twelve months that light will be stretched between the heaven and the earth and rest on in the land of Galilee since the exile of Israel namely the exile. Of Ashur was initiated in Galilee then will Messiah be revealed from that very same light of the bird's nest and return to his place on that day the whole earth will tremble as earlier from one end of heaven to the other end and then the whole world will see that Messiah has been revealed in the land of Galilee 130 and all those who were occupied with Torah those who are called in the verse children young will gather to him they are few in the world and in the merit of school. Children the strength of Messiah will grow greatly and this is the secret of the young in the verse and if these are not to be found and the infants that sit in their mother's lap and suckle as written those that are weaned from milk and removed from the breasts Yeshayah 289 these are the eggs of Aram 226 it is because of these that the Shechinah dwells with the children of Israel in the exile 131 for the sages who are called children young will be few in that time and this is what is meant and the mother bird sitting upon the young or upon the eggs do not take the mother bird together with the young since then there will be no children therefore do not take the mother who is Chechena and Messiah will tarry up to another twelve months then her husband who is Zeir and will come to raise her from the dust as it said I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Amos 911 132 on that day Messiah will start to gather the exile from one end of it world to the other as it is written if your outcast be at the utmost parts of heaven to Aram 304 from that day all the signs and miracles and mighty acts that the Holy One blessed be he performed in Egypt he will perform for Israel as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things Mitchah 715 133 Rabbi Shimon said Eliezer my son all these things you shall find in the secret of 32 paths of Chakma of the Holy Name and as long as these miracles do not happen in the world the secret of the holy name will not be completed nor will love awaken as it is said i charge you o daughters
Conduit of flaming fire that is a stream of burning fire sink into the Sea of Galilee and the whole place was agitated 135. Rabbi Shimon said certainly now is the time that the Holy One blessed be he remembers his children and he lowers two tears into the great sea as they descend they touch this conduit of flaming fire and sink together into the sea one with the other Rabbi Shimon wept and the friends wept 136. Rabbi Shimon said I have stirred in the secret of the letters of the Holy. Name in the secret of the awakening of the Holy One blessed be he towards his children but now I may reveal that which was not permitted to any other person to reveal but the merit of this generation will preserve the world till the King Messiah will come Rabbi Shimon said to his son Rabbi Lazar and to Rabbi Abba get up on your legs Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba got up Rabbi Shimon went the second time and said oh who will arise then for what I see is that the exile will be lengthened who will be able to endure 137 Rabbi Shimon also got up and said oh Hashem our Elohim other masters besides you have had dominion over us but by you only will we make mention of your name Yeshayah 2613 this verse is explained but this verse contains a supernal secret in the secret of faith Hashem our Elohim is the beginning of the supernal secret namely Chakma and Bina from these all the light emanates to kindle all the candles meaning that all the mokin of male and female and Briya Yitzhara and Asiya emanate from Chakma and Bina that are called Hashem our Elohim there is the essence of the entire secret of faith which is female meaning in the secret of the verse and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken Bereshit 222 which is the secret of Chakma and Bina the side is the secret of the Mukva which is called faith 138 other masters besides you have had dominion over us there is no one to dominate over the nation of Israel except for the supernal name Hashem. Our Elohim is earlier mentioned and now in exile the other side holds dominion over it. This is what is written. Other masters besides you have had dominion over US 139 but by you only will we make mention of your name. Yeshayah 2613 meaning the secret of the holy name namely the Mukbah is the inclusion of all 22 letters. Therefore she is called E.T. Alatov which alludes to the 22 letters from Aleph to Tov and the congregation of Israel which is the Mukbah is blessed only through that. Name called Pichabayu which is Z.E.I.R. and that includes also 22 letters like Pichabayu which numerically totals 22 as is written to whom you did swear by your own self had Pichabayu Shema 3213 by you had Pichabayu Israel bless Bershi 4820 and for by you had Pichabayu run upon the troop Tehillim 1830 also allude to Z.E.I.R. and at the time when perfection was prevalent the Z.E.I.R. and and the Mukba were not separated from each other and it is prohibited to separate them one from the other. A wife from her husband neither in thought nor by illusion in order not to show separation and now in exile separation is prevalent because of the trouble that comes upon us at all times which we cause through the separation by mentioning that name, which is the Mukba away from her husband Z.E.I.R. and because she is lying on the dust this is but by you only will we make mention of your name 140 he explains when the Mukba is separated from her husband it is considered as if we mention this name separately since we are far from you and we cause that others should rule over us and your name which is the Mukba is separated from the name Pichalit in you which is Z.E.I.R. and as mentioned earlier and this is so during the days of exile 141 the first exile was since the first temple and the first temple is the secret of the first A of the name Y.U.D.A. Bob which is by corresponding to its 70 years which are the seven lords Fyrot Chisit Burit Tiferet Netzach. Hagiazit and Malchut the exile of the first temple lasted 70 years since every Sphirot includes 10 totaling 70 during these 70 years the mother which is the three first Sphirot of Bina was not sitting on them and they were separated from the supernal name which is the secret of the first A of Yudh Bab and the Yud of Yudh Bab which is the supernal secret of Bina ascends above above into the endless world Hebein Saf and the first temple which is Bina does not gush forth a flow of living water because its source which is the Yudh of Yudh Bab which is Chakma has departed 142 and at the first A of Yudh Bab is the 70 years in exile because it is called 7 years as is said so was he 7 years in building it I Melashim 638 referring to the first temple which is the first A he asks would you say that the kingdom of Babylon ruled above in the secret of 70 years which is Bina heaven forbid and he answers during the Time that the temple existed the pouring forth of the supernal mother which is by illuminated and descended below however when Yisrael sinned and the temple was destroyed the kingdom of Babylon reigned that light was covered and darkened and the holy lower beings did not illuminate 143 since the lower beings were not illuminating because of the dominion of the kingdom of Babylon that light of Bina departed and that supernal emanation that poured forth to Bina which is the secret of Yud of Yud Hebab which is Chakma withdrew higher and higher into the endless world and those 70 years of Bina did not illuminate because of that illumination of the Yud that was prevented from illuminating upon the hay this was certainly the exile of 70 years of Bina which is the secret of the first temple 144 as soon as the reign of Babylon was removed and the second hay of Yud Hebab commenced to illuminate all of Yisrael did not purify to be a perfect possession as earlier but rather bit by bit returned from Babylonian exile to the land of Israel and since there was no perfection the Yud of Yud Hebab he did not descend to illuminate as it illuminated originally but rather bit by bit without order because Israel were not purified properly as before therefore the supernal fountain which is the secret of the Yud of Yud Hebab he did not gush forth and did not illuminate it returned to illuminate bit by bit because of the need of the name. 145 therefore the children of Israel were challenged in many wars until the darkness covered the earth and the lower hay which is the Mukba became darkened and fell to the earth the supernal fountain which is the Yud of Yud Hebab withdrew again because the kingdom of Edom became strong and the children of Israel returned to their since 146 therefore the lower hay which is the second temple that was destroyed and all its twelve tribes of the lower hay as the number of the legions. Of Israel, who are the twelve tribes of Yah, are in exile of the kingdom of Edom and the supernal fountain, which is the Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay Zeir Anpin, withdrew from that fountain that it supplies, which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin, as it is said, the righteous perishes lost Yeshayah 571, which is Yezid that lost that outpouring of the upper source that flowed from above 147, and there was a separation in the Hay, which is the second temple that separated from the Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay, which is Zeir Anpin, and it goes into the exile in Edom with all these twelve tribes and their legions of Israel. Twelve tribes add up to a great number as written before you, and since the secret of the Hay was included in this number, the exile therefore continues a long time. 148, the secret of secrets is given over to the wise of heart. The ten tribes are 1,000 years, two tribes are 200 years, since twelve lights of the Mukba, which are called tribes, are drawn from Bina Hus are in the secret of hundreds they are therefore twelve hundred tears started to fall, meaning that Rabbi Shimon started weeping he opened the discussion saying she weeps sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks each at twelve at the end of the twelve tribes of exile meaning at the end of one thousand and two hundred as mentioned the night will darken for Israel until the Bab awakens at the sixty-sixth year one hundred and forty-nine at the end of twelve tribes which are twelve hundred years of exile and at the end of sixty-six years of the darkness of night which is the exile then will I remember my covenant with Jacob Vayikra two thousand six hundred and forty-two which is Tiferet this is the awakening of the letter Vav, which is Tiferet which is the Vav of Yud Hay Vav Hay, which is soul meaning the inner part of the house of Jacob which is the Mukva that is called the house of Jacob and this is the secret of all the souls that came with Jacob or sixty-six four thousand six hundred and twenty-six which is Vav the soul of the second temple the Secret of the Lord Hay and this Bob is the secret of 6660 for the awakening of Jacob who is Tiferet and 6 for the awakening of Joseph who is Yezid therefore it is a fully spelled Bob 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 which alludes to Tiferet and Yezid which are two in one combination and one secret because Yezid and Tiferet are considered as one and are therefore alluded to in the two VAVS of the fully spelled Bob which form one letter 150 from then on the Holy One blessed be he will stir these miracles and
is proper. This is the secret of the supernal and lower hay that are in the lower hay fully spelled hay, similar to Bob that contains another Bob when fully spelled as mentioned that the upper Bob emanates the secret of 60 to the upper hay and the lower Bob emanates the secret of 6 to the lower hay and all these paths which are 32 years of the aforementioned 132 are included in the secret of the letters Bob hay Bob hay the first Bob hay being 2 times 60 and the second Bob hay being 2 times 6 as mentioned together they amount to 132 out of which the number 32 alludes to the secret of the completeness of 132 meaning that the preparation was made in them to receive the 32 paths of wisdom from the YUD of YUD hey, Bob hay is written before 152 at the end of the other 132 years as those 132 that were completed in Tiferet and the Nukba which are Bob hay of YUD hey, Bob hay also have to illuminate in Shakma and Bana which are YUD hey, of YUD hey, Bob hay, the verse will be fulfilled that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Eo 38 13. The holy land will be purified and the holy one blessed be he will resurrect the dead in the holy land and host upon host will arise in the Galilee 153 then will be mended the obstruction which is in the supernal fountain of Yud Hey Hey, which is the letter Yud which is Chakma, and the 32 paths in Chakma will be established in completeness to emanate down it. Letters of the holy name will be established all of them completely meaning the name Yud Hey Hey that was not complete here to 154 then shall come the time that the supernal fountain will flow and be drawn which is Yud connected with Hey which are bun and tiferet into the last Hey of the Yud Hey Hey which is the Nukba this will be at the culmination of another 144 years for they are the secret of the third 132 to be there with the 12 tribes that are in the Nukba which Together are 144 years the other dead in the other countries will be resurrected namely the dead outside of the land of Israel 155 all this adds up to Chetov which are 2 times 132 plus 144 which totals Tov Chet equals 408 the world will settle and have fragrance and the other side will be removed from the world and the lower hay which is the Nukba will become filled from the supernal fountain which is Yud of Yud Hay Bob Hay and the secret of Chakma and be crowned and illuminated perfectly. Then it is written and the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold Yeshua 3026 156 there will be a Shabbat for Hashem to gather souls with holy delight namely to draw additional souls in the secret of the supernal union during the entire seventh millennium which is entirely Shabbat this is the stirring of the holy spirits of the nation of Israel to clothe themselves after Shabbat namely after the seventh millennium in other Holy body so as to be called holy ones as is written and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy Yeshua 43 up to this point are words of the concealed secret section 15 the coming of Messiah in this long and complex section Rabbi Shimon first describes the time when God shall make himself known throughout the world which is the prelude to the arrival of the Messiah we learn that when God reveals his glory to the world all the nations and their kings will rise up against the children of Israel and the children of Israel will suffer greatly a pillar of fire reaching from heaven to earth will appear for 40 days at this time the Messiah will rise in Galilee and begin to wage war on the world from there because this is where the devastation first began the earth will shake and everybody will seek refuge in caves and rocky places as alluded to in the verse and they shall go into the holes after 40 days a bright star from the east will battle with seven stars surrounding it extinguishing them night after night for a period of 70 days then the one star will be hidden and the messiah will be concealed in the pillar of fire for 12 months though it will not be visible to the world after the 12 months the messiah will ascend to receive the power and the crown of the kingdom and the pillar of fire will again be visible on earth and the messiah will reveal himself and declare war on the world many nations will join him to wage war on the nations of the world which will unite to fight against him and a time will come when the world will remain in darkness for 15 days and many of the children of israel will perish rabbi shimon then explains to rabbi laser that the messiah resides in the lower garden of eden surrounded by saints angels and the souls of the righteous there is a concealed place in eden called bird's nest which is Revealed to the Messiah by the bird that awakens daily in the garden in the bird's nest is the cloak of majesty and the images of all the nations that banded against Israel are woven into this garment. The Messiah enters this place and sees the patriarchs visiting the ruins of God's sanctuary and God trying to comfort Rachel who weeps incessantly then he weeps loudly and all of Eden shakes and laments with him when he cries for a second time the holy throne summons them and they ascend to above. Their God makes them swear to avenge the children of Israel through the Messiah and to draw God's goodness towards the children of Israel so that they may enjoy his rich rewards at that time God will arise to renew the world and the letters of the holy name will shine in perfect union a mighty star and a flame will then appear in the sky after 40 days the star will gradually overpower the flame the star will illuminate 12 pathways for 12 days and after another 12 days the world will tremble and darkness will fall a sound shall be heard out of great thunder and lightning causing the earth to shake and many to die then a flame of fire will appear in Rome and it will burn many towers and places and many mighty rulers and ministers will perish for twelve months following the kings of the nations will unite and persecute the children of Israel then a tribe will arise in Israel led by the Messiah the Messiah will be aroused and perfected through the garden of Eden he will enter the bird's nest take the garment of jealousy and be hidden there for forty days after this time he will ascend to receive God's blessing and will be crowned with the holy crown he then receives a royal red garment from the mourners of Zion to avenge the destruction of the temple and is concealed in the bird's nest for thirty days then he will descend to earth in a bright light and no one will know the significance of this light except the sages he will console Rachel and she will finally Except consolation and then the light will settle in the city of Jericho after 12 months the Messiah will be revealed to the world in Galilee and those who study the Torah will surround him and give him additional strength after waiting for another 12 months he will raise the Shechina and gather the exiled from the world and God will perform for the children of Israel the signs and wonders that he did in Egypt Rabbi Shimon next discusses the doctrine of faith contained in the verse. O Hashem our Elohim other masters beside you have had dominion in exile we learn the children of Israel are ruled by the other side the Shechina is separated from her spouse and the two names of God are also separated during the first exile Israel had no divine light to guide her however upon their return to the holy land not all of the children of Israel were righteous and pure and therefore the light that returned to guide them was weaker than it had originally been consequently Israel was involved in many wars until the destruction of the second temple and the Roman captivity was prolonged after 1266 years we are told God shall perform many miracles and wonders and after another 66 years the holy name will be perfectly engraved above and below after a further 132 years the holy land will be purified and God will shake the wicked from the earth and raise the dead finally 144 years later the remaining dead of Israel who are in other lands will also be raised and the other side will be destroyed and the Shechina will be crowned and the holy spirits of the children of Israel will be invested with new holy bodies and they shall be called saints after 1266 years we are now told God shall perform many miracles and wonders and after another 66 years the holy name will be perfectly engraved above and below after a further 132 years the holy land will be purified and God will shake the wicked from the earth and raise the dead finally 144 years later the remaining dead of Israel who are in other lands will also be raised and the other side will be destroyed then after the seventh millennium the Shechina will be crowned and the holy spirits of the children of Israel will be invested with new holy bodies and they shall be called holy ones the relevance of this passage most of all reading of this passage fills us with awe and wonder at the grandeur and majesty of God's great plan knowing of the events that await us we will cling still more devoutly to the truths of Torah and lend our prayers to the energy building up for the fierce yet triumphant days of the Messiah when all that was and all that is will combine to form all that ever will be the hope of these days has sustained righteous men through many a dark time and the consciousness of this will elevate our souls to sing with joy at the sheer wonder of creation and the mystery of time wrapped in eternity 96 Rabbi Shimon raised his hands with and said woe to he who is present at that time and blissful is the portion of
Upon troubles and the later troubles will cause the earlier ones to be forgotten and a pillar of fire shall be seen there standing from above down for forty days and all the nations of the world will see it. 99 At that time the king Messiah will arise to go out of the garden of Eden from the place called the bird's nest and he will become revealed in the land of Galilee on the day that Messiah goes there the whole world will tremble and all the people of the world will hide in the caves and cracks in the rocks and will not expect to survive and concerning that time it is written and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and in the caves of the earth for fear of Hashem and for the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth terribly Yeshua 2 and 19 and he explains for fear of Hashem this is the trembling of the whole world and for the glory of his majesty is Messiah when he arises to shake the earth terribly refers to when Messiah will arise and be revealed in the land of Galilee because this was the first place in the holy land that was destroyed by Ashur therefore he will be revealed there before any other place and from there he will stir wars all over the world 101 after 40 days the pillar will stand from the earth to the heaven before the eyes of the whole world and Messiah will be revealed there will arise from the east side a star that will glow with variety of colors and seven other stars will surround that star and will war with it on all sides three times a day up to 70 days and all the people of the world will see 102 and that star will do battle with them with flames of fire that will burn and sparkle in every direction and it will smite them until it will swallow them every night and by day again it shall take them out where they will battle before the eyes of the whole world and so it shall ensue every day for 70 days after 70 days that star will be hidden and Messiah will be concealed for up to 12 months then the pillar of fire will return as originally and in it Messiah will be concealed and that pillar is invisible 103 after 12 months Messiah will be elevated within that pillar to the sky and there he will receive the power and crown of the kingdom and when he descends to the earth that pillar of fire will again appear as originally before the eyes of the whole world afterwards Messiah will appear and many nations will gather to him and he will wage wars Throughout the entire world at that time the Holy One blessed be he will rise with his might against all the nations of the world Messiah will be publicly known throughout the world and all the kings of the world will join together to do battle with him 104 many of the oppressors of Israel will turn and join these nations to war against the king Messiah then will the world darken for 15 days many of Israel will perish during this darkness of this it is written for behold it Darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples Yeshua 602 105 he opened the discussion saying if a bird's nest chance to be before you in the way in any tree or on the ground whether they be young ones or eggs and the mother bird sitting upon the young or upon the eggs you shall not take the mother together with the young but you shall surely let the mother go to Barim 226 we have explained this verse and it is one of the concealed commandments of the Torah we have in it. Concealed secrets of the Torah paths and ways known to the friends in the 32 paths of the Torah 106 Rabbi Shimon said to his son Rabbi Lazar Lazar when Messiah awakens so many other signs and miracles will be aroused in the world come and behold in the terrestrial garden of Eden there is one place which is concealed and hidden and is not known and it is woven with many colors therein are hidden a thousand pleasant chambers and no one enters them except for Messiah who is ever present in the garden of Eden 107 the entire garden is surrounded by many chariots of the righteous and Messiah stands over them and over many hosts and camps of souls of the righteous who are there and Messiah enters that place on the first day of the month and festivals in Shabbat where there are a thousand chambers of pleasures to delight in all these chambers 108 innermost from all these thousand chambers of pleasures there is one place concealed and hidden that is entirely unknown called Eden there is no one who can conceive it Messiah is concealed outside around that place until a place called bird's nest is revealed to him this place is announced by the bird which awakens daily in the garden of Eden 109 in that place called bird's nest the images of all the nations that gathered against the children of Israel to harm them are woven in a garment called the cloak of majesty Messiah enters that place raises his eyes and sees the patriarchs who entered the house of Elohim that was destroyed until he sees Rachel with tears on her cheeks and the Holy One blessed be he is consoling her but she refuses to accept condolences as it is written she refuses to be comforted for her children Yermea 3114 and Messiah raises his voice and weeps and the whole garden of Eden shakes all the righteous who are there break down and weep with him 110 he cries bitterly a second time and the firmament above the garden trembles so too do 15 million supernal angels until Messiah reaches the supernal throne and the Holy One blessed be he motions to that bird it enters its nest sits next to Messiah and cries whatever it cries and awakens whatever it awakens 111 this continues until from the Holy Throne which is by that same bird's nest is called three times namely the three columns one after the other Messiah and everyone then ascend above to Bina and the Holy One blessed be he makes them swear to remove the wicked kingdom from the world through Messiah to avenge Israel and to draw all the goodness that the Holy One blessed be he will do for his people the bird's nest and Messiah then return to their places and Messiah is again concealed in that place that is the bird's nest as previously 112 at the time that the Holy One blessed be he will be aroused to remedy the worlds and the letters of the name will illuminate completely the yet of the name which is Chakma will illuminate the hay which is Bindavav of the name which is Typharet will illuminate the second hay which is Malchud Yudhi will be in complete union with Vav hay, that is to say one awful star will rise which is Typharet called awful in the middle of the firmament it being the central column of the color purple that is it includes all the colors so it includes all the three columns it will flame and sparkle by day meaning with the light of Shesedim called day before the eyes of the whole world meaning also with the light of Chakma which is Called eyes 113 a flame of fire will rise from the north side meaning from the left column for at the moment that Chakma from above is drawn to below its light is converted to a flame of fire in the firmament and they stand opposite each other for 40 days the flame which is from the left column separates itself from each of Chakma and Bindi Typharet and Malchut that are in the central column each made up of 10 spirots so there are 40 and all the people of the world will be confused at the end of 40 days meaning the last sphere which is Malchut of Malchut the star and the flame will wage war before everyone's eyes and the flame will spread with a fiery conflagration within the firmament on the north side many rulers and kings and nations will become confused by this meaning from the strengthening of the flame 114 then the star will ascend to the south side which is the right column and the light of Chesed and Chesedim will again illuminate the world. Thus it will rule over the flame and the flame will be swallowed bit by bit in the firmament because of the star until it is no longer visible and the star will make pathways in the sky in twelve borders and when its three columns will be included in each one of Chakma and Bindi Typharet and Malchut three times four are twelve pathways and these lights will stand in the sky for twelve days for even Malchut itself illuminates only in the three columns Jesus, Bura and Typharet but Malchut in. It does not illuminate therefore there are only twelve lights 115 when he desires to draw their illumination after twelve days meaning to the aspect of Malchut all the people of the world will tremble because of the attribute of judgment in Malchut the sun will be darkened at midday as it was darkened on the day that the temple was destroyed to a point that both heaven and earth will not be visible and a sound will erupt in thunder and lightning meaning a sound from the attribute of Judgment in Malchut the world will shudder because of that sound and numerous hosts and companies will perish because of it 116 and that day which is Malchut will cause there to be ignited in the great city of Rome, which is the secret of Bina of Klippot, a flame of fire which is the judgments of the left that sound will be stirred up in the whole world which is from the attribute of judgment in Malchut that is these two kinds of judgments will be combined and will burn many towers and many palaces and many towers will collapse and many potentates and ministers will fall on that day all of them meaning all of the judgments will gather upon it to cause harm and all the people of the world will be unable to be saved 117 from that day for 12 months time that is until the illuminations of the 12 boundaries also in Malchut shall be remedied, because in Zeir and they are called 12 days but in Malchut they are called 12 months, all the kings will counsel and will make numerous decrees and numerous persecutions against Israel and they will succeed with them as we learned fortunate is he who will chance to be there meaning in the days of Messiah fortunate is he who will not be there that he will be saved from these
Jealousy to be hidden there for 40 days and not to be revealed at all 122 at the end of 40 days a voice will stir and will call from a supernal throne which is bonded to the bird's nest that conceals the king messiah then he is raised up and the holy one blessed be he sees the king messiah who is dressed in garments of revenge and is girded with his weapons he takes him and kisses him on his head 123 then 390 firmaments tremble and the holy one blessed be he beckoned to one firmament that had been concealed since the six days of creation and took a crown engraved with holy names from one chamber in that firmament the holy one blessed be he who crowned himself with this crown when Israel crossed the sea to take revenge on the chariots and riders of Pharaoh then crowned the king messiah with the crown 124 once messiah was crowned and perfected with all these perfections the holy one blessed be he took him and kissed him again who saw this the holy chariots and Companies of supernal angels that surround him and give him presents and many precious things he is crowned with them all 125 he enters there into one chamber and sees all the supernal angels who are called the mourners of Zion they weep over the destruction of the temple and weep constantly and they give him a royal purple garment to avenge then the holy one blessed be he conceals him in that bird's nest and he is hidden there for 30 days 126 after 30 days having disappeared in that bird's nest he will descend ornamented with all those adornments from above with many holy companies around him and the whole world will see one light suspended from the sky to the earth it will remain seven days in the secret of Shesed Burit Tiferet Netzach Hadiazit and Malchut in Malchut and can be found illuminating even in Malchut of Malchut all the inhabitants of the world will wonder and be shocked and will not understand at all except for those sages who know these Secrets, blessed be their portion 127 and all these seven days he will be adorned on the earth, which is the secret of Malchut, in that bird's nest which is the secret of the verse if a bird's nest chance to be before you Devarim 226 that alludes to the king Messiah who is adorned with the bird's nest which places it in the way which is the grave of Rachel for she stands on the crossroads Messiah is also adorned with the light of Malchut of Malchut that is capable of the gathering of the exiles therefore he will bear these good tidings to her and console her then she will accept consolations unlike as described previously she refuses to be comforted for her children because they are not Yermeah 3114 and she will arise and kiss Messiah 128 then shall the light arise from that place that is Rachel's grave and settle in Yeriko the city of trees as is written in any tree Devarim 226 which is Yeriko the city of palm trees that Joshua was not able to mend. Completely therefore he said, Cursed be the man before Hashem that rises up to build the city Yerko Yahashua 626 because it is drawn from the attributes of judgment which is in Malchut of Malchut and now Messiah will mend it with the light of the seven days or on the ground to Aram 226 this is Jerusalem which is the external part of Malchut and he will be concealed in that light in the bird's nest for twelve months 129 after twelve months that light will be stretched between the heaven and the earth and rest on in the land of Galilee since the exile of Israel namely the exile of Ashur was initiated in Galilee then will Messiah be revealed from that very same light of the bird's nest and return to his place on that day the whole earth will tremble as earlier from one end of heaven to the other end and then the whole world will see that Messiah has been revealed in the land of Galilee 130 and all those who were occupied with Torah those who are called in the Verse children young will gather to him they are few in the world and in the merit of school children the strength of Messiah will grow greatly and this is the secret of the young in the verse and if these are not to be found then the infants that sit in their mother's lap and suckle as written those that are weaned from milk and removed from the breasts Yeshua 289 these are the eggs of Aram 226 it is because of these that the Sheshanah dwells with the children of Israel in the exile. 131 for the sages who are called children young will be few in that time and this is what is meant and the mother bird sitting upon the young or upon the eggs do not take the mother bird together with the young since then there will be no children therefore do not take the mother who is Sheshanah and Messiah will tarry up to another 12 months then her husband who is Zeir and will come to raise her from the dust as is said I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen Amos. 911 132 on that day Messiah will start to gather the exile from one end of the world to the other as it is written if your outcast be at the utmost parts of heaven Devarim 304 from that day all the signs and miracles and mighty acts that the Holy One blessed be he performed in Egypt he will perform for Israel as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things Misha 715 133 Rabbi Shimon said Eliezer my son all these things you shall find in the secret of 32 paths of Chakma of the Holy Name and as long as these miracles do not happen in the world the secret of the Holy Name will not be completed nor will love awaken as it is said I charge you O daughters of Jerusalem by the gazelles for hosts or by the hinds of the field Sure Hashem 27 hosts refer to the King Messiah who is so called the kinds of the fields this refers to the other hosts and encampments below that you stir not up nor awake my love if it is the right hand of the Holy One blessed be he meaning the sphere of Jesus which is called love till it please refers to she who lies in the dust which is the Shechinah in exile that the king should desire her righteous is he who will have the merit to be in that generation he is righteous in this world and righteous in the world to come 134 Rabbi Shimon raised his hands in prayer before the Holy One blessed be he and prayed after he recited his prayer his son Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba sat before him. While they were sitting before him they saw a ray of daylight become dim and a conduit of flaming fire that is a stream of burning fire sink into the sea of Galilee and the whole place was agitated 135 Rabbi Shimon said certainly now is the time that the Holy One blessed be he remembers his children and he lowers two tears into the great sea as they descend they touch this conduit of flaming fire and sink together into the sea one with the other Rabbi Shimon wept and the friends wept. 136 Rabbi Shimon said I have stirred in the secret of the letters of the Holy Name and the secret of the awakening of the Holy One blessed be he towards his children but now I may reveal that which was not permitted to any other person to reveal but the merit of this generation will preserve the world till the King Messiah will come Rabbi Shimon said to his son Rabbi Lazar and to Rabbi Abba get up on your legs Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba got up Rabbi Shimon went the second time and said oh who will arise then for what I see is that the exile will be lengthened who will be able to endure 137 Rabbi Shimon also got up and said oh Hashem our Elohim other masters besides you have had dominion over us but by you only will we make mention of your name Yeshayah 2613 this verse is explained but this verse contains a supernal secret in the secret of faith Hashem our Elohim is the beginning of the supernal secrets namely Chakma and Bina from these all the light emanates to kindle all the Candles meaning that all the Mokin of male and female and Briya Yitzhara and Asiya emanate from Chakma and Bina that are called Hashem our Elohim there is the essence of the entire secret of faith which is female meaning in the secret of the verse and of the side which Hashem Elohim had taken Bershi 222 which is the secret of Chakma and Bina the side is the secret of the Mukva which is called faith 138 other masters besides you have had dominion over us there is no one to dominate over the nation of Israel except for the supernal name Hashem our Elohim is earlier mentioned and now in exile the other side holds dominion over it this is what is written other masters besides you have had dominion over us 139 but by you only will we make mention of your name Yeshayah 2613 meaning the secret of the holy name namely the Mukva is the inclusion of all 22 letters therefore she is called E.T. Alatov which alludes to the 22 letters from Alat to and it. Congregation of Israel which is the Mukva is blessed only through that name called Bichabayu which is Z-E-I-R-N and that includes also 22 letters like Bichab which numerically totals 22 as is written to whom you did swear by your own self had Bichab Shema 3213 by you had Bichab Israel bless Bershi 4820 and for by you had Bichab I run upon the troop Tehillim 1830 also allude to Z-E-I-R-N at the time when perfection was prevalent the Z-E-I-R-N and the Mukva were not separated from each other and it is prohibited to separate them one from the other away from her husband neither in thought nor by illusion in order not to show separation and now in exile separation is prevalent because of the trouble that comes upon us at all times which we cause through the separation by mentioning
Years which are the seven lower Sfirat Chisid Bura Tiferet Net Sach Adyazit and Maljut the exile of the first temple lasted seventy years since every Sfirat includes ten totaling seventy during these seventy years the mother which is the three first Sfirat of Bunna was not sitting on them and they were separated from the supernal name which is the secret of the first hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay then the Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay which is the supernal secret of Bunna ascends above above into the endless world headline Saf and the first temple which is Bunna does not gush forth the flow of living water because its source which is the Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay which is Chakma has departed one hundred and forty two and at the first hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay is the seventy years in exile because it is called seven years as is said so was he seven years in building it I Melashim six hundred and thirty eight referring to the first temple which is the first hay he asks would you say that the kingdom of Babylon ruled above in the secret of seventy years which is Bana heaven forbid and he answers during the time that the temple existed the pouring forth of the supernal mother which is Bana illuminated and descended below however when Yisrael sinned and the temple was destroyed the kingdom of Babylon reigned that light was covered and darkened and the holy lower beings did not illuminate 143 since the lower beings were not illuminating because of the dominion of the kingdom of Babylon that light of Bana departed and that supernal emanation that poured forth to Bana, which is the secret of Yud of Yud Hay Bab Hay which is Chakma, withdrew higher and higher into the endless world and though seventy years of Bana did not illuminate because of that illumination of the Yud that was prevented from illuminating upon the Hay this was certainly the exile of seventy years of Bana which is the secret of the first temple 144 as soon as the reign of Babylon was removed and the second Hay of Yud Hay Bab Hay. Commenced to illuminate all of Israel did not purify to be a perfect possession as earlier but rather bit by bit returned from Babylonian exile to the land of Israel and since there was no perfection the Yud of Yud Hay did not descend to illuminate as it illuminated originally but rather bit by bit without order because Israel were not purified properly as before therefore the supernal fountain which is the secret of the Yud of Yud Hay did not gush forth and did not illuminate it returned to illuminate bit by bit because of the need of the name 145 therefore the children of Israel were challenged in many wars until the darkness covered the earth and the lower Hay which is the Nukva became darkened and fell to the earth the supernal fountain which is the Yud of Yud Hay withdrew again because the kingdom of Edom became strong and the children of Israel returned to their sins 146 therefore the lower Hay which is the second temple that was Destroyed and all its twelve tribes of the lower Hay, as the number of the legions of Israel who are the twelve tribes of Yah, are in exile of the kingdom of Edom and the supernal fountain which is the Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay Zeir Anpin withdrew from that fountain that it supplies which is Yezid of Zeir Anpin as it is said the righteous parishes lost Yeshayah 571, which is Yezid that lost that outpouring of the upper source that flowed from above 147 and there was a separation in the Hay which is the second temple that separated from the Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay which is Zeir Anpin and it goes into the exile in Edom with all these twelve tribes and their legions of Israel twelve tribes add up to a great number as written before us and since the secret of the Hay was included in this number the exile therefore continues a long time 148 the secret of secrets is given over to the wise of heart the ten tribes are 1000 years two tribes are 200 years since. Twelve lights of the Nukba which are called tribes are drawn from Bana whose Sfirat are in the secret of hundreds they are therefore twelve hundred tears started to fall, meaning that Rabbi Shimon started weeping he opened the discussion saying she weeps sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks each of twelve at the end of the twelve tribes of exile meaning at the end of one thousand and two hundred as mentioned the night will darken for Israel until the Bab awakens at the sixty. Six year one hundred and forty nine at the end of twelve tribes which are twelve hundred years of exile and at the end of sixty six years of the darkness of night which is the exile then will I remember my covenant with Jacob Bay I cross two thousand six hundred and forty two which is Tiferet this is the awakening of the letter Vav, which is Tiferet which is the Bab of Yud Hay Bab Hay, which is soul meaning the inner part of the house of Jacob which is the Nukba that is called the house of Jacob and this is the secret of all the souls that came. With Jacob were 66 Bereshit 4626 which is Bob the soul of the second temple the secret of the lower hay and this Bob is the secret of 6660 for the awakening of Jacob who is Tiferet and 6 for the awakening of Joseph who is Yezid therefore it is a fully spelled Bob 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 which alludes to Tiferet and Yezid which are two in one combination and one secret because Yezid and Tiferet are considered as one and are therefore alluded to in the two VABS of the fully spelled Bob which form one letter 150 from then on the Holy One blessed be he will stir these miracles and signs that we mentioned earlier and all the troubles that we said will rise against Israel that it is said and also my covenant with Isaac Vayikra 2642 because Isaac is the secret of Bura and judgment afterwards Messiah will wage wars throughout the whole world with the right hand of the Holy One blessed be he which is Jesus as it said your right hand Hashem is glorious in power Shema 156 then IT. Is said, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember. Vayikra 2642 for Abraham is the secret of Chesed afterwards, and I will remember the land of it. This is the last day of Yud Hay Bahay, namely the Nukva that is called land about that time. It is written, and Hashem shall be king over all the earth on that day. Hashem shall be one, and his name one. Zechariah 149 151 after the end of 66 more years, which is 132 years together with the aforementioned 66 letters in the holy name. Of the 66 will appear engraved to perfection above in Tiferet and below in the Nukva as is proper. This is the secret of the supernal and lower Hay that are in the lower Hay fully spelled Hay, similar to Bob that contains another Bob when fully spelled is mentioned that the upper Bob emanates the secret of 60 to the upper Hay and the lower Bob emanates the secret of 6 to the lower Hay, and all these paths which are 32 years of the aforementioned 132 are included in the secret of it. Letters Vav Hay Vav Hay the first Vav Hay being 2 times 60 and the second Vav Hay being 2 times 6 as mentioned together they amount to 132 out of which the number 32 alludes to the secret of the completeness of 132 meaning that the preparation was made in them to receive the 32 paths of wisdom from the Yud of Yud Hay Vav Hay as written before 152 at the end of the other 132 years as those 132 that were completed in Tiferet and the Nukba which are Vav Hay of Yud Hay Vav Hay also have to illuminate in Chakma and Bano which are Yud Hay of Yud Hay Vav Hay the verse will be fulfilled that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it Eo 38 13 the holy land will be purified and the holy one blessed be he will resurrect the dead in the holy land and hosts upon hosts will arise in the Galilee 153 then will be mended the obstruction which is in the supernal fountain of Yud Hay Vav Hay which is the letter Yud which is Chakma and the 32 paths in Chakma will be established in completeness to emanate down the letters of the holy name will be established all of them completely meaning the name Yud Hay Vav Hay that was not complete here to 154 then shall come the time that the supernal fountain will flow and be drawn which is Yud connected with Hay Vav which are bind and tie for it into the last Hay of the Yud Hay Vav Hay which is the Nukva this will be at the culmination of another 144 years for the are the secret of the third 132 to be there with the twelve tribes that are in the Nukva which together are 144 years the other dead in the other countries will be resurrected namely the dead outside of the land of Israel 155 all this adds up to Chetaf which are two times 132 plus 144 which totals Tafshet equals 408 the world will settle and have fragrance and the other side will be removed from the world and the lower Hay which is the Nukva will become filled from the supernal fountain which is Yud of Yud Hay Bab and the secret of Chakma and be crowned and illuminated perfectly then it is written and the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold Yeshayah 3026 156 there will be a Shabbat for Hashem to gather souls with holy delight namely to draw additional
more sincere and energetic in our efforts to help complete the great work rousing us to pray at night and work all day for to be conscious when one's consciousness is filled with the glory of God is worth more than any sleep or rest from labor 157 now there arose a new king Shemani teen Rabbi Yossi says every day the Holy One blessed be he makes angels into messengers to the world as is written who makes the winds his messengers Tehillim 1044 it is not written made but rather makes in the present tense because every day he makes and at that time was appointed an angel as an overseer of Egypt and the meaning of now there arose a new king he is definitely new for he is the overseer that the Holy One blessed be he just made 158 who knew not Joseph Shemani teen because the overseer was from the place of separation as is written and from hence it was parted and branched into four streams Beershi 210 the first to separate was the river of Egypt as is written the name of the first was Pishan Ibn 11, which is the river of Egypt because of this he knew not Joseph who is the place where all unity resides which is called righteous for Joseph is the secret of Yezid which is called righteous because all the unions of Zeir and Ben and the Mukbah are made its help and the separation does not want to know the union section 17 the morning star Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Yossi are traveling at dawn when they see two stars shooting across the sky. From opposite sides after explaining that it is the time when the morning stars prepare to glorify God's name Rabbi Lazar proceeds to discuss the verse to the chief musician upon the morning star the hind of the morning we're told indicates the time when the east lightens and the darkness of night disperses an angel that oversees the east draws a thread of light from the south until the sun rises and illuminates the world and a black light comes to unite with the day as the light of day. Which signifies Zir and draws the hind of the morning, which signifies the Mukbah to include it. David composed a psalm about this hind when it was separated from day after being included in it. Thus we learn that the verse Myel Myel, why have you forsaken me? mourns the separation of the Mukbah from Zir and The relevance of this passage a reading of this section awakens the consciousness to the spiritual dimensions of the universe and is essential in the process of meditation, which can be based upon concentration on a light like the star that sits in the eastern sky to herald the dawn. Focus on such a light and the sense that it is but a small speck of God's limitless brilliance which shines through it will draw down the divine rays to illuminate our lives and the world, so we may never again feel the sorrow of separation. 159 Rabbi Laser and Rabbi Yossi were walking on the road and they left before the light of day. They saw a star flying on one side and another that was flying. On another side Rabbi Lazar said the time has now arrived for the morning stars to praise their master and they are running because of the fear and terror of their master to praise and sing before him this is what is written when the morning stars sang together and all the children of Elohim shouted for joy o 387 because all the stars together praises before him 160 he opened the discussion saying to the chief musician upon Eilat Hashachar the morning star lit the hind of Don the Psalm of David Tehillim 221 the hind of Don means when the east lights up and the darkness of night is dispersed there is one overseer for the east side which is the secret of the central column that draws one thread of light from the south side which is the right column until the sun rises and cracks the windows of the firmament and illuminates the world and the thread that it draws from the south side disperses the darkness of the night 161 then comes the hind of Don meaning that a black light comes, which is the Mukbah in the secret of the hind of dawn, to unite with the day which is Zeir and the day shines the light of day includes and draws into it that hind which is Mukbah David composed a psalm about this hind when it was separated from the day after it was already included in it as is written to the chief musician upon the hind of dawn 162 and David said my my why have you forsaken me Tehillim 222 because the hind of dawn which is the Mukbah had separated from the light of day which is Zeir and therefore she had nothing to bestow and had left him while they were still walking daylight appeared and the time for prayer arrived Rabbi Lazar said let us pray and then go they sat down and prayed and afterwards they arose and went section 18 righteous men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked in the section Rabbi Lazar begins by discussing the verse there is a vanity before the discussion turns to examine the seemingly incongruous system of worldly rewards and punishments. We learn that the world the Mukbah stands upon the seven vanities, the seven Sfirot of Zir and these vanities are the seven pillars that support the world and they correspond to the seven firmaments just as other firmaments cleave to an issue from the seven firmaments. There are other vanities that emanate from the seven vanities, all of which are mentioned by Solomon in his book of Ecclesiastes. The foundation is it which emanates from the supernal vanities is maintained and strengthened by the souls of the righteous who died before they sinned on earth. Enoch who was taken before his time to die had arrived is an example of such a soul and explanation of the title subject then ensues from a discussion of the two reasons why the righteous are removed from the world before their time. We learn that when he foresees that the righteous will sin if they live longer, he removes them from it. World and they are judged as though they had sinned. Conversely, he allows wicked men to live if he foresees that they will repent or that they will have righteous children. Another interpretation of the verse relating to the title quotation reveals that God is glorified by both the deeds of the righteous and the good deeds that the wicked perform. Finally, Rabbi Lazar provides further insight into the verse. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. Kahilat 715. When Solomon was granted wisdom, we are told he saw everything at the time when the moon reigned. A just man who perishes in his righteousness is an allusion to the foundation of the world and the mukbah which have no power during the time of the exile. Therefore, supernal blessings do not reach a just man in exile, and he perishes in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. Alludes to Samael and his wife, the serpent who gives strength and peace to the other kings that rule. Israel in exile the relevance of this passage a reading of this passage makes us more keenly attuned to the vanity of all human wishes which has a salutary effect on the soul for it helps us become less possessed by ego the main wall built between us and the light knowing of the enormous value placed upon acts of righteousness and the impossibility of unraveling the ways of God we are helped to concentrate on what we can do rather than what we cannot grasp with our minds the consequences that our time is increasingly given over to being and doing rather than questioning and dreaming we thus learn to be more fully alive 163 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying there is a vanity of heaven which is done upon the earth that there are just men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked I said that this also is vanity Kahila 814 this verse is explained but the words there is vanity mean that King Solomon wrote this book and based it on seven vanities which are the seven Sfirot of Zeir Anpin which is the light of Barash and the seven lower Sfirot of Barash are called vanities the world which is the Mukbah is based on them as its seven Sfirot are upheld by the seven Sfirot, Chesed, Burit, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadjizet and Malchut of Zeir Anpin for the Mukbah is the secret of speech and there is no speech without Erhab Hebel that beats upon the five articulation places in the mouth as is known 164 these seven vanities are called the seven pillars that support the world which is the Mukbah and they correspond to the seven firmaments and these are curtain firmaments guys temple dwelling institute heaven vanities of vanities said Kahilat vanities of vanities all is vanity Kahilat 12 corresponds to them we have here seven vanities because vanity of vanities are three together with vanity of vanities there are six and with vanity mentioned at the end of the verse it equals 7165 as there are seven firmaments and there are other firmaments that are attached to them and spread out and emanate from them, which are the seven firmaments that are in the Mukbah. So there are other vanities meaning of the Mukbah that spread out and emanate from these seven vanities of Zeir and Solomon mentioned them all in his book of Kahilat 166 and here is the secret of Chakma meaning in the verse there is a vanity the aspect of Yezid of the vanities that emanates from the supernal vanities aforementioned upon. Which the world which is the Mukbah is based and this is the meaning of which is done upon the earth Kahilat 814 meaning on the Mukbah that is called earth which is done means that Yezid is maintained and its power is strengthened by the tillers of earth who are the righteous and in the elevation of their main Mukbah female waters that rise from the earth and this Yezid is appointed to pour upon the earth all its might and existence is from the souls of the righteous that were gathered. From the earth, meaning they died while being righteous before they sinned when they were still emanating a fragrant scent. For example, it is written about
The time that Rabbi Kiva and his friends passed from the world and died in that manner meaning that they were killed by the government he said to him is it written anywhere in the Torah thus that righteous people should suffer so Rabbi Meir said to him it is not written so and did not Solomon say there are just men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked they are judged from above as though they sinned and acted like the wicked there are wicked men to whom it happens. According to the deeds of the righteous Kahilat 814 they sit quietly and peacefully in this world and judgment does not reach them as though they had acted like righteous people 169 he asks why does it happen to them according to the righteous and he answers either because it is revealed before the Holy One blessed be he that they will repent or that a righteous person will descend from them as Terak from whom emanated the true seed of Abraham or is from whom came Shizkiyahu and so. The other wicked of the world therefore on both sides meaning by the righteous and the wicked vanity is done that we said and is strengthened upon the earth as we have said 170 another explanation of the verse there is a vanity which is done upon the earth as we said its meaning is that it prevails in the world how because there are just men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked meaning that the actions of sinners confront them such as a daughter of idol worshippers or other actions that are actions of the wicked but they make their stand and do not sin because of fear of their master and they do not wish to become impure like many truly righteous they are confronted by similar actions and they are valiant for they have done the desire of their master and did not sin on this is written vanity has been done of the earth and its might has grown strong 171 again there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous ideas when they are presented with a good deed which is an action of the righteous that they merit it and fulfill it for example there was a Jewish murderer in the hills with heathen murderers and when a Jew would pass by there he would save him and guard him from the others Rabbi Akiva would declare of him there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous 172 another instance is that wicked person who was a neighbor of Rabbi Shia who met a woman one night who was going to her daughter's home he wanted to rape her she said to him I beg of you honor your master and do not sin by me he left her and did not sin by her he said there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous I said that this also is vanity meaning that vanity becomes powerful by the righteous to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked yet they do not sin similarly it becomes powerful by the wicked to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous and they do fulfill them 173 for we have learned the Holy One blessed be he has made righteous and wicked people in the world just as he is honored in the world by the actions of the righteous so he is honored by the wicked when they do good actions in the world as is written he has made everything beautiful in its time Kahila 311 woe to the wicked when he does evil to himself and strengthens in his sins as it is written alas it shall be ill with the wicked Yeshua 311 174 again he opened the discussion saying all things have I seen in the days of my vanity Kahila 715 this passage was also explained by the friends when wisdom was granted to Solomon he saw everything when the moon rained which is Mukha when she is full because Solomon received from her there is a just man this is the pillar of the world meaning the foundation that the world stands upon is lost as is written the righteous perishes Yeshua 571 at the time of exile when he cannot bestow. Abundance on anyone and is considered as lost in his righteousness refers to the mukbah that is called righteousness because when she lies on the dust the righteous man has no one upon whom to bestow abundance and therefore he is lost in his righteousness as long as Israel are in exile righteousness is with them in exile and therefore there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness Kahil at 715 because the supernal blessings do not reach him 175 and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness if this is a male who prolongs the quiet and tranquility to eat him how does he do this by his wickedness because he is wicked and his wife is called wickedness for she is a strong serpent for they receive quiet and tranquility only because a male cleaves to that female and his female gives them this similarly he supplies the other king so that the children of Israel are in exile among them this is until the holy one blessed be he raises the fallen Tabernacle of David which is the Mukbah who has fallen during exile as is written I will raise the tabernacle of David that is fallen Amos 911 section 19 and there went a man of the house of Levi Rabbi Yussi begins the discussion with an interpretation of the verse my beloved has gone down to his garden we learn that this is a reference to the children of Israel who are filled with the fragrance of the world to come the righteous souls that inhabit the lower garden of Eden which emit a fragrance when God descends into this place belong to those who lived in this world or who will someday descend to dwell there these souls have the outward form that was or will be their likeness on earth and the impression of the spirit is engraved within when the spirit leaves the body it returns to the garden in the form of the body it wore in this world because the spirit is like a seal and inward engraving that produces an outward protrusion the discussion then Turns to the meaning of the title verse this we're told is a reference to Gabriel who is also called night and his relationship to the souls of the righteous Gabriel takes the soul from the garden and delivers it to the body of the righteous at the time of birth and he guards it another explanation of the title verse interprets it as a reference to Amran who was told by a celestial voice to marry Yojib because their son would bring the time of the redemption of Israel closer one day. United the Shechinah was with them and she never ceased to cleave to their son Moses Yojib saw that he was a goodly son because when he was born he was marked with the sign of the covenant he was born circumcised and the house was filled with light the relevance of this passage a reading of this passage is invaluable as a tool for further meditation upon the nature of the soul and its relationship to God this makes us more discerning in our relationships with others for we learn to trust. That inner sense which can read the markings of another soul and warns us subtly of those who will not help us on the path to truth similarly the same process helps us draw closer to those whose presence is like a blessing in our progress towards the light 176 and there went a man of the house of Levi Shema 21 Rabbi Yussi opened the discussion saying my beloved is gone down to his garden to the bed of spices Sher Hashem 62 his garden is the congregation of Israel which is the Mukbah. Because she is a bed of spices included with all kinds of spices and fragrances of the world to come which is by at the time that the Holy One blessed be he descends to this garden which is the Mukbah. all the souls of the righteous adorn themselves there meaning that they receive Mokin and illuminations they all exude fragrance as is written the smell of your ointments and all spices Sher Hashem 410 these are the souls of the righteous who are called spices and after them the Mukbah. Is called a bed of spices for Rabbi Yitzhak said all these souls of the righteous who were in this world and all the souls that will descend in the future to this world are in this garden which is the Mukba 177 in the terrestrial garden of Eden they all retain the form and image that they had in this world and their secrets and mystery were given over to the sages the spirit that descends to people which is of the female side is always engraved on like a seal whose letters are etched. This is because the form of the body in this world protrudes outward and the spirit is engraved internally when the spirit removes itself from the body and ascends to the terrestrial garden of Eden that spirit protrudes in the terrestrial garden of Eden in the form and shape of the body exactly as in this world because it is always like a seal 178 and therefore she said set me as a seal sure hasher 86 as a seal is engraved inwards and that which is sealed takes shape within outward. Protruding form so is the spirit that is from her side in that way exactly in this world it is engraved inwards as written earlier in the previous verse when it removes itself from the body and enters the terrestrial garden of Eden in the air there, meaning that it cleaves there to its level which is the spirit in the garden of Eden protruding from that engraving which is inwards to assume a shape, it takes shape with a form that protrudes outwardly as the configuration of the body was in. This world 179 the soul of the person which is born of the tree of life from Zeir and is formed there above in that bundle of life which is malchute to delight in the beauty of Hashem as is written to behold the beauty of Hashem and to inquire in his temple Tehillim 274 180 and there went a man of the house of Levi Shema 21 this is Gabriel as written and the man Gabriel whom I saw in a vision Daniel 921 the house of Levi is the congregation of Israel which is malchute that comes from the left side because Gabriel is from the left side and took to wife a daughter of Levi Shema 21 that is the soul 181 for we have learned that at the time that the body of a righteous is born in this world the holy one blessed be he calls Gabriel Gabriel takes that soul that
Come through the sun that shall be born from them 184 and the Holy One blessed be he assisted him for we learned the Shechinah dwelt on their bed and that their intention when they cleaved together was on the Shechinah therefore the Shechinah was not removed from the sun whom they bore so as to fulfill what is written and you shall sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy Vayikra 1144 a person sanctifies himself from below so the Holy One blessed be he sanctifies him from above is there. Intention was the cleaving of the Shechinah so did the Shechinah cleave to their very actions 185 Rabbi Yitzhak said fortunate are the righteous whose desire is to cleave to the Holy One blessed be he always as they cleave to him constantly thus does he cleave to them and never leaves them woe to the wicked that their desire and cleaving are far removed from him from the Holy One blessed be he for not only are they distanced from him but they also cleave to the other side meaning the side of impurity come and behold from Amran who cleaved to the Holy One blessed be he Moses came the Holy One blessed be he never turned from him and the Shechinah cleaved to him always thus blessed is his lot 186 and the woman conceived and she bore a son and when she saw that he was a goodly son Shema 22 he asks what is the meaning of that he was a goodly son Rabbi Shia said the meaning is that he was born circumcised because the secret of the covenant is called good as is written. Say of the righteous that it shall be well good with him. Yeshayah 310 and the righteous is the secret of the covenant. 187 Rabbi Yossi said she saw the light of the Shechinah that shone in him for at the time that he was born the entire house was filled with light as is written and when she saw that he was a goodly son and Elohim saw the light that it was good. Bereshit 14 and as good alludes to light so here good alludes to light and hence it is written that he was a goodly son. Everything was included in him he contained the light of the Shechinah and also as was written earlier he was born circumcised. Section 20 and she hid him three months in his discussion of the title verse Rabbi Yehuda explains the significance of three months and reveals that the Ark of Papyrus is an allusion to the Ark of the Covenant while the child signifies Israel. Another explanation of the verse a man of the house of Levi interprets this as a reference. To God who went from the place where Abba and I am a the supernal mother and father unite as the foundation the relevance of this passage 188 and she hid him three months Shema 22 he asks what is the significance of three months Rabbi Yehuda said it is an allusion to the virtue of Moses not being recognized by the supernal radiance for three months as is written in the third month Shema 191 for then the Torah was given through him and the Shechinah was revealed and dwelt upon him before. Everyone's eyes as is written and Moses went up to the Elohim and the Hashem called to him Abba 3 this is what is written and when she could no longer hide him Shema 23 for until that time his communication with the Holy One blessed be he was not known and then it is written Moses speaks and the Elohim answers him by a voice Shema 19 19 189 she took for him a box lit ark made of papyrus Shema 23 this is an allusion to the ark in which the tablets of the covenant came in ark. Made of papyrus is the Ark of the Covenant and daubed it with slime clay and with pitch because the Ark was overlaid inside and out. Rabbi Yehuda said this is the Torah that the Holy One blessed be he inscribed with positive commandments and negative commandments 190 and put the child in it. But three these are Yisrael as it said when Yisrael was still a youth I loved him. Hashia 111 and she laid it in the rushes Hepsuf of it so there was no obligation to perform the commandments of it. Torah until the end Hepsaf when Yisrael came to the land at the end of 40 years by the rivers brink Hepsafa meaning according to the speech of those who teach Torah and laws to Yisrael because the word Sefa is like the word language Hepsafa and speech and the word Yor river has a meaning of Mora teacher 191 another explanation a man refers to the Holy One blessed be he as is written Hashem is a man of war Shemot 153 of the house of Levi refers to the Holy. One blessed be he who went from the place where the supernal wisdom is being supernal Abba and that river which is supernal I am a joined together and never separate he went from the place of the Izzet of supernal Abba and I am a of the house of Levi as derived from the word Leviathan meaning is that he caused the Leviathan Lidwell to dwell in this world to bring joy into the world which is the Sheshanah it is written there is a Leviathan whom you have made to play their entail 10,426 and took to wife a daughter of Levi this is the Holy One blessed be he meaning the place where the light of the moon illuminates which is the Sheshanah 192 and the woman conceived and bore a son Shema 22 the woman meaning the Sheshanah is most certainly called the woman as is written she shall be called woman Bereshit 223 and this is the name of the Sheshanah originally she was a daughter of Levi which is Yezid of Abba and I am a that is called Leviathan as mentioned earlier and it is. Certainly so as Abba and I am a built the Mukba therefore he asked originally she was a daughter of Levi and now she is a woman and he answers it is certainly so as we have learned that a woman is called the daughter of so and so before she marries meaning by the name of her father and mother after she marries she is called a woman by her own name and your daughter woman and bride are all one level meaning the Shechinah 193 she hit him three months Shema 22 these are the three months in which severe judgment is prevalent in the world and which are they there to Mazavi and Tavis in which there is no revelation of the Shechinah because of the judgments in the world he asks what is he trying to tell us and he answers that he is telling us that before Moses descended to this world he was above with the Shechinah therefore the Shechinah joined with him from the day he was born from this Rabbi Shimon derived that the spirits of the righteous were above in the Garden of Eden before. They descended into this world 194 and when she could no longer hide him a bit 3 he asks what is the meaning of she took for him a box made of papyrus he answers she covered him with signs so that he should be protected from the fish that swam in the great sea meaning clipot and the demons as is written where there are creeping things innumerable tail 10425 she covered him to be guarded against them with a precious cover of two colors white and black the slime is white which is the secret of the right column and the pitch is black which is the secret of the left column that is mixed with malchute of the attribute of judgment then the red and it converts to black which is the secret of our sages that black is really red that has been affected and she placed Moses who is the secret of the central column among them so that he should be recognized with them as the secret of dad which is the central column because he was going to ascend among them at a different time too. Receive the Torah 195 and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river Shema 25 this daughter of Pharaoh came from the left side of the strict judgment as is written to wash herself at the river in the river and not in the sea the sea alludes to Malchut of holiness but the river is the attribute of strict judgment of the left side and the Egyptians made it their idol and since the daughter of Pharaoh bathed there she was also of strict judgment 196 and you may ask why then it is written and your rod with which you smote the river Shema 175 Moses smote only the sea which the verse also calls a river so the term river is not precise and he answers Aaron smote the river through Moses and the verse considers it as though he himself did it 197 similarly it is written and seven days were completed after Hashem had smitten the river Shema 725 even though Aaron smote it but since it came from the Holy One blessed be he the Torah refers to it. As after Hashem smote thus afterwards it is called in the name of Moses because Aaron did it at his instruction and her maidens walked along by the river's side Shema 25 there are the other companies who came from that side of the river 198 and when she had opened it she saw him the child Ibit 6 he asks it is written she saw him but it should say she saw why then does it state she saw him Rabbi Shimon said there is nothing in the Torah that does not have supernal and precious secrets for this is what we learned that the mark of the king and queen meaning Tiferet and Malchut are found in him it is the mark of Babalat Bab Hayalat for Bab is Tiferet and Hay is Malchut therefore it says she saw him the word contains extra Bab and Hay immediately when she saw this she had compassion on him Shema 26 until this point the Torah talks about the supernal worlds above from here and further it talks about the worlds below except for this verse and his sister stood. Ibn for section 21 and his sister stood afar off initially a discussion of the title verse identifies his sister as the children of Israel from whom Zir and is concealed at a distance the discussion then turns to reinforce the idea that the righteous and especially Moses are known above before they descend to this world and their souls are drawn from a high place we learn that just as the body has both a mother and father the soul also has a mother and father. Indeed everything above and below is produced by
Off is as is written Hashem appeared of old also from afar to me your Mayah 312 meaning that keeping is not in the open but rather hidden from a distance 200 it seems that the righteous are known above before their descent to the world this refers to all the righteous and all the more so to Moses therefore it is said of him she saw him Shema 26 spelled with Habob which is the secret of the impression made by the king and the queen as already mentioned and it is also understood that the souls of the righteous are drawn from a high place as we explained in the passage and there went a man of the house of Levi Shema 21 which is the secret of Yezid of Shachma and Bino which is a high place the secret of this is what we learn from here that the soul has a father and a mother which are Zeir and and the Nukvah because man is Zeir and and the daughter of Levi is the Nukvah similarly there is a father and mother to the body on earth and it appears that in all aspects whether above or below everything comes forth from a male and a female and we have explained the secret of the passage let the earth bring forth living creatures Bear sheet 124 the earth refers to the congregation of Israel who is Mukva living creatures lit soul is the soul of Adam as we explained because Zeir and Ben and Mukva are father and mother of the first man as we explained Rabbi Abba came and kissed him he said assuredly you are speaking beautifully and it is definitely so fortunate is the portion of Moses the faithful prophet above all the other prophets of the world 201 and his sister stood Shema 24 this is Chakma the Mukva that is called the lower Chakma as it said say to wisdom you are my sister Mishle 74 Rabbi Yitzhak said the decree of judgment was never removed from the world for every time that Israel sent judgment accused them and then his sister stood afar off for the Shechina distanced herself from them as it said Hashem Appeared from afar to me, Yermea 312, section 22, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down. The opening discussion of the title verse reveals that it contains an allusion to the attribute of judgment that comes down to bathe in the blood of Israel when they separate from and neglect the Torah. Rabbi Yehuda then speaks about the importance of repentance and prayer, especially prayer accompanied by weeping. The Shechinah stands over Israel and argues their merits when she saw the children of Israel repent before God with tearful supplications. She had great compassion for them and considered them as gentle and good in contrast to the other stubborn and hard hearted nations. Rabbi Yitzhak then reiterates the concept that the redemption of Israel depends on weeping. We learned that the tears Ezov wept before his father over his lost birthright brought Israel into captivity when the force of Ezov's tears is exhausted, the redemption of Israel will arrive. It Relevance of this passage a reading of this section reveals the spiritual impact of true and deeply felt emotion and thereby reminds us of that we must both feel and outwardly show our repentance dwelling on these great symbols and their images we can learn to draw into our own lives the purity and courage of those who lived long before us in order to show the way through eons of darkness the sense of continuity and connection with the past raises our consciousness to become in tune with that higher consciousness represented by the patriarchs 202 and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river Shema 25 when Israel severed themselves from the Torah the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river immediately the attribute of judgment which is called the daughter of Pharaoh would come down to wash herself with the blood of Israel meaning with their blemish because of the disregard of the Torah because river means Torah and her maidens Walked along by the river's side because of the disregard to the Torah for those who studied it loosened their hands from it. 203 Rabbi Yehuda said everything in the world depends upon repentance and prayer that the person prays to the Holy One, blessed be he, one who sheds tears during his prayer, especially for there is no gate that these tears cannot enter. It is written, and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and she opened refers to the Shechinah who stands over Israel as a mother over her children, and she always opens with the merit of Israel. 204 As soon as she opened it, she saw the child, meaning a darling child, Yermea 3119, referring to Israel who are constantly sinning before the king, but they immediately beseeched the Holy One, blessed be he, returned in repentance and wept before him as a son weeps before his father, as is written, Behold, a weeping boy, Shema 26, since he wept, all the difficult decrees were removed from him, it is written, and she had. Compassion on him because she was stirred with compassion and she pitied him 205 and said this is one of the Hebrews children of it 6 for they are soft-hearted not children of the idol worshippers who are stiff-necked and hard-hearted the Hebrews children are soft-hearted in the merit of the fathers and mothers to repent before their master and the maid went and called the child's mother Ibadate this is in reference to Rachel the matriarch who was weeping this is the verse a voice was heard in Rama lamentation and bitter weeping Rachel weeping for her children Yermea 3114 and he is crying meaning Israel and the mother of the child is weeping referring to Rachel the mother of Israel 206 Rabbi Yehuda said for the future this is what is written they shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them Ibadate he asks what is the meaning of they shall come with weeping and he answers in the merit of the weeping of the mother of the child it Mother of Israel who is Rachel they will come and will be gathered from the exile Rabbi Yitzhak said the redemption of Israel is dependent only upon weeping meaning when the tears that Esau wept before his father will be finished and come to an end and they will be redeemed as is written and Esau raised his voice and wept. Bereshit 2738 these tears lowered Israel into exile therefore as soon as these tears cease through the weeping of Israel they will go out of exile this is the meaning of they shall come with weeping and with supplications will I lead them section 23 and he looked this way and that this section discusses the episode wherein Moses kills an Egyptian who is beating in Israel he looked this way and that we're told to see if the Egyptian proclaimed the divine unity performed any good works or would produce a righteous son though wicked men often beget good sons and these are especially precious to God since they represent light. From darkness Moses saw through the Holy Spirit that the Egyptian would not have such a son the relevance of this passage a reading of this passage sharpens those inner faculties we have from God that enable us to see beyond the surface of both people and things and to understand the essence within through cultivating these faculties we will avoid many disasters caused by wolves in sheep's clothing and also be able to help others do the same 207 and he looked this way had K-O-H-C-A-F-A and that K-O-H Shema 212 since he saw in these 50 letters that Israel proclaimed twice every day the prayer Shema Israel your O Israel that contains C-A-F-A equals 25 and C-A-F-A letters twice but he did not see that the Egyptian would be saying them and he looked K-O-H and K-O-H Rabbi Abba said the first K-O-H-I-S because he looked to see whoever possessed good deeds and the second K-O-H-I-S because he desired to perceive whether a righteous son would emerge from him immediately he saw that there was no man he saw by the Holy Spirit that no righteous son would not emerge from him. 208 Rabbi Abba said how many wicked people are there in the world who beget good children more than the righteous and that good son who comes from the wicked person is even better because he is pure from impure life from darkness wisdom from foolishness and this is the best of all section 24 and he sat by the well in the section we learned that God allowed Moses to see all through the Holy Spirit so that he would kill the Egyptian and go to the same well to which Jacob came while Jacob looked at the well Moses sat by the well which reveals that although both were of the same level of holiness Moses ascended higher than Jacob this well Rabbi Yitzhak tells Rabbi Yossi is not the same well that Isaac and Abraham dug rather it was created at the same time that the world was created and its mouth was created by Shabbat at twilight there follows a description of it. System of unification of the three columns and the roles of the Sphirot within the system after Rabbi Yehuda quotes the verse and the priest of Midian has seven daughters and questions how the daughters could have drawn water from Jacob's well when there was a large stone covering its mouth Rabbi Shi resolves this difficulty explaining that there was no longer a stone covering the mouth of the well because Jacob removed it as it was no longer needed the relevance of this passage a reading of this awakens within us the ability to look beyond the Torah stories to the eternal truths contained within them seeing how it is possible to conceal a lifetime's wisdom with a few simple images and seeing also that the Rabbi's responses in the Zohar quite often mask wisdom with humor the sense of being suddenly connected across the centuries to these extraordinary men helps to lift one's horizons until we realize that it is to everything that lives we are joined by a common bond of faith in God 209 he asks what is the illusion in the mentioning of Esau twice and he saw an Egyptian
The inner meaning of the well is Malchut, the spouse of Tiferet, and since Moses was the inner part of Tiferet, therefore by him it says SAT, and by Jacob only he saw 210. Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yitzhak were traveling on the road. Rabbi Yossi said the well that Jacob and Moses saw was the same well that Abraham and Isaac dug, which are the two columns right and left of Zeir and he said to him, No, the well of Jacob and Moses was not of the same status as the well that Abraham and Isaac dug this. Well was created at the same time that the world was created, and by Shabbat at twilight the mouth of the well was created, and this is the well that Jacob and Moses saw. Therefore it says, and he sat down by well to Sifta Adendum 211 Mishnah. Those who pursue righteousness, that is who pursue to perfect malchut, that is called righteousness through three columns right, left, and central, which are Zeir and those who forcibly demand the secret of faith, which is the secret of extending. The left column to malchut, which is called faith, those who have adhered with the bond of faith, which is the bond which is in the right column, those who know the ways of the supernal king, which is Zeir and the secret of the central column, the master of the Tisifta, calls them and says to them, draw near and hearken those who are pursuing to perfect of malchut and its illumination with the three columns, hearken the system of this unification and how it is done 212 when the two columns. Chakma and Bina ascend and emerge towards the one central column. They receive it between the two arms, which are Chisit and Gvira. Due to their reception of the central column, Chakma and Bina descended to become Chisit and Gvira. For the first three of the first three Sfirot were gone from them. Malchut cannot as yet receive Chakma from them as the light of Chesed prevails. Well, Chakma there is hidden until the two which are Chisit and Gvira descend below, meaning that they become Netzach and Hot. There too, as the main Mokin are two right and left that become Netzach and Hot and one between them, meaning that they need the central column to reconcile between them. And that is Yezid. The arbitrator between Chisit and Gvira is called Tiferet, and the arbitrator between Netzach and Hot is called Yezid. And he explained his words. These two that descended below are the place from which the prophets gain nourishment, namely Netzach and Hot. There is one between them, which is yes, it joins everything both the right column and the left column it receives from everything both Chakma and Chesedim since it is the central column that sustains their illuminating and therefore it also receives their illumination to itself for this is the rule all the illuminations that the lower causes to be sustained among the supernal it too attains in its entirety 213 that holy well which is malchut with the mokin of the first three Sfirot is situated under the meaning under Netzach and Yezid, that is the field of holy apple trees from that well they would water the flocks, who are all these chariots of angels and all these angels have wings three were found lying by this well they are the three Sfirot Netzach and Yezid as mentioned and this well is filled by them in the light of the three first Sfirot and it is called Adonai about this is written Adonai Elohim you have begun to harm 324 and it is written and cause your face to shine upon your Sanctuary that is desolate for the sake of Adonai, the master of the whole earth. Daniel 917. When it has the three first Sfirot, it is referred to in the masculine master. This is what is written. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the master of the whole earth. Yahashua 311. And it is concealed one holy source that is Yezid that flows into it constantly and fills it. And it is called Hashem. Sebot. Blessed is he forever and ever. End of this of the 214. Now the priest of Midian has seven daughters. And they came and drew water. Shema 216. Rabbi Yehuda said, If this well was the well of Jacob, is it not written by Jacob? And there were all the flocks gathered and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Bear she 293. Yet here the daughters of Yetro did not need this. They just came and drew water without any other effort, meaning of rolling the stone from the mouth of the well. 215. Rabbi Shia answered, Jacob removed the stone from the well. It is written that when the flocks gathered, there they put the stone back upon the well's mouth of it, but by Jacob it is not written that he put the stone back because afterwards there was no more need for the stone since originally the water would not rise, but when Jacob came the water rose toward him because the water increased, therefore that stone was no longer on the mouth of the well since they did not need protection anymore. Therefore, it says by the daughters of Yitro that they came and drew without any effort of rolling it. Stone section 25 come from the four winds, O breath. Rabbi Lazar begins by quoting the title verse and asks how Ezekiel could have prophesied on the wind when it is clearly written that man cannot control the wind. The answer to this question we're told is that he prophesied by God's will. Furthermore, the spirit wind was embodied in material form in this world, and Ezekiel called to it to come from the region where it resides. This place is not the Garden of Eden, Rabbi. The laser explains, but rather the throne that stands on four pillars, the soul ascends from the garden to the throne and then descends to the world. And just as the body is taken from the four regions of the world, the spirit is taken from the four pillars of the throne. This discussion prompts the Jew who sits with the companions to describe his remarkable experience in the desert. He tells them that after entering a fragrant cavern, he found himself in a remarkable place where he encountered a man with a scepter who gave him a bundle of writings to give to the fellowship. This man then struck him with his scepter, causing him to fall asleep. In his dream, he heard many voices and saw crowds of people arriving at that place. When the man with the scepter touched them with it and spoke to them, they proceeded on and then flew up into the air and disappeared. When he awoke, the Jew continues. The man with the scepter explained that the crowds in his dream were righteous spirits on their way to the Garden of Eden, he then proceeded to discuss the relationship between the four elements of the body and the four spiritual elements of the body. After concluding his story, the Jew gives the bundle of writings to Rabbi Lazar. When he opens them, a flame explodes and envelopes Rabbi Lazar. This allows him to gain new spiritual insight before the bundle flies from his hand. And though he is left grateful and happy, Rabbi Lazar tells nothing of this to his colleagues. The relevance of this passage, no. Man knows when the messenger of God will arrive in his life, and none knows if he will recognize either messenger or message. When they come, this section helps us understand more deeply this idea and learn to be always alert to whispers from eternity, never dismissing any vessel or vehicle as unworthy to be God's mouthpiece. This will increase our attention to what is happening around us, and we will learn to find the Maker's hand in all that he has made his eyes staring back at us from every face. We look upon and his joy in every little moment of our lives. 216 Rabbi Lazar and Rabbi Abba were traveling from Tiberias to Tzibri. While they were walking, a Jew met them. He joined them. Rabbi Lazar said, Let everyone say a word of Torah. 217 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion, saying, Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Wind. Yashiskel 379. From this passage, I know from which place the wind emerges, for how was Ezekiel able to prophesy it? When seeing as it is written, man does not have power over the wind to control the wind. Kahila 88 Man cannot control the wind, but the Holy One, blessed be he, rules over everything, and Ezekiel was prophesying by his command. Furthermore, the spirit or wind was already in the body in this world because they're dead in the cave whom he resurrected, therefore he prophesied to it. Come from the four winds, O wind, Yashiskel 379, meaning from that place which pillars serve American Samoa borders at the four winds of the world, which are the secret of the lower throne, which is Malchut the throne for Zeir and it has four pillars in the secret of the four directions of the world, which are Chesed and Gvira, Tiferet and Malchut, where the spirit stays before it returns into a body in this world. 218 That Jew who joined them sprang up before him. Rabbi Lazar said to him, What did you see? He answered, I saw something. He said to him, What is it? He replied, If the spirit of people is attired in the garden of Eden in the form and image of the body of this world and it resides there, it should have been written in the passage, Come from the garden of Eden, O breath or spirit, why does it say from the four winds? 219 He said to him, The spirit does not descend to this world until it ascends from the earthly garden of Eden to the throne, which is Malchut that stands on four pillars, which are Chesed, Gvira, Tiferet and Malchut. When the spirit ascends there, it draws into itself from that throne of the king and descends to this world the body receives from the four directions of the world which are the four elements fire, air, water and earth. The spirit also receives from the four directions of the throne. They are Chesed, Gvira, Tiferet and Malchut. Thus it becomes perfected through them. 220 That man said to him when I jumped before you it was because I saw something on this
They flew in the air and ascended but I do not know where and I heard the sounds of many hosts and I did not know who they were I awoke and saw nothing and I was frightened in that place 223 meanwhile I saw that man he asked me have you seen something I said to him I saw something I saw in my sleep such and such he said on that road the spirits of the righteous go to the garden of Eden to enter there and what you heard from them meaning the sounds of many hosts is because they are standing in the garden in their forms of this world and they are rejoicing with the righteous who are coming there 224 as the body is built in this world by the binding of the four elements fire air water and earth and is formed from them in this world so the spirit is formed of the four spirits that stand in the garden of Eden which are Shesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut the spirit is enveloped there and is formed in the image of the body that is formed in this world and if not for these four spirits which are the air in the garden meaning Shesed, Burit, Tiferet and Malchut from the light of Shesedim that is called air they would not form any image at all and no spirit would be enveloped there 225 these four spirits are intertwined one with another and the spirit is formed and wrapped with them as the body is formed in the bond of the four elements of the world fire air water and dust therefore Ezekiel said come from the four winds O wind Yashis, 379 meaning these Four spirits of the Garden of Eden with which it is clothed and formed and now accept this bundle of writings and go on your way and give it to the friends 226 Rabbi Lazar and the friends approached the Jew kissing him on the forehead Rabbi Lazar said blessed is the merciful who sent you here because this is certainly clarification of the matter the Holy One blessed be he brought to my mouth this passage come from the four winds so that you would reveal to me its secret the man gave him the bundle of writings as soon as Rabbi Lazar took it and opened it a conflagration emerged and surrounded him he saw in the bundle of writings what he saw in the bundle flew out of his hands 227 Rabbi Lazar wept and said who can fathom the secrets of the king as it is written Hashem who shall abide in your tent who shall dwell in your holy hill Tehillim 151 blessed is the way and the moment that we met you and from that day Rabbi Lazar rejoiced and said nothing to his friends of what he saw in the writings while they were still traveling they came upon a well of water stood there and drank of the water section 26 the well of Moses and Jacob in the section Rabbi Lazar discourses on the well of Jacob and Moses the waters of this well arose towards Jacob and he found his spouse Rachel there similarly when Moses came across the well the waters rose towards Moses and he joined there with his spouse Sipporah the discussion then turns to Yitro even priests who renounced paganism and ceased to worship idols because of this renunciation Yitro's people excommunicated him and they drove his daughters away so they could not water his flock through the Holy Spirit Moses knew that their mistreatment was caused by their rejection of idolatry and so Moses helped Yitro's daughters with the help of a metaphorical example Rabbi Shia then explains that their rescue was actually due to the Egyptian whom Moses killed the relevance of this Passage the few like repetitions of the theme of the dead Egyptian stretching across many of the surrounding sections here helps to make us more aware of the complex chains of cause and effect in our own lives enabling us to see the importance of only creating righteous effects and also not judging the actions of others because we cannot know from whence they really sprang to begin with this lesson of tolerance is invaluable for unless we cease to judge we shall not be spared judgment. Ourselves 228 Rabbi Lazar said blessed is the portion of the righteous Jacob fled from his brother and he chanced upon a well which is the secret of Mukba as soon as the well saw him the waters recognized their master and they rose toward him in the secret of Mukba and female waters and they rejoiced with him and then his soulmate Rachel joined him Moses fled from Pharaoh and chanced upon that well and the waters saw him and recognized their master and rose towards him in the secret of May and Mukman and there he was joined by his soulmate Sipporah 229 what was the difference between Moses and Jacob meaning there is really no difference between Moses and Jacob it is written of Jacob and it came to pass that when Jacob saw Rachel and rolled the stone there she 2910 of Moses it is written and the shepherds came and drove them away but Moses stood up and helped them Shema 217 after he saw the waters rising towards him certainly Moses knew that he would find his soulmate there also the Holy Spirit never departed from him and through it he knew that Sipporah would be his wife Moses said certainly when Jacob came here and the waters rose towards him someone came to him who took him to his home and gave him all his needs so will it be with me 230 that man said so have I learned that Nitro was a priest to idols as soon as he saw that there is nothing in idolatry he separated from its service the people arose and excommunicated him when the people saw his Daughters coming to water his sheep they drove them away for originally they themselves herded his sheep since he was their priest as soon as Moses saw by the Holy Spirit that they were doing this because of the matter of idolatry Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock and all this was done through zealousness for the Holy One blessed be he 231 Rabbi Lazar said to him you are with us but we do not know your name he said I am Yosar the son of Jacob the friends came and kissed him and said you have been with us and we did not know you they walked together all that day and the morrow they escorted him three miles and he went on his way 232 and they said an Egyptian man delivered us Shema 219 Rabbi Shia said the friends explained this to mean that the Holy Spirit flickered in them when they said an Egyptian man delivered us they spoke but did not know what they spoke for example a man was dwelling in a wilderness and many days passed that he ate no. Food one day a bear came to catch a lamb the lamb fled and the bear pursued him until they reached that man in the wilderness he saw the lamb grabbed it slaughtered it and ate the meat we find that the bear caused that man to eat food also here the Egyptian that was killed by Moses caused Moses to flee and come to meet him to the well therefore they said an Egyptian man delivered us with the Holy Spirit meaning the Egyptian man that Moses killed section 27 I am black but comely in answer to questions regarding the verse and these are the names of the children of Israel Rabbi Yehuda explains the title verse I am black but comely this we learn is a reference to the Sheshanah who is described as black because Israel are in captivity but comely because they cleave to the Torah and good deeds for this the children of Israel will inherit the heavenly Jerusalem the relevance of this passage a reading of the section reminds us that it is our Faith and good works rather than our circumstances that make us beautiful in the eyes of God the image of the celestial Jerusalem gains greater significance too and we will find it easier to summon up this potent image in prayer and everyday life feeling the energy of the Shechina drawing closer each day bringing with her the limitless light of the beloved one 233 another explanation of and these are the names of the children of Israel Shema 11 he was presented with this difficulty. Israel is the name of greatness and so why is this name mentioned when they came to the exile in Egypt and why does he repeat afterwards with Jacob which is the name of smallness and to answer this Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion saying I am black but comely sure Hashem 15 I am black but comely refers to the congregation of Israel that is the Shechina that is black from the exile but comely with Torah commandments and good deeds that the children of Israel do O daughters of Jerusalem these are the souls who are occupied with Torah and the precepts therefore they merit inheriting the celestial Jerusalem which is the Shechinah like the tents of Kedar, although she is blackened had Kedar in exile still in all in action she is like the curtains of Solomon had Shlomo meaning like the curtains which is the secret of the lights of the king to whom peace had Shalom belongs which is Zeir and section 28 make haste my beloved when Rabbi Shia the great goes to visit Rabbi Shimon Bar Yukai to learn from the masters of the Mishnah he see a curtain of fire behind which Rabbi Shimon and his students converse deciding to listen to the conversation from outside of the house he hears an explanation of the title verse according to the masters we learn that this verse signifies the longing of Israel for God as they implore him not distance himself from them without looking back Rabbi Shimon then hears Rabbi Shia weeping Outside of the house and tells his students that the Shechinah is with him knowing that the Shechinah will protect him from being burned by the fiery curtain Rabbi Lazar is about to go and bring him in when he hears a voice that stops him Rabbi Shia then quotes the title verse and the curtain parts a sign granting Rabbi Shia permission to enter Rabbi Shimon then stands up and the fire moves from the place where he stands to Rabbi Shia causing him to become mute Rabbi Shia enters with his eyes lowered and is unable to speak until Rabbi Lazar passes his hand over Rabbi Shia's mouth Rabbi Shia then expounds upon his
Consciousness until it is in tune with these great souls of old and with the sheer grandeur and majesty of the creation it is then possible to grasp just a tiny sense of what it means to be in the presence of God for if his creation is so ineffably beautiful in form and so inspiring and feel how much more so will be its creator the sense of wonder thus cultivated must then be retained for there is nowhere within his creation that the creator does not exist 234 Rabbi Shirabba went to the Masters of the mission to learn from them he went to Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh and saw a curtain of fire that divided the house and Rabbi Shimon and his students were in the inside of the curtain Rabbi Shia was mystified and said I will hear a word from his mouth from here from outside the fiery curtain 235 he heard the voice of one of the students of Rabbi Shimon who said make haste my beloved and be you like a gazelle or a young archer Hasher made 114 all the longings that Israel had for the Holy One blessed be he were as Rabbi Shimon said the desire of Israel is that the Holy One blessed be he should not distance himself but rather run like a gazelle or a young deer 236 Rabbi Shimon said what is the reason that there is no animal in the world who does as a gazelle or young deer which when he flees goes a measure and turns his head to the place whence he left he always turns his head backwards so did Israel say master of the universe if we cause that you ascend from us let it be your desire that you shall flee like a gazelle or young deer who flees and turns his head to the place that he left, meaning the place he was before from where he fled this is what is written and yet for all that when they are in the land of their enemies I will not cast them away nor will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. They I cross 2644 another explanation is that the deer sleeps with one eye while the other eye is awake so did Israel say to the Holy One blessed be he. Do as the deer behold the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps tail him 1214 237 Rabbi Shia heard and said those higher ones are occupied with Torah inside the house and I sit outside he wept Rabbi Shimon heard and said assuredly the Shechinat is outside meaning with Rabbi Shia who will go out and bring him in his son Rabbi Lazar said if I am burned by going out through the fiery curtain I will not be burned because the Shechinat is outside by Rabbi Shia let the Shechinat Enter and the fire of the curtain will be complete. Rabbi Laser heard a voice that said the pillars have not yet been supported, which is the secret of the three columns, and the gates have still not been completed, meaning the fifty gates of Bina, and he is now of the smaller spice trees of Eden, meaning of the smallest souls who are called spices. Therefore, Rabbi Laser did not go out to bring him in 238. Rabbi Shia sat with inside. He opened the discussion, saying, Turn, my beloved, and be. You like a gazelle or young archer, Hashem 217, meaning according to the explanation that he heard from Rabbi Shimon, that even though that he was fleeing, he turned his head back and did not distance himself, and then the gate of the curtain opened, but Rabbi Shia did not enter. Rabbi Shimon raised his eyes and saw that the entrance of the curtain opened. He said, Apparently, permission has been granted to whoever is outside, yet we are inside, and we must not bring him in. Rabbi Shimon stood up. And the fire moved from its place to the place of Rabbi Shia. Rabbi Shimon said the spark of the gathering light has already spread outside to Rabbi Shia. Yet I am here inside and I must not bring him in. Rabbi Shia's mouth became mute because of the fire that spread towards him. 239. As soon as Rabbi Shia entered inside he lowered his eyes and did not raise his head. Rabbi Shimon said to his son Rabbi Lazar pass your hand over the mouth of Rabbi Shia because he does not know about this. As he is not accustomed to it and he did not know what to do Rabbi Lazar arose and passed his hand over Rabbi Shia's mouth. Rabbi Shia opened his mouth and said my eye has seen what I have not ever seen and my stature has straightened for I have never thought so it is good to die in the good golden fire that is burning 240. In the place of Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh which casts sparks to all sides every single spark ascends to 370 chariots then every single chariot separates to thousands and Tens of thousands until it reaches Atticum and that sits on the throne and the throne trembles from it to 260 worlds 241 until Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh reaches the place of Eden of the righteous until the superiority of Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh is heard throughout the firmaments those above and below at the same time are amazed and say is this Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh who shook everything up who can stand before him this is Rabbi Shimon whose voice at the moment he opens his mouth to start occupying himself with Torah all the thrones and all the firmaments and all the chariots hearken to and also all those that praise their master 242 there is no one to open to sing praises and there is no one to end his song of praise that is to say those who are in the middle of their praises do not finish their praises for they are all there to hearken to the voice of Rabbi Shimon Bar-Yakeh it comes to a point that no utterance is heard in all the heavens above and below when Rabbi Shimon concludes his occupation with Torah who has seen songs who has seen joy of those that praise their master who has seen the voices that permeate all the heavens and because of Rabbi Shimon they all come meaning all the souls and angels and kneel and bow before their master raising up the secrets of the spices that are in Eden which is the secret of the illumination of Chakma until Atikimen and all this is because of Rabbi Shimon 243 Rabbi Shimon opened his mouth and said six levels descended with Jacob to Egypt they are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot and Yezid and each one expands to ten when they are in the illumination of Zeir and alone then they are sixty and are one thousand when they receive the illumination of Chakma which is the secret of thousands then they are sixty thousand up to ten thousand when receiving the illumination of Chesedim from Attic and they are six hundred thousand and corresponding to them are six levels to Yisrael because from Yisrael they descend to Jacob corresponding to them are six steps to the supernal throne which are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet of Zeir and that includes Netzach, Hot, Yezid and corresponding to them are the six steps to the lower throne which is Malchut which are Chesed, Bure, Tiferet, Netzach, Hot, and Yezid as is written the throne had six steps I may lash in 1019 this is the meaning of I will cause you to increase like the plant of the field Yashiskel 167 which is the first grade and you did increase which is the second and grow big the third and you did come to possess great attractions the fourth your breasts were firm the fifth and your hair was grown the sixth correspondingly it is written and the children of Israel were fruitful Shemot 17 which is the first and increased abundantly the second and multiplied the third and grew the fourth exceedingly the fifth and mighty the sixth 244 come and behold each one of the aforementioned six extremities equals 10, meaning from the illumination of Zeir and itself whose fire are counted by tens as aforementioned, and the six extremities become 60 then they are the 60 valiant men who surround the Shechinah as is written behold the litter that of Solomon Shurhashem 37 which is the Shechinah that is called bed 60 valiant men are round about it of the mighty men of Israel and they are 600,000 when she receives the illumination of Shechidim from Atticum and as mentioned above that emerged with Israel from the exile and came with Jacob to the exile 245 Rabbi Shia said to him but there are seven she said Burah Tiferet Netzach Hadiazit and Malchut and when each one become ten they add up to seventy and not sixty Rabbi Shimon said to him that seventy does not apply here because here are considered the levels that illuminate and the level of Malchut does not illuminate of itself and if you wish to consider seven meaning to count also Malchut with the six extremities it is written and six branches shall come out of its sides three branches of the candlestick out of the one side Shema 2532 for they correspond to Chesed Burah Tiferet Netzach Hot and Yezid and one branch that is central which is Malchut is not counted as it is written the seven lamps shall give light towards the body of the candlestick Bimid Bar 82 because Malchut does not illuminate of itself it only receives from the six candles section 29 Wherefore exile and wherefore to Egypt Rabbi Lazar begins the discussion by asking his father why God allowed Israel to go into exile and why into Egypt after receiving encouragement from his father he interprets the verse there are sixty queens eighty concubines and young women without number we then learn that God scattered all the nations across the earth and appointed supernal ministers over them taking Israel as his portion indeed God created the world for the sake of Israel and endowed it with permanence through Abraham wisdom Isaac understanding and Jacob knowledge once the twelve tribes were born to Jacob the supernal pattern was complete as ordained from the beginning if
Exteriors of the holy living creature of Israel, which is Malchut and therefore beamed after it sixty queens. They are the angels who are appointed over the nations as written further, and eighty concubines are the angels who are appointed in the inscriptions of the queens which are under the sixty queens. Therefore they are called concubines and not queens, and young women without number is as is written. Is there any number to his army? Zio 253, and yet it is written by Dovmai. Undefiled is but one, she is the only one of her mother. Sure, Hashem 69, this is the holy Sheshana that emerges from twelve lights and is the shine that illuminates everything. Therefore it is called mother as it is written, she is the only one of her mother. 248, similarly the holy one blessed be he did in this world. He cast all the nations to every side and appointed overseers over them as is written, which Hashem your Elohim has allotted to all the nations to Barim 419 and he meaning. The Holy One blessed be he took as his portion the congregation of Israel. This is written for Hashem's portion is his people Jacob is a lot of his inheritance to Barim 329 and he called it Madob my undefiled is but one she is the only one of her mother. This is the Shechina of his glory which he caused to dwell among them. She is the only one and is selected for him. The daughter sought her and called her happy as is written many daughters have done virtuously but you excel them all. Mishle 3129 and the queens and the concubines praised her. Sure Hasirim 69 these were the princes of the nations that were appointed over them. 249 and another secret we have learned is that the world was created by ten sayings but when you observe it closely there are really three through which the world was created. Namely Chakmatabuna and that and the world was created only for Israel when the Holy One blessed be he wanted to preserve the world he did for Abraham with the secret. Of Chakma for Isaac with the secret of Tibuna and for Jacob with the secret of Dad it is written and by knowledge are the chambers filled. Mishle 244 This is the secret of Chesed Buritai for at which are Abraham, Isaac and Jacob they rose to become Chakma and Dad at that moment the entire world was perfected and when the twelve tribes were born to Jacob which are the secret of the twelve diagonal borders everything was perfected in this world as above in Atzala 250 when the Holy One blessed be he saw the great joy of this world when it was perfected as above he said heaven forbid that the twelve tribes become mixed among the other nations and there will remain a blemish in all the worlds what did the Holy One blessed be he do he caused them to move from here to there until they descended to Egypt to settle in their homes among a stiff-necked people who ridiculed their customs were too scornful to intermarry with them and to mingle with them and considered them. Slaves, the men scorned them and the women scorned them until they became perfected completely into a holy seed without any mixture of the foreign people. In the meantime, the sin of the nations was completed as is written for the iniquity of the Amor is not yet full. Beersheet 1516 When they left, they left holy and righteous as is written. The tribes of Yah is a testimony for Israel. Tehillim 1224 Rabbi Shimon came and kissed him on his head and said to him, Stand in your position, my son, meaning, at your level, for the moment is at your command. Section 30 He did neither eat bread nor drink water. After two days of continual discussion without food or water, Rabbi Shimon quotes the title verse to Rabbi Lazar. He observes that since they were caught up in divine contemplation for just two days, forgetting to eat or drink, it is understandable that when Moses was there with Hashem forty days and forty nights, he did neither eat bread nor drink water upon. Hearing this Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel compares Rabbi Shimon to a fearful lion different to other lions he explains that Rabbi Shimon is so close to God that he does not order a fast for what he prays for he simply decrees and God fulfills moreover he may even know God's decrees for as God rules over man the righteous man rules over God the relevance of this passage this profoundly mystical section helps us to grasp one of the most extraordinary of all Kabbalistic concepts that the holy righteous man the purified man is in effect his own God and can be said to rule over God this was the original idea of royalty that the royal man was he who had completed himself was thus one with God a reading of the section will inspire in us the urge to arrange a time when we can retreat to a spiritually conducive place to spend a few days fasting and in contemplation solely of our heavenly father such a retreat will further help us to appreciate the self-control and sheer willpower of it. Zohar's rabbis and gain some idea of what it takes to wring such insights and wisdom from scripture in the process we will also learn the importance of mastering our own desires if we are to advance in knowledge of the truth 251 Rabbi Shimon said while his son Rabbi Lazar stood and explained the secrets of the words of wisdom and his face shone like the sun and the word spread and flew in the sky they sat two days and neither ate nor drank and they did not know if it was day or night when they went out they realized that already two days had passed and they had eaten nothing Rabbi Shimon exclaimed and he was there with Hashem forty days and forty nights he did neither eat bread nor drink water Shema 3428 if for us who merited to cleave to Hashem for a while it was so that and we spent two days in the light of Hashem and did not know where we were with Moses about whom the Torah bears witness and he was there with Hashem forty days it is much more so 252 when Rabbi Shia came before Rabbi and told him the story Rabbi was amazed his father Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel said to him my son Rabbi Shimon ben Yakei is a lion and his son Rabbi Lazar is a lion and Rabbi Shimon is not like the other lions about him is written a lion has roared who will not fear Amos 38 now that the higher worlds tremble before him we certainly do he is man who never decreed a fast for what he asked or prayed for he would just decree and the Holy One blessed be he would fulfill it. Holy One blessed be he decrees and he annuls this is what we learned of the meaning of the passage he that rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of Elohim Shmuel 2 233 the Holy One blessed be he rules over men and who rules over the Holy One blessed be he but the righteous man for he decrees and the righteous man annuls it section 31 12 mountains of balsam trees the section begins with reference to Rabbi Yehuda's comment that although God delights in the prayers of the righteous he does not always grant their requests there follows an account illustrating this idea once during a drought Rabbi Elizar prayed and decreed forty fasts to no avail yet after Rabbi Akiva prayed the wind and rain came immediately seeing Rabbi Elizar's chagrin Rabbi Akiva stood before the congregation and told them a parable in it he compared Rabbi Elizar to a friend of a king who loved him so dearly that he delayed granting his friend's request in order to prolong his visit in contrast the king instantly granted the request of his servant in order to dispense with him quickly Rabbi Elizar then tells Rabbi Akiva his dream in which he saw the verse therefore pray you not for this people and reveals that he was crestfallen because although he knew another could pray for them the congregation thought he was of a lower degree than Rabbi Akiva Rabbi Elizar then describes the dream in which he saw twelve mountains of balsam trees the one who wears a breastplate and ephod entered and prayed to God to have mercy on the world. He explains that there are eighteen mountains of balsam. The righteous souls enter there, and from there forty-nine aromas ascend daily to Eden. These correspond to the forty-nine pure aspects and the forty-nine impure aspects of the Torah. The forty-nine letters of the names of the twelve tribes and the forty-nine day interval between the Exodus and the handing of the Torah to Israel. The one who wears the breastplate sits on a holy throne, supported by the four pillars. The patriarchs who receive from the twelve stones that illuminate in the breastplate they raise their eyes and see the sparks that glitter on six hundred and twenty sides of the crown on which the holy name is engraved. Then the pillars tremble and the heavens become revealed like a book. Yeshayah three hundred and forty-four. The relevance of this passage, the section like the earlier one, is designed to evoke our deepest wonder at the splendor of these rabbinical visions of creation structures with all their complexity and. Precision yet we also learn here of the deep humility required of those who would gain access to the hidden worlds it helps us cultivate this most vital of qualities by reminding us that no matter how high we progress in our studies we shall never reach the heights of a rabbi Akiva and yet he was the humblest and gentlest of men, a far more worthy role model than the greatest world leader or most brilliant artist there has ever been 253 we learned that Rabbi Yehuda said there is nothing that is so cherished by the Holy One blessed be he as the prayers of the righteous even though it pleases him sometimes he grants their request and sometimes he does not 254 the sages have taught that one time the world needed rain Rabbi Elizar came and decreed 40 fasts but rain did not come he prayed but rain
Eliza regained his composure. 256 Rabbi Eliza said to him, Keep come and I will tell you something in a dream. There appeared to me the passage, therefore pray you not for this people. Lift up neither cry nor prayer for them nor make intercession to me. Yermaya 716 Behold, due to the sins of the generation, the prayer on their behalf is not accepted. And still it says, Therefore pray you not for this people. This implies that others may pray on their behalf. Therefore I was not answered, but you were answered. And more than this, there are certain things on whose behalf no righteous man in the world can pray. Come and behold, twelve mountains of balsam trees. The one who raises female waters, the one who wears the breastplate, and Ephod enters and prays to the Holy One. Blessed be he by raising female waters to bind to have mercy on the world. Until now his prayer is still suspended. That is, it has not been accepted. For these are things for which prayers are not accepted. And he asks if so. Why was Rabbi Eliezer crestfallen since he saw in his dream? Therefore pray you not from which it is understood that another may pray. And he answers that it was because of the people who did not know this. They thought that he was on a lower degree than Rabbi Kiva. 257 Rabbi Eliezer said there are 18 mountains of supernal balsam trees. The souls of the righteous enter by raising female waters and 49 fragrances which is the secret of the 50 gates of Bindalus. One ascend daily from Bindal to that place called Eden which is Chakma. Corresponding to this the Torah was given in 49 impure aspects and in 49 pure aspects for because of the lack of the 50th gate there evolved 49 impure aspects in accordance with the secret of the verse. The Elohim has made the one as well as the other. Kahilat 714 the 49 letters in the names of the tribes and likewise the 49 days of the sphere of the Omer in order to receive the Torah for they contain 49 supernal days of the male and Female are going to receive permission meaning to become perfected daily from these 49 days the illuminating stones that are filled in the engraving of that breastplate 258 and he who wears the breastplate being Zeir Anfin in the Mokin of Greatness sits on the precious holy throne meaning that it illuminates within Malchut that is called throne the four pillars of this throne who are Michael Gabriel Uriel and Raphael stand and observe the breastplate meaning that they receive from the 12 stones that are illuminating in IT by the word of the wearer of the breastplate do they come and according to his word do they leave they raise their eyes and look up and see the sparks that glitter in 620 sides which alludes to Keter whose numerical value is 620 because it is bound upon the forehead and skull which is the secret of Keter and the holy name is engraved on it and the aforementioned pillars tremble and shake bound on the right side which is Zeir Anfin while the left which his Malchut takes into its hands the pillars of heaven, which is the secret of the three columns in Zeir Anfin, which is called heaven. It clears them and reveals them. This is what is written, and the heavens become revealed like a book. Yeshayah 344, section 32. I went down into the garden of nuts. Rabbi Eliezer begins by explaining and expounding upon the meaning of the title verse. Rabbi Kiva, the garden we learn is the garden that comes out of Eden, and it signifies the Shechinah, the nut, which has four sections, signifies the holy chariot, and the phrase I went down signifies a penetration to the inner meaning and answer to Rabbi Shia's question regarding the symbolic significance of the dirt of the nuts. Shell Rabbi Eliezer reveals its meaning through its connection with the almonds, although the two types of almond bitter and sweet imply an allusion to severe judgment and holiness. Every open allusion to almonds in the Torah describes only. Their aspect of judgment he then draws a comparison between the Hebrew words for almonds washed and hasten which reinforces their aspect of judgment the relevance of this passage a reading of this section opens us to the idea that we can learn much about God through nature around us and through the language of the Torah and therefore helps us to seek enlightenment through our physical world 259 Rabbi Akiva said to him what is the meaning of the passage I went down into the garden of nuts Sher Hashem 611 he said to him come and behold this garden comes out of Eden and this is the Shechen Anat is the holy supernal chariot which is the four headwaters of the rivers that separates from the garden which is the secret of the four faces namely the face of a lion the face of an ox the face of an eagle the face of a man this nut has four holy heads inside meaning in its fruit and it also has four clip peels that cover the fruit which alludes to the four clip storm Wind a great cloud a fire flaring up and a brightness like the supernal chariot and when he said I went down in I went down into the garden of nuts it is as we learned that so and so descended to the chariot 260 Rabbi Akiva said to him if so he should have said I went down into the nut which is the chariot why does it say I went down into the garden of nuts he said to him because the garden which is Malchut has all that is goodly in the nuts for they grow in and emerge from this garden which is Malchut therefore he mentions the garden specifically and he continues to explain his words as to why the chariot was alluded to in the nut just as the nut is hidden and concealed from all sides in its peel so the chariot that emerges from the garden which is Malchut is concealed from all sides all these four heads in the nut are attached to each other on the side meaning in their center and separate on the side outwardly thus the four aspects of the chariot attain each other in unity enjoy in completeness and they separate each one to its individual aspect for which it was appointed this is what is written that it is which compasses the whole land of Chabal of Bershi 211 likewise that is it which goes toward the east of Ashur 14 it is the same with the rest of them 261 Rabbi Akiva said the stirred in the peel of the nut meaning in the four clip that's around it to what do they allude he said to him even though the Torah did not reveal it because the Torah speaks only in the aspect of good in the nut it did reveal in this meaning in the almonds as will be explained will that the Torah speaks about the four clip of the almond in particular alluding to judgment and not the aspect of their good 262 come and behold some almonds are bitter because of their peels and some are sweet implying that some are of severe judgment to which the bitter almonds allude and some serve holiness to which the sweet almonds allude but we see that Every open allusion to them in the Torah is about judgment and does not discuss the good in them, the sweet ones and so it is in Jeremiah who was shown the judgment that is in them as is written I see a rod of an almond tree have shaked Jeremiah 111 what is the meaning of shaked actual almonds, and it was said to him for I will hasten have shook my word to perform it meaning to uproot crush destroy and demolish it is written by the rod of Aaron and yielded almonds be midbar 1723 and it became a sign to the rebellious people so we see that the Torah speaks only of their aspect of judgment and from the word itself that they are called almonds have shaken it is understood that it refers to severe judgment as is written and Hashem washed have over the evil Daniel 914 and I will hasten my word and so all of them so it is clear that the word shake refers to severe judgment Rabbi Akiva said to him it seems that one could gain much wisdom from everything the Holy One. Blessed be he does as is written whatever Hashem has done is for his own purpose. Mishlei 164 Rabbi Lazar says we learn it from these words and Elohim saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good. Bear sheet 131 that is the meaning of very. It is good to learn supernal wisdom from its section 33 the one as well as the other. The discussion here begins with an interpretation of the title verse revealing that the earthly realm corresponds. Symbolically in all its aspects to the heavenly realm Rabbi Abba's comment regarding human ignorance of lost wisdom pertaining to the natural world leads to a discourse on the classification of trees and herbs and their relationships to divine elements we learn that it is forbidden to sow your field with mingled seed because each seed has an individual name a separate secret and an appointed supervisor above planting mixed seeds mingles their authority and their names this concept also applies to the twelve tribes and explains the scriptural emphasis on the names of these tribes as seen in the verse these are the names of the children of Israel the relevance of this passage a reading of this section reminds us of the profound significance of names and opens us up to a greater understanding of the divine wisdom made manifest in the physical world around us the theme of seeds being explored also provides us with a great image for meditation the seed dwelt on for long enough it image of a seed will reveal layer upon layer of meaning relating to spiritual growth from the hard skin or husk needed to protect it in the early stages to the final plant or tree which had lain concealed but fully formed within the tiny seed 263 Rabbi Yehuda said what is the meaning of that which is written the Elohim has made the one as well as the other Kahilat 714 IT instructs us that similar to those things that are in heaven the holy one blessed be he made
and hot, gain nourishment from one source, they gain nourishment from the exterior part in the secret of another L that does not produce fruit and every one of the small trees except for the hyssop which alludes to Yezid were born of one mother meaning the Mugba 266 all the herbs of the earth have powerful ministers appointed over them in heaven for there is no plant on earth that does not have a star and constellation in the sky that prods it and says grow each and every one of them has a separate secret similar to above just as they have individual appointed supervisors above them therefore it is written you shall not sow your field with mingled seed Vayikra 1919 because each one enters alone and emerges alone for no appointee mingles with another and one who plants mingled seeds mingles their authority one with another this is the meaning do you know the ordinances of the heavens can you establish his dominion in the earth Theo 3833 and he calls them all by names Yeshayah 4026 everything in the world has its own secret and the Holy One blessed be he did not want to reveal it from its place and mix it with another and thus called each and every one by name the sons of Jacob who are holy tribes who maintain the world all the more so as it is written these are the names of the children of Israel. Shema 11 section 34 the children of Israel. the children of Jacob this discussion provides greater insight into the verse these are the names of the children of Israel. Rabbi Yossi first reinforces this verse as an indication of the importance of the twelve tribes who sustain the world his comment on the title names reveals a lack of distinction between the terms this relates closely to the death and descent of Joseph and his brothers and is the subject of the discourse that ensues we learn that the Sheshanah and the supernal angels went with Jacob and his sons into Egypt while he was alive and after the death of Joseph and the tribes Israel descended into exile and the Shechinah with the twelve tribes inscribed in her and the supernal angels descended with them consequently Israel became known as the children of Jacob since they descended to the level of the children of Jacob the relevance of this passage a reading of this section provides insight into the connection between the names the children of Israel and the children of Jacob providing greater depth to our understanding of what the Torah is really teaching the more one studies scripture in this light the more one sees that it concerns now not then and that its histories and stories are merely a casing for the message that is timeless and universal speaking to all men and women in search of God and truth 267 Rabbi Yossi Ben of Rabbi Yehuda said if it had said these are the names it would infer that this is so as Rabbi Yehuda said that and these are the names of the children of Israel refers to the importance of it tribes who sustain the world but now that it is written and these are the names with an added vav and it infers that it is adding on to the first ones just as the first ones were the children of Jacob so these are also the children of Jacob 268 Rabbi Yehuda said to Rabbi Yosi ben Rabbi Yehuda heaven forbid that when the Holy One blessed be he said I will descend with you to Egypt that it should occur to you that the Sheshanah descended with him precisely in that moment this was because Rabbi Yehuda thought the implication of Rabbi Yosi ben Rabbi Yehuda was that they were in the level of the children of Jacob meaning descending immediately upon their arrival in Egypt but rather the Sheshanah descended at the time his children experienced descent this is what is written I will go down with you into Egypt and I will also surely bring you up again Bereshit 464 meaning that as long as you will ascend and I will also ascend and when you descend I will descend with you after Joseph and all his brothers died and they descended the Shechina also descended with them and as they descended meaning the children of Israel so did these descend meaning the Shechina and her hosts 269 Rabbi Yossi ben Rabbi Yehuda said to him it is written above and Joseph died being 110 years old Bereshit 5026 at the time that Joseph and all the tribes died and descended the children of Israel descended into exile and the Shechina and the supernal angels descended with them meaning as Rabbi Yehuda said this is what is written and these are the names of the children of Israel the Baba B-E-L-E-H and these is added to the first ones that descended into exile after the death of Joseph and his brothers therefore they must be the children of Jacob namely in descent 270 Rabbi Yehuda said to him if so was Jacob dead or not he said to him he was dead so he said to him it is written who came to Egypt with Jacob Shema 11 if he was alive it is possible to say with Jacob but if the Torah is speaking of after his death removed with Jacob since he had already died since the Bab and adds to the first ones but come and behold the verse does not say who came let come into Egypt with Jacob but it is written who came for until then there was no descent for Jacob and we learned that the Shechina and the twelve tribes that are in it came with Jacob to Egypt and went from there until the descent into exile meaning after the death of Jacob and it tribes and then those descended with them meaning the Shechina and the twelve tribes in her therefore the passage and these are the names of the children of Israel refers to their great level and importance since it refers to the days of ascent and not the days of descent 271 Rabbi Dust I said every day they would come the Shechina and the twelve tribes that were in her and leave this is what is written who come into Egypt in the present tense and not who came in the past tense this means that in the beginning it is written who come into Egypt with Jacob before the descent and when they descended it is written every man came with his household in past tense come and behold the children of Jacob had already died by that time and the others descended into exile 272 Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Lazar said this portion contains lofty subjects for we learned that at the time these holy companies and chariots descended which are the form of the twelve tribes which are engraved above in the Shechinah they all came to sojourn with them this is the meaning of every man came with his household Shemot 11 which alludes to the angels who came to sojourn in Egypt with the children of Israel and Reuben Shimon Levi but two they allude to the forms of the twelve tribes in the Shechinah 273 another explanation of and these are the names of the children of Israel who came into Egypt with Jacob he had difficulty understanding why it opened with the children of Israel and concluded with Jacob and says this portion reverted from the children of Israel to Jacob is according to what Rabbi Yossi ben Rabbi Yehuda said earlier that the children of Israel descended to the level of the children of Jacob and it all occurred meaning that all the literal explanations are true section 35 every man came with his household the discussion of the title verse elaborates on the concept mentioned in the previous section that the tribes descended into Egypt twice once when alive and once when dead according to Rabbi Lazar when the children of Israel went into exile all the souls of the tribes gathered at the cave of Machpelah they cried to Jacob lamenting that a heathen nation had enslaved Israel this awakened the spirit of Jacob and after gaining permission from God Jacob the tribes the Shechinah and the supernal angels descended into Egypt thus even in death Jacob did not separate from Israel the relevance of this passage a reading of this section awakens the energy of Jacob within us allowing us to climb higher in our actions and meditations moving rung by rung further from materialism and closer to our heavenly goal it also makes us more conscious of the need to leave material desires behind us before we die for otherwise we will carry them on our backs into the next world as excess baggage anchoring us to the world of matter 274 come and behold when Rabbi Lazar ben Arach reached this passage and these are the names he would weep Rabbi Lazar ben Arach said we learned that when the children of Israel went into exile all the souls of the tribes gathered at the cave of Machpelah they cried and said grandfather grandfather there is no greater labor in pain of the children there is no greater labor in this world that it your children are all enslaved with hard labor by others who execute upon them all manners of vengeance in the world 275 at that moment the spirit of that Grandfather was stirred meaning Jacob requested permission and descended into Egypt the Holy One blessed be he summoned his companies and chariots and their king which is the Shechinah at their head and they all descended with Jacob and his tribes the tribes descended alive with their father to Egypt they also descended dead with their father to Egypt this is what is written and these are the names of the children of Egypt who came into Egypt Reuben Shimon Levi Shemot 11 to 2 come and behold now they are dead as mentioned earlier yet they descended to Egypt and it was written and Joseph was in Egypt but 5 for his spirit did not leave Egypt after his death that he should have to return and descend as the other tribes did Rabbi Abba said after this he Joseph is called as a father pities his children Tehillim 10313 because he did not leave them even after his death section 36 the dead know of the pain of the living the section consists chiefly of a parable in which Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Abba participate while traveling the two come across a place where they decide to spend the night they lay down
made to Jacob that he would go down into exile with Jacob and that he would raise Jacob from his grave to witness the joy of the celestial company that dwelled with Israel in captivity. Finally, Rabbi Shimon interprets the verse, a new king arose, revealing that Egypt was not granted dominion over all the nations until after Joseph's death. The relevance of this passage, a reading of this section, reveals that the connection between the living and the dead is reciprocal as we mourn for Enpei. Respect to the dead, the prayers of the dead protect us and help us through the pain and suffering we endure in this world. This continuity of consciousness is vital to remember since it frees us from the delusion that death is an end, thus making our actions all the more poignant and significant since we know they will continue to affect us and those we are tied to in the next world as well as all the worlds thereafter. 276 Rabbi Yehuda Bar Shalom was traveling with Rabbi Abba the end day. Place and lodged there they ate and when they wanted to lie down they lay their heads on a mound of earth where there was a grave before they fell asleep someone called from the grave and said my seat is going into the ground meaning going to waste it has been twelve years that I have not awakened except now for I see the face of my son here 277 Rabbi Yehuda said who are you he said to him I am a Jew and I sit alone as in excommunication for I cannot enter the garden of Eden because of the pain of my son who was stolen when he was still small by a heathen who beats him every day his pain prevents me from entering my place and I awoke just now in this place 278 he said to him do you know the pain of the living he said to him I swear by the minister of my grave that were it not for our prayers for the living they would not survive in the world for even a half day I awoke here for they were telling me every day that my son would come here soon but I do not know if alive or after his death 279 Rabbi Yehuda said to him what do you do in that world the grave rumbled and he said go arise for now they are beating my son they were amazed and fled from there about a half a mile they sat until morning like they rose to go and saw a man who was running and fleeing from his master as he was saved from him by the prayers of his dead father and he was bleeding from his shoulders they held him and he told them the story of the heathen who kidnapped him when he was a child and who beat him until he started to bleed they said to him what is your name he said to them Lashmabar Libby they said was not Libby Bar Lashmabar the name of that deceased we are afraid to talk with him anymore they did not return to him Rabbi Abba said this is what they said that the prayers of the dead protect the living how do we know ITIS because it is written and they went up to the Negev and he came to Cherubs Bimid Bar 1322 meaning to pray at the grave of the patriarchs that they would pray for them 280 Rabbi Yehuda said come and behold the Holy One blessed be he made two vows to Jacob he would descend with him and sojourn with him in exile and he would raise him from his grave to see the joy of the holy camp of the chariots and the angels who sojourned with his children in exile during the redemption this is the meaning of I will go down with you into Egypt bear she 464 meaning I will descend with you into exile and I will surely bring you up again meaning during the redemption because bring you up I as an expression of redemption as is written and I will bring you up from your graves my people Yashikal 3712 and there the tribes used to go up Tehillim 1224 281 another explanation of now there arose a new king Shema 18 Rabbi Shimon said on that day permission was granted to the minister of Egypt to be superior over all the other nations for we learned that before Joseph died Egypt was not granted dominion over Israel but when Joseph died now there arose a new king arose means as one who was lowly and arose for on that day the minister of Egypt arose to be great as mentioned earlier section 37 while the king was reclining at his board Rabbi Itzhak opens with the first of three interpretations of the title verse Rabbi Tanshim concludes the section by explaining that every nation has a minister above and the rise of one minister coincides with the fall of another thus when God gave dominion to the minister of Egypt he gained dominion only because of Israel the relevance of this passage a reading of this section provides an illustration of the universe's interconnectedness that we can use to bring our own lives into harmony by making sure all our actions will breed good and holy results since nothing occurs without an effect occurring as a consequence nothing rises without the falling of something else nothing is installed without something being replaced nothing can be Added without something being removed, this image should be used in a meditation on the utter perfection of the universe of God's creation. 282 Rabbi Itzhak opened the discussion saying, While the king was reclining at his board, my heart sent forth its fragrance. Sure, Hashem 112, while the king refers to the Holy One, blessed be he as is written, thus says Hashem the king of Israel, Yeshayah 446, and, and he was king in Yeshurun, Devarim 335, while the king was reclining at his board, means, Between the wings of cherubs that were on the ark of the testimony, my heart gave forth its fragrance, means they caused the Holy One, blessed be he to depart from among them, and gives forth its fragrance, means their bad odor. 283, another explanation of, While the king was reclining at his board, meaning, While the Holy One, blessed be he was still giving the Torah to Israel as it is written, and he was there with Hashem 40 days and 40 nights, Shema 3428, while he was still writing. The Torah for Yisrael they abandoned their good fragrance and said these are your Elohim Yisrael Shema 324 the meaning of sent forth is abandoned 284 another explanation of while the king was reclining at his board while the Holy One blessed be he was still descended on Mount Sinai to give the Torah to the children of Yisrael my heart sent forth its fragrance meaning literally that it gave its good fragrance it is written that they said will we do and obey Shema 247 section 38 Yisrael corresponds to all the other nations of the world continuing the discussion of the previous section Rabbi Yitzhak explains that the single nation of Yisrael is equivalent to all of the 70 other nations and therefore whoever rules over Yisrael dominates the whole world because of this powerful status the children of Yisrael are subjected to the rule of other nations in order that the world may be elevated through them Rabbi Yitzhak also explains the great Symbolic significance of the numbers 1 and 70 in this context 70 is the number of nations the number of Israel who came into Egypt and the number of names for God while God is one and Israel is one on a PAR with the rest of the world the relevance of this passage a reading of this section invokes the resonance of the numbers 1 and 70 which in the symbolism of geometry are of immense if not unequal importance by concentrating on the form and meaning of these numbers we can draw their energy like great chords of music into our hearts helping them attune to the holy radiance of the light of 1 285 Rabbi Tanshim said every nation has a minister above and when the holy one blessed be he gives dominion to one he humbles another when he gave dominion to that minister of Egypt he had that dominion only because of Israel this is the meaning of her adversaries have become the chief each 15 286 Rabbi Yitzhak said Israel corresponds to all the other Nations of the world as all the other nations are seventy Israel is also seventy it is written all the souls of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were seventy Beersheh 4627 and it is as if he rules over the children of Israel rules over the whole world 287 Rabbi Abba said from here it is understood that Israel is seventy as is written and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and became exceedingly mighty Shemot 17 we have here seven levels and every level includes ten thus there are seventy what is written after this now there arose a new king over Egypt to by reason of his dominion over Israel that corresponds to the seventy nations he was considered as a new king 288 Rabbi Huna said why were Israel enslaved among all the nations it was in order that the world should be elevated through them for they correspond to the whole world and it is written on that day Hashem shall be one and his name one Zechariah. 149 as the Holy One, blessed be he is one, so is Israel one, as is written one nation in the earth, two small 723 as the name of the Holy One, blessed be he is one, and is explained in 70 names, Israel is also one, and interpreted by 70, section 39, for a slave when he becomes king, Rabbi Yehuda begins the discussion by interpreting the title verse, explaining that it refers to Egypt, whom God despises more than any other nation, and Ishmael who torments and persecutes Israel for their faith, following this we learn of an incident involving Rabbi Yahashua who saw a meeting between a Jew and an Arab with his son, the Arab told his son to insult the Jew and spit in his face, however when the boy grabbed the Jew's beard, Rabbi Yahashua prayed to the patriarchs and the earth opened up and swallowed the Arabs, the relevance of this passage, a reading of this section reminds us that while divisions and prejudices may be deeply ingrained in
Walking with his son Imadaju the Arab said to his son this is a loathsome Jew who is despised by his master soil him and spit into his beard seven times for he is of the seed of high ones, meaning from Abraham, Isaac and Jacob yet I know that seventy nations are subjugating them his son went and grasped the beard of the Jew Rabbi Yahashua said lofty one lofty ones meaning that he prayed in the merit of the patriarchs I decree on the high ones meaning on the Arab and his son who Considered themselves higher than the Israel that they should descend down under before Rabbi Yahashua finished his words they were swallowed up in the ground where they stood section 40 before the day cools Rabbi Yitzhak opens with an explanation of the title verse we learn that the subjugation of Israel will end after 1000 years whereupon God will appear in the terrestrial Jerusalem to purify it at this time he will drive the heathen nations from the holy city and shake the wicked out of the earth if the exile lasts longer than 1000 years we're told it is because Israel will not return in repentance to God the relevance of this passage a reading of this section reveals that we are instrumental in bringing God's decrees to fruition since our spiritual enlightenment is a necessary condition for the manifestation of God's terrestrial rewards it will help us learn that we are not responsible for other people but we are responsible to them 291 Rabbi Yitzhak opened the discussion saying before the day cools and the shadows flee away Sher Hashem 46 before the day cools refers to the exile of Israel and that they would be subjugated in exile until that day when the rule of the nations who end for we have learned that Rabbi Yitzhak said that the dominion of all nations together over the children of Israel would last 1000 years there is no nation that would not subjugate them the one day corresponds to it. Words and it shall be one particular day which shall be known as Hashem Sekhariah 147 292 another explanation before the day cools meaning before that day the nations will cool and the shadows flee away are the governments that dominate them I will get me to the mountain of Mer Sher Hashem 46 said the Holy One blessed be he I will betake myself to shake the nations from Jerusalem which is the mountain of Mer as is written of the mountain of Moriah that is in Jerusalem and to the hill of frankincense is the temple that is in Zion about which is written fair in situation the joy of the whole earth Mount Zion Tehillim 483 and this is also to shake out from there all the wicked people as is written to grasp the corners of the earth and to shake all the wicked people from it Eo 3813 as one holds a garment to shake all the filth from it 293 Rabbi Yossi said the Holy One blessed be he will eventually be revealed in terrestrial Jerusalem and purify it from it. Filth of the nations before that day of the nations is complete for Rabbi Shia said the dominion of the nations over Israel last only one day and that is the day of the Holy One blessed be he which is 1000 years long this is what is written he has made me desolate and faint all the day each 113 meaning one day only and no more 294 Rabbi Yossi said if they are subjugated more than 1000 years it is not because of the decree of the king but rather because they do not wish to return in repentance before him and it is written and it shall be when all these things come upon you then you will return to Hashem your Elohim Devarim 301 to 2 and if your outcasts be at the utmost part of heaven from there will Hashem gather you before section 41 and he said to his people Rabbi Shimon begins the discussion by explaining that the title verse refers to the supernal minister over Egypt who revealed to the Egyptians that the minister over Israel was stronger than theirs Rabbi Shimon then clarifies the distinction between king of Egypt which refers to the supernal minister over Egypt and Pharaoh the king of Egypt which refers to the actual Pharaoh similarly we learn from Rabbi Yitzhak that in the title verse the people of the children of Israel refers to the children of the supernal Israel above while the other nations are called the people of their appointed rulers Israel are called the people of Hashem because they are the only nation directly under God Rabbi Yoshan and then asks about Balak's reference to Israel in the verse Behold there is a people come out from Egypt Rabbi Yitzhak explains that sorcerers prefer to avoid all ambiguity and therefore when referring to someone they mention only the mother's name because only maternal descent is certain moreover the demons also adhere to the strict code Rabbi Abba however interprets Balak's reference as one of contempt that implies that the origin of Israel is unknown the discussion then turns to expound upon the concept that God punishes his own children first so that they will guard against sin more than the other nations Rabbi Yossi provides a personal incident to illustrate this idea and concludes that God punishes students of the Torah so that they will not separate themselves from the tree of life the Torah for even a moment finally we learn from an episode involving Rabbi Yitzhak that an earthquake is a physical sign of it. Appointment of a minister in heaven who will cause suffering to Israel this is in accordance with the verse for three things the earth is disquieted the relevance of this passage the section deepens our understanding of the profound interconnectedness of everything in creation and will make more attuned to the language of the planet itself just as it further opens the language of the Zohar enabling us to see that all selfish seeking is really a form of sorcery or the attempt to coerce what may not belong to us from those too weak to prevent us taking it there cannot be imbalance in the universe thus we must become aware of what it is we truly own 295 and he said to his people behold the people of the children of Israel Shemot 19 Rabbi Shimon said come and behold in all instances a ruling angel was appointed over Egypt and said to his people behold the children of Israel and so it is in the majority of the portion that says plainly king of Egypt means it Minister who is appointed over Egyp however when it is written Pharaoh the king of Egypt ITIS actually Pharaoh and not the angel who is appointed over them 296 Rabbi Shimon said therefore it is written and he said to his people Shemot 19 meaning I will introduce this into their hearts that they should think so as the Torah says because Hashem said to him curse David to Shmuel 1610 meaning the thought of his heart alone that Hashem introduced into his heart also and Haman said in his heart Esther 66 and so and he said in his heart shall a child be born to him that is a hundred years old Bereshit 1717 the meaning of he said is also to introduce a thought into their hearts that they should say in their hearts more and mightier than we Shemot 19 why does it say then we it means that the angel who is appointed over them because they thought in their hearts that Elohim and their power that is of Israel is greater and stronger than us than the appointed angel who rules over Egypt 297 Rabbi Yitzhak said all the nations of the world draw strength from the ministers who are appointed in heaven over them and the children of Israel draw their powers from the Holy One blessed be he and they are called the people of Hashem and not the people of a ruler who was appointed Rabbi Yehuda said here the Egyptians are called the people of the appointed as is written and he said to his people Shemot 19 and there it is written I have surely seen it affliction of my people Shemot 37 meaning actually my people the children of Israel are called the people of Hashem and the other nations are called the people of their appointed rulers as it is written for let all people walk everyone in the name of his Elohim and we will walk in the name of Hashem our Elohim forever and ever Mishnah 45 298 Rabbi Abba said this passage should have read the children of Israel are more and mightier than we why does it say the people of it Children and he answers it means the actual people of the children of Israel that is the people of the children of Israel of below which is the corporeal Israel who is drawn from that Israel of above which is Zeir and since the people are not connected to the supernal Israel they added the word people because they thought that they were the people of the children of Israel of below and not the people of Hashem which is Zeir and it is written and they were mortified on account of the children of Israel Shemot 112 instead of on account of the people of the children of Israel which is Israel of below for eventually they recognized that they were the supernal children of Israel of above meaning the people of Hashem 299 Rabbi Yoshanan was before Rabbi Yitzhak he said why did Balak choose to say behold there is a people come out from Egypt Imidbar 225 and did not say behold the people of the children of Israel Rabbi Yitzhak said to him Balak was a great Sorcerer and it is a way of sorcerers to select a matter that is completely certain similarly they never mention the father's name of a person but rather his mother's name which is certain therefore Bilam did not mention the children of Israel which is the name of the father 300 this is the way of the demons they examine the matter that is said to them by the sorcerers if it is false they notify them with false words and if it is true whatever they tell them is true at least pray. Sure time especially if the sorcerers desire an action of them they are particularly cautious to say the truth that is beyond suspicion therefore they do not
None of all the families of the earth Amos 32 302 Rabbi Yossi went on the road and Rabbi Yossi Bar Yaakov went with him while they were traveling Rabbi Yossi kept quiet from words of the Torah and reflected on worldly things but Rabbi Yossi continued to meditate on the words of the Torah Rabbi Yossi saw a snake that was running after him Rabbi Yossi said to Rabbi Yossi do you see the snake that is chasing me Rabbi Yossi said to him I do not see it Rabbi Yossi ran with the snake after him Rabbi Yossi fell and the blood flowed from his nose he heard them saying you only have I known of all the families of the earth due to this he was saved from the snake Rabbi Yossi said if for just one moment I ceased from the words of Torah and turned to worldly things and this happened to me it is much worse for one who has suspended his mind entirely from words of Torah 303 he opened the discussion saying for Hashem your Elohim has blessed you in all the work of your hand he knows your Walking through Devarim 27 who led you venomous serpents and scorpions Devarim 815 he asks why were there venomous serpents here in the wilderness and he answers to punish the children of Israel any time they separate from the tree of life of which it is written for he is your life and the length of your days Devarim 3,2304 come and behold Rabbi she has said it is written he that spares his rod hates his son Mishlei 1,324 and I have loved you says Hashem Malachi 12 and also and I hated Esau but 3 what does hate refer to it is written he that spares his rod hates his son meaning I hate him therefore I spare his rod from him this is even more so with scholars he does not spare his rod from them for the holy one blessed be he does not want them to become separated from the tree of life even for one moment 305 and he said to his people Shemot 19 he gave them advice in order to do evil with them Rabbi Tanshim said the Egyptians knew by their knowledge of Astrology that they would eventually be smitten because of Israel therefore their minister did evil to them first 306 Rabbi Yitzhak came upon a mountain and saw a man sleeping under a tree Rabbi Yitzhak sat down there while he was sitting he noticed the earth moving and saw that tree break and fall he saw fissure holes in the earth and the earth was rising and falling 307 the man awoke and screamed towards Rabbi Yitzhak Juju cry and wail because now they are setting up in heaven a minister a supernal ruler who is destined to do great evil with your people these tremors in the earth are because of you for whenever the earth rumbles it is when a minister arises in the heaven who will do evil with you 308 Rabbi Yitzhak was astonished and said it is certainly written for three things the earth is disquieted for a slave when he becomes king Mishlei 3021 to 22 its meaning refers to a minister who was originally subjugated under a different ruler and now that he Rules and they give him dominion. The scripture says that the earthquakes and moreover when that appointed one rules over Israel, certainly the earthquakes and is disquieted. 309 Rabbi Shama Bar said, When the Holy One blessed be, he placed the children of Israel under the dominion of other nations. He sat and wailed and wept. This is what is written, My soul shall weep in secret. Yermea 1317 Rabbi Yossi said, In secret is precise that is in the world of Atzalot. Section 42 Behold, the mighty ones shall cry outside. Rabbi Laser tells Rabbi Yehuda that the title verse refers to God's ministers who weep in the outer chambers. When God who is in the inner chambers is sat and weeping, we learn that these are called angels of peace and are distinct from the various other types of angels. Rabbi Yehuda then asks why the ministers of the other nations oppress Israel, knowing that this causes God to suffer. Rabbi Laser's reply indicates that they carry. Out their duties in accordance with God's will. The relevance of this passage, the section drives further home the important teaching that all that was is or will be is the will of God. Thus, it is incorrect to think of anything happening that is not part of the divine plan. When we are tempted to think that something in the world has gone wrong, a reading of this section helps to elevate the mind to see beyond appearances to where all is one. 310 Rabbi Yehuda came to Rabbi Lazar and found him sitting with his hand in his mouth. He was sad. He asked him with what is sir occupied. He said to him that it is written in the light of the king's countenance, his life. Mishlei 1615. If the master is sad, and especially if he weeps and wails, what do his ministers do? It is written, Behold, the mighty ones shall cry outside. Yeshayah 337 outside, meaning that their master is within as is written, My soul weeps in secret, and they are outside. Their master is in the inner rooms which are in. Atzalot while they are in the outer rooms which are in Briah Yitzra and Asiyah he asks what are the inner rooms Rabbi Yitzhak said they are from the ten crowns of the king meaning of the ten Sfarot of Zeir and Pen in Atzalot 311 the ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly but he asks are there any angels who are not for peace he said to him yes come and behold there are angels who are of severe judgment who are drawn from the aspect of Bure there are those of judgment not severe who are drawn from Malchut and there are those who have judgment and compassion who are drawn from Tiferet and there are those of compassion that contain no judgment at all who are drawn from Bana and they are called the angels of peace pertaining to these angels of below which are external it is written I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Yeshayah 503 and and all the host of heaven shall rot away Yeshayah 344 312 he asks if this is so then why do all the ministers who are appointed over the other nations enslave his children with heavy labor when they see that their master is sad because of the subjugation of Israel. Rabbi Lazar said they only do that which is incumbent upon them and they are doing the desire of their master. Section 43 2 tears sink into the great abyss. Rabbi Dustai explains that when the children of Israel are delivered to the supernal ministers of the other nations, twelve courts convene. And the master weeps, then two tears sink into the great abyss, and both the higher and the lower celestial beings descend multiple levels. We also learned that when God delivered Israel into the power of the supernal minister of Egypt, he made seven decrees that Egypt should subjugate them and seven decrees bestowing benefits on Israel. The relevance of this passage, a reading of this section, teaches us to recognize the good fortune that can exist even in times of great suffering and indeed that. Out of great suffering great good must come to set the balance straight the passage is also ideal for a meditation on 2.12 and 7 providing images that assist in our inner understanding of the profound wisdom that is contained by number 313 Rabbi Dustai said as soon as the children of the Holy One blessed be here given over to the rulers of the nation's 12 courts will convene meaning Malchut has 12 permutations of Adonai which contains the letters of Dina judgment since the union of Yudhe Vav Hey Adonai was abolished in which the 12 permutations of Adonai received from the 12 permutations of Yudhe Vav Hey the 12 permutations of Adonai gathered and sank in the great abyss which is Bana the master which is Bana weeps by raising the voice called wailings two teardrops fell from the eye sockets which is Bana to the depths of the great sea which is Malchut this is the meaning of your judgments are a great deep tale in 367 those above rolled. Downward and the lower beings broke asunder and descended 240 levels. This is what is written. The lion has roared who will not fear. Amos 38, 314. We learned that at the time that the Holy One blessed be he gave the children of Israel to the minister of Egypt. He made seven decrees that Egypt should subjugate them. This is what is written. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in the mortar and in brick and all manner of bondage in the field. All their bondage were and they made. Them serve was with rigor. Shemot 114. He correspondingly made seven to the good. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. But seven section 44. Come let us deal wisely with them. The title verse we learn refers to the ministering angels that agreed in their judgment against the supernal children of Israel. Rabbi Yitzhak compares them to thorns and thistles. Continually stinging Israel so that they would not multiply and grow stronger. The relevance of this passage, the section contains a profound teaching regarding the necessity of clinging to God alone and not to his ministers or angels, for harm can come from any quarter, even angels. The moment we lower our sights from the highest of the high to rest on any lesser goal, 315, come let us deal wisely with them. Shema 110, Rabbi Yossi said, Come, Hephavah is an expression of preparation to do. Just as it said, Come, let us go down. Bereshit 117, give Hephavah perfect lot. Ishmuel 1441, Rabbi Yossi said, Hephavah is always an expression of agreement and invitation, as in, Come, let us build us a city. Beresh
Rabbi Shimon, son of Rabbi Yossi, then comments that the premonition of all these events is apparent in the Pharaoh's words, Come, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it shall come to pass when any war should chance. The relevance of this passage, the section further enhances our understanding of the Zohar's great symbol for materialism and selfish seeking, Egypt, where the power of gold force of arms and mighty buildings belies a shallow empty core where things are worshipped. Instead of God, this image will help to remind us when we fall prey to the idol worship of earthly fame and glory, for just as ancient Egypt is but yesterday in the eye of God, so are our whole lives as brief and transient as windblown clouds in the high blue air. 317 Rabbi Yudai said, said Rabbi Yitzhak, what was the thought of the Egyptians to prevent Israel from being fruitful and multiplying, and the thought of the minister who was appointed over them to bring this into their hearts? Because, and he said to his people, refers to their minister, and he answers, but he said to them, Know that one son will emerge from Israel, and judgment will be done by his hand against your Elohim. 318 For Rabbi Yochanan said, When Moses said, And against all the Elohim of Egypt, I will execute judgments. Shemot 1212 Doom of the minister of Egypt went 400 parasangs from great fear. The Holy One, blessed be, he said to him, A decree was decreed before me, and it cannot be rescinded for. It is written, Hashem shall punish the host of the high ones on high. Yeshayah 2421 At that moment, his authority was removed, and Duma was appointed to be the minister of Gehenom to judge the souls of the wicked there. And Rabbi Yehuda said he was appointed over the dead. 319 Rabbi Janina said, It is written upon their Elohim, Hashem inflicted punishments. Bar 334 And he asks, Are there judgments upon Elohim of silver or of gold or of wood or of stone? Rabbi Yossi said, Those of silver or gold melted of themselves and those of wood rotted. 320 Rabbi Lazar said, The deity of Egypt was a lamb, and the Holy One, blessed be, he commanded the execution of judgments upon it to burn it in fire, as is written, The carvings of their Elohim shall you burn with fire. Devarim 725 In order that its odor should spread and its head with its legs and its entrails in a disrespectful way, furthermore, its bones shall be thrown in the marketplace, and this was the hardest of all to Egypt. This is the meaning of judgments 321 Rabbi Yehuda said upon their very Elohim did he execute judgments and this is their minister to fulfill Hashem shall punish the hosts of the high ones on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth Yeshayah 2421 their sages and of course their minister knew all this therefore it is written come let us deal wisely 322 Rabbi Yochanan said there were many idols in Egypt and the Nile River was their deity and the Holy One blessed be he executed judgments on all of them Rabbi Abba said this opinion of Rabbi Yochanan is exact and clear since their deities were smitten first and the nation the Nile also was smitten first and the wood and stones that they worshipped this is what is written that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stones Shemot 719 that were for them their actual Elohim and Rabbi Yitzhak said to Rabbi Yochanan it is written the hosts of the high ones on high. Yet the Nile was not on high but rather on the earth Rabbi Yochanan said because of the vast amount of water of the Nile it appeared as though the river was on high Rabbi Yitzhak said their minister was smitten first and afterwards the rest of their Elohim 323 Rabbi Shimon the son of Rabbi Yossi said the actual smiting of the nation of Egypt was done only by the sea as is written there remained of them not even one Shemot 1428 before judgments were executed upon their Elohim and therefore it is written come let us deal wisely with them lest they multiply and it shall come to pass when any war should chance Shemot 110 they prophesied about the future according to what occurred to them they also joined our enemies if they prophesied about the supernal camps of angels that would dwell among them and fight against us they prophesied about the words Hashem shall fight for you Shemot 1414 and so go up out of the land as it said and the children of Israel went out. With a high hand, Ibn 8, section 46, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's Rabbi Lazar expounds upon the title verse, explaining that God, after created heaven and earth and the divisions of day and night, he created angels to sing praises by day and angels to sing praises at night. The angels that sing by day are on the right side, while the angels that sing by night are on the left side. The angels of the night include all three columns and they are above all the other singers. When they listen to the songs of the children of Israel by day, they gain knowledge and understanding of matters that they were unable to grasp previously. Heaven and earth signifying the male and the female also gain strength through the singing. Rabbi Nechmai then explains that he who achieves knowledge of the celestial singing will also merit profound knowledge of the Torah and wisdom through which he will learn what was and what will be. It was in this way that both David and Solomon gained knowledge indeed through that song Solomon was able to penetrate the essence of wisdom and he then composed many proverbs and wrote a book that he called the Song of Songs Rabbi Lazar then explains that the supernal singers began to sing at Levi's birth however their singing was not perfected until after Moshe was born Aharon was anointed and the Levites became sanctified because the actions of the lower beings complete the supernal ones when the singing of below issued from the tribes of Levi all were sanctified above and below and the worlds became one with one king dwelling over them we learned that the singers of below are called Levites because they are joined to and united with the singers above also the seed of Levi is joined to the Shechinah through Moses Aharon and Miriam before the birth of these three figures the supernal singers could not perform their function we're also told that Levi's descendant from Rome was called this because the mightiest nation Descended from him, however, his name is not mentioned because he secretly left his wife and later returned to her. When this happened, God rebuked the heavenly singers and they ceased their song until God extended his right hand to Aram. The relevance of this passage, the section introduces the theme of heavenly music that threads throughout the Zohar and is closely related to the mystery and wisdom of numbers. A reading of it helps to open and attune the inner ear, enabling us to start hearing the heartbreakingly beautiful chords of supernal music drifting in like distant waves and unlike earthly music carrying with it wisdom that defies all other forms of language and settles upon our souls like petals made of light. 324 And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. Shema 21 Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying, The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's Shir Hashem 11, we learned that when the Holy One blessed be he which is by the created his. World the wish he so wished and he created the heavens which is Zeir and with his right hand which is the secret of Shesedim and the earth which is the Nukba with his left hand which is the secret of Burat and he so desired to guide the day and the night that they should be paired in the secret of the passage and there was evening and there was morning one day Bear she 15 he created the angels who are drawn from Zeir and who are appointed by his kindness by day and he created the angels who are appointed to sing praises by night for the song is the secret of the illumination of Chakma that is drawn through the Nukba that is called night this is what is written Hashem will command his steadfast love had Chesed in the daytime Tehillim 429 through the angels who are appointed over Chesed and in the night his song shall be with me but through the angels who are appointed over the singing those on the right meaning those appointed over Chesed and those on the left Meaning those appointed over the singing those of the right listen to the singing of the day the singing of holy Israel because Israel sings praises by day Rabbi Yitzhak said those who say songs of praise by night listen to the singing of Israel by day as is written the companions hearken for your voice Sher Hashem 813 325 Rabbi Shimon said one group which is the left column is comprised of three groups meaning that it is comprised of all three columns and recites songs during the night this is the meaning of she rises also while it is yet night and gives food to her household Mishlei 3115 326 Rabbi Lazar said ten things were created on the first day among them being the attribute of night which is Malchut and the attribute of day which is Tiferet it is written about the attribute of night she rises also while it is yet night and gives food have to her household for food is judgments as is written he tears have me in his wrath Eoth 169 meaning the Wrath of Hashem tore me, it is also written, and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Misha 57 and, and a portion have chalked to her maidens. Mishlei 3115 rations are also judgments, as is written, the statute have chalked and an ordinance. Shemot 1525 and his statutes and his ordinances. Tehillim 14719. For this is a statute for
The time that it is receiving a spirit from holiness which is the secret of Chakma he knew the subjects of Torah and wisdom and heard and ascertained and added strength and power in the holy language which is the secret of the Mukba when it is receiving that from holiness which is the secret of Chakma 330 and Solomon gained more merit through the song and achieved wisdom and weight and searched and composed many proverbs and wrote a book from that very poem as written I acquired men. Singers and women singers Kahila 28 this means I learned the science of poetry from those lofty poems and those lower than them this is the meaning of the words the song of songs a song of all those singers of above a song which includes all that pertains to the Torah and to wisdom to strength and might what was and what will be a song that the singers above sing 331 Rabbi Lazar said all those who sing meaning the supernal singers stopped singing praises until Levi was born since the birth of Levi and afterwards they said praises but it was still not complete when Moses was born and Aaron was anointed and the Levites became sanctified the singing became complete and they stood the supernal singers on their watches 332 Rabbi Lazar also said at the moment of Levi's birth they opened the book and said that the Shechina said to Zeir and Pano that you were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother when I should find you outside and would kiss you and none would. Scorn me sure hasher made one know that you were my brother meaning that you should give me Chakma because from the point of view of Chakma Zeir and Pan and the Mukba are called brother and sister that suck the breast of my mother for then they both suck from Bina and are of an equal level when I should find you outside and would kiss you for the illumination of Chakma without Chesedim is on the outside she asked him to kiss him and shine from him also when she is outside and none. Would scorn me refers to the clipot that aroused on the outside to scorn the Shechina as it is written sin crouches at the door bear she 47 as soon as the singing of below emerged from the tribe of Levi dividing into right and left priests and Levites they were all sanctified standing on their watches meaning the supernal ministers and these angels became sanctified corresponding to these Levites companions as one because the actions of the lower beings complete the supernal ones. Then the worlds become as one and one king dwells over them. After all these preparations Solomon came and composed the book from the song of those singers as mentioned and the Chakma was concealed in it. 333 Rabbi Yehuda said why are the singers of below called Levites itis because they are attached had built them and joined as one above the reason being that the soul of the one became attracted and attached above to Hashem who hears the singing therefore Leah said will my husband be joined. To me Bereshit 2934 Rabbi Tanshim said the reason he was called Levi is because the seat of Levi is entirely attached to the Shechina by Moses Aaron and Miriam and to all his children after him they are attached to Hashem to serve him. 334 Come and behold at the time that the poets stood above they did not keep their post until the three brethren Moses Aaron and Miriam were born this may apply to Moses and Aaron but why Miriam Rabbi Yossi said it is written and women singers Kahila 28. And and Miriam answered them Shemot 1521 335 We have learned that when Levi was born the Holy One blessed be he took him and chose him from all his brothers and set him in the land and he begot Kahat and Kahat begot Amram who begot Aaron and Miriam he separated from his wife and when he brought her back the singers above were singing the Holy One blessed be he reproved them and the song ceased until he stretched out his right hand and extended it to Amram 336 Why was he called Amram? Because a mighty nation had Amram over all mighty nations descended from him why was his name not mentioned in the name of Rabbi Bay Rabbi Yehuda said it was because he discreetly left and secretly returned to his wife so that he would not be recognized as written and there went a man instead of and Amram went openly and took to wife the daughter of Levi Shema 21 she also returned in secret and was not mentioned by name section 47 and there went a man while Rabbi Bayou interprets the title verse as a reference to Gabriel who brought Amram's wife back to him. Rabbi Yehuda states that it refers to Amram who decided to marry his wife because he was urged to do so from above. Rabbi Yitzhak then explains that Amram was not worthy to give birth to Moses until he obtained a portion in the Sheshanah by marrying a daughter of Levi. He was then worthy of bearing a son with a great voice to whom God attached his name. Good Amram himself then married a divine voice and in this way he advanced to a higher level. The relevance of this passage once more we are shown the intricate clockwork mechanisms of cause and effect in life. How as the saying goes one good deed deserves another and that by helping others we help ourselves for there really is no other one. All is one. A reading of this passage also encourages the development of our inner voice by which we can emanate righteousness using holy thoughts and sacred words silently or to Spread the great peace we feel when close to the light letting it wash against the walls and doors and lives of all we pass by or meet each day pushing back the shadows by a hair's breadth each time to pave the streets with the jewels of our yearning for the feet of Mashiach to walk upon 337 Rabbi Bayou said and there went a man Shema 21 refers to Gabriel as it is written and the man Gabriel Daniel 921 for he went and returned her to Amram Rabbi Yehuda said it was actually Amram but his name is not mentioned because he was not going to marry his wife out of his own volition but rather from above because the urging of the Holy One blessed be he prevailed on him he went 338 Rabbi Yitzhak said why is it that by Aaron and Miriam the union of their parents is not mentioned in the Torah but by Moses is written and took to wife the daughter of Levi Shema 21 and he answers it I asked to show that the Shechinah is named after Levi and Amram was not worthy to beget Moses until he Took part with the Shechinah and did he beget Moses this is what is written and took to wife the daughter of Levi which is Shechinah therefore it is written and when she saw that he was a goodly liquid meaning that the Shechinah dwelt on him 339 Rabbi Lazar said Amram merited that there should emerge from him a son who would merit a great voice which is Zeir and Pen as is written and the Elohim answered him by a voice Shemot 1919 and Amram merited a divine voice which is Malchut as is written and took to wife the daughter of Levi meaning a divine voice led a daughter of a voice therefore it says and there went meaning he went to this level we learned that when Moses was born the Holy One blessed be he united his name over him as is written and when she saw that he was good and good is the name of the Holy One blessed be he as is written Hashem is good to all Tehillim 1459 and O taste and see that Hashem is good Tehillim 349 hence the Holy One blessed be he is. Called Good Section 48 and the King of Egypt died. Rabbi Yahashua of Sashnan explains that God did not remember or hear the prayers of Israel until the time when the supernal minister of Egypt fell from power as signified by the title verse. The relevance of this passage a reading of this section reminds us that we must wait patiently for change as the universal structure necessarily impedes the speed with which our prayers are answered, and impatience is its own obstacle. 340 and it came to pass in the course of those many days. Shema 223 Rabbi Yahashua of Sashnan said it was at the end of their exile that Israel were subjugated with all kinds of labor. In the course of those many days they were many to the sojourn of Israel in Egypt meaning that the end had arrived since the end of their exile was completed is written and the King of Egypt died. But what is the meaning ITIS that the minister of Egypt was lowered from his high position? And fell from his glory, therefore the Torah says about him, and the king of Egypt died since his descent was considered by him as death. Since the king of Egypt, who was their minister, fell, the Holy One blessed be he remembered Israel and heard their prayers. 341 Rabbi Yehuda said, Come and behold, as Rabbi Yahashua of Sashin said, as long as the minister held sway over Israel, the cries of Israel were not heard, but as soon as their minister fell, it is written, and the king of Egypt died. Immediately the children of Israel sighed by reason of their bondage, and they cried, and their beseeching rose to the Elohim of it, but until that time their beseeching was not answered. Section 49 Two tears into the Great Sea. Rabbi Lazar explains that when God has mercy on Israel, he suppresses the attribute of judgment by dropping two tears, signifying two attributes of judgment into the Great Sea, signifying the Sea of Wisdom in order to sweeten them in this way. He Turns the attribute of justice into the attribute of compassion. Rabbi Yitzhak then clarifies the apparent contradiction in the verse. Behold, Egypt marched after them, explaining that it refers to the deposed and powerless supernal minister of Egypt. Finally, Rabbi Ab answers Rabbi Yossi's question regarding the verse. Behold, the day of Hashem comes. This we're told refers to the day on which God
You see said it is not clear we see that one should say to a medium who obtains information through the bones of the dead that he and his words are false. 343 Rabbi Lazar said we do not follow the clip of necromancy it is not so rather the clarification of the matter is because we learned that in the tense firat of the king there are two tiers to the holy one blessed be he and there are two attributes of judgment judgment comes from both of them as is written these two things have befallen. Yu Yu 5119 and when the holy one blessed be he remembers his children he lowers them to the great sea the sea of wisdom which is Malchut to sweeten them and the attribute of judgment in Malchut is changed into the attribute of mercy and has compassion for them Rabbi Yehuda said there are two tiers from where the tears come and judgment comes 344 Rabbi Yehuda said it is written and behold Egypt marched after them Shema 1410 and Rabbi Yossi said this is the minister of Egypt IT. Appears that he was still in authority at the time the children of Israel left Egypt yet you say that and the king of Egypt died Shema 223 refers to the minister of Egypt and this was before Israel left Egypt Rabbi Yitzhak said these words of Rabbi Yosi are not contradictory but even maintain the above explanation of the passage which is that the king of Egypt died for it is written here and behold Egypt and there and the king of Egypt died this teaches that after the exodus from Egypt there was no king because beforehand they had removed him from his high position therefore it is written and behold Egypt instead of and behold the king of Egypt and he does not mean that he was nullified altogether only that they removed him from his high position and he could no longer harm as is written for all the men are dead who sought your life Shema 419 this means that they can no longer do harm also died here means that he could no longer do harm because he had been removed from his high position 345 said Rabbi Yitzhak said Rabbi Yahashua come and behold all the kings of Egypt were named Pharaoh yet here it says merely that the king of Egypt died and does not say Pharaoh the king of Egypt that is because what is being discussed is the minister of Egypt as mentioned earlier and if it were written Pharaoh instead then it would actually mean Pharaoh and not the minister of Egypt come and behold as long as there is rule over the nation above by the Minister, there is rule over the nation below when dominion above is removed from the minister of the nation, and dominion below is also removed. 346 Rabbi Yossi said it is written, Behold, the day of Hashem comes, Sekhariah 141, but it shall one day be known as Hashem's if it's seven he asks, and are not the rest of the days also Hashem's Rabbi Abba said it teaches that the other days are given over to the ministers, and that day will be of the Holy One, blessed be he, and not the ministers, in order to execute judgment upon the heathen on that day. All the ministers will fall from their high positions, and it is therefore written, and Hashem alone will be exalted on that day. Shea 217, because on that day the ministers will have no exaltation. Section 50 Does Hashem have a sword? Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Yitzhak discourse on the sword of God by which he executes justice. The verse that describes the angel of God who stands with a drawn sword in his hand signifies that. He was granted permission to execute judgment the words of the angel of death and I will reveal their place of slaughter refer to the disclosure of the sin that is the cause of death finally the verse and he put up his sword again into its sheath signifies the return of the permission to execute judgment to the judge to whom it belongs God the relevance of this passage this majestic vision of power and perfect order should be studied until it remains indelibly printed in our minds and can be summoned up in times of doubt or fear to remind us that the Lord our God is one and just as he holds up the arch of heaven with unerring might and reason the unimaginable vastness of galaxy sphere within swirling sphere no more than a wedding band of light upon his finger so he surely can govern without fault the querulous little kingdoms of our lives 347 Rabbi Abba said when the Holy One blessed be he executes judgment upon the ministers above it is written for my sword is stated in Heavens Yeshua 345 and he asks does Hashem have a sword Rabbi Yitzhak said he does have a sword as it is written the sword of Hashem is full of blood of its six end and with his sword upon all flesh of its 6616 348 Rabbi Abba said with the sword Hashem accomplishes the judgment that he performs as is written and saw the angel of Hashem standing between the earth and the heaven with a drawn sword in his hand I did Rahim 2116 and he asks was there a drawn sword in the hand of it angel and he answers rather it means he was granted permission to execute judgment and this permission is termed sword 349 he raised a difficulty for Rabbi Yahashua Barley by said the angel of death told me were it not for my consideration for the honor of creatures I would reveal the place of slaughter the slit in the neck just like in an animal so it appears that there is an actual sword in the hands of the angel of death Rabbi Abba said everything meaning wherever it is written sword by the supernal ones in first permission was granted to him to execute judgment and not the actual using of a sword and I will reveal their place of slaughter means that he will reveal the cause of death meaning the sin which is like a place of slaughter which is the cause of death of the animal it is written with his sword drawn in his hand Yahashua 513 as permission was given to him to execute judgment he asks if so what is the meaning of the passage and he put up his sword again into its sheath Ida Rehim 2127 Rabbi Abba said it means that the judgment was returned to the judge and the permission to execute judgment was returned to the one who possesses the permission meaning to Hashem section 51 and the children of Israel side from the discourse on the title verse we learn that this refers to the supernal children of Israel above Rabbi Lazar then describes the nature of the punishment that the ministers of the other nations receive when God judges them we learn that they are made to pass through the river of fire the fire that defeats fire where they lose their power and positions to ministers of other nations who rule in their place the relevance of this passage the vanity of human wishes is laid out here in this potent image showing how the mighty of this world fall no matter who they were it is what they were and what they did that matter in the end when a whole lifetime will seem like a brief and troubled dream it is an image we should use when tempted by the bottles and glittering trash with which the world rewards to serve another master a rose has thorns but a tempting apple does not 350 and the children of Israel side Shema 223 he asks it is not written they side with a reflexive form which would signify that they side because of their own troubles but rather with a transitive form which can be construed to mean that they possibly side because of the troubles of others he answers that is to say they sighed from above that the sighing was from them above meaning that the angel sighed for the children of Israel 351 Rabbi Brachia said the passage the children of Israel sighed Ibn refers to the children of Israel above meaning the angels the conclusion of the passage from the labor is to teach who are the children of Israel in this passage those who are called those who serve mean those who are of the supernal service namely the ministering angels therefore it is not necessary to deduce this from the fact that it is not written with a reflexive verb as the words of the previous paragraph and their cry rose up to the Elohim teaches us that until that hour their cry did not rise up before him 352 Rabbi Yitzhak said when the Holy One blessed be he punishes the company of supernal ministers namely the ministering angels and the ministers of the seventy nations what is the nature of that punishment Rabbi Lazar said he has them passed through another Dinner the river of fire and depose them from their positions and appoints different ministers of the other nations he said to him but it is written the flames of fire his ministers tell him 1044 thus how does this affect them if they pass through the river of fire he said to him there is fire that is stronger than fire and there is fire that rejects fire therefore even though they are of fire the fire of the river of fire is stronger and their punishment is done to the fiery angels section 52 a sigh cry whale rabbi Yitzhak discusses the distinction between a sigh cry and a whale we learn that crying involves words while wailing is crying without words because it comes from the heart prayer with wailing is the most powerful form of prayer rabbi Brachia gives the example of samuel who wailed to hashem all night because this form of prayer allows the closest access to god the intensity of the silent expression of prayer and sorrow is such that it can Effect a change in the decree judgment for the individual since wailing dominates the aspect of justice in this world and the world to come the relevance of this passage the section picks up again the theme of inner music of sound and vibration and should be read before plunging deeply into prayer that exceeds the boundaries of words and instead amplifies the pure chord of a yearning soul until it swoops outward as the music of humanity and its waves wash up against the throne upon which the great king sits listening for each wave that reaches him two more will be returned mingled within the echoing waters that break into a surf of
is implied from what is written and they sighed instead of using a reflexive verb as there was sighing for them from above 354 he asks how are wailing and crying different rabbi Yitzhak said there is no crying except in prayer as written here my prayer Hashem and give ear to my cry Tehillim 3913 and so but to you have I cried Hashem Tehillim 8814 and I cried to you and you have healed me Tehillim 303 so we see that cry means words of prayer and wailing means wailing without Saying anything meaning without words Rabbi Yehuda said wailing is therefore greater than all of them because wailing is in the heart this is written their heart wail to Adonai Egypt 218 wailing and crying out in prayer are closer to the Holy One blessed be he than prayer and sighing for it is written and they wail to me I will surely hear their wail Shema 2222 355 Rabbi Brachia said the Holy One blessed be he said to Shmuel I regret that I have set up Saul to be king to Shmuel 1511 it is written it grieved Shmuel and he wailed to Hashem all night but he forsook everything meaning sighing and crying and took to be wailing because it is closer to the Holy One blessed be he than all of them this is what is written and now behold the wail of the children of Israel have come before me Shema 39 356 the sages taught that it is considered a complete prayer in the heart when one prays and weeps and wails until he can no longer move his lips it never returns empty. But rather is accepted Rabbi Yehuda said wailing has great value for it tears the decree judgment of the person from all his days 357 Rabbi Yitzhak said wailing is of great value for it has power over the attribute of judgment above Rabbi Yossi said wailing is of great value for it has power in this world and in the world to come because of wailing a person acquires this world and the world to come as is written they wail to Hashem in their distress he delivered them from there. Afflictions Tehillim 1076 section 53 my beloved is mine and I am as he feeds among the roses Rabbi Shimon first discourses on the creation of the upper and lower worlds he explains that God created both worlds at the same moment by one thought he chose the angels to be his servants in the upper realm and he chose Israel to be his children in the lower realm in the title verse my beloved is mine and I am as signifies the reciprocation of this filial. Relationship between God and Israel Rabbi Shimon then interprets the symbolic meaning of he feeds among the roses this we're told signifies that God leads this world from the attribute of judgment alluded to by the red color of the rose to the attribute of mercy alluded to by the white color of the nectar Rabbi Abba then expounds upon the spiritual significance of the scent of the rose and explaining that this is why we smell the myrtle at the end of Shabbat another explanation of the title. Verse interprets it as an allusion to the sinner who is called red who puts a sacrificial offering into the fire which is also red and then sprinkles the blood around the altar the white smoke that rises from the burnt offering alludes to the conversion of the attribute of justice into the attribute of compassion the burning of incense involves the same principle since both the offering and the scent of the offering is red and white Rabbi Yossi then explains that this also applies to the Individual who must offer red and white in order to obtain atonement since the destruction of the temple man must sacrifice his own fat white and blood red by fasting the fasting causes the body to weaken and burn symbolizing the sacrificial fire and the scent that rises from his mouth is then an altar of atonement the section concludes with alternative explanations of the title verse one of which points out that just as roses could not exist without thorns the righteous would not be recognizable without the wicked the relevance of this passage the section is of tremendous importance for all of its component parts are concerned with the subject that is only raised directly at the end the question of the nature and purpose of evil in the world this is one of the most profound issues in all of the Zohar and is not as easily grasped as one might think at first we must give its metaphors and analogies space to grow to expand and reveal themselves fully for all they may Seem like the opposite of night darkness is not the opposite of light in reality but rather the absence of light, and an absence is not a true quality we must thus be careful in equating evil with good for it is incorrect to think of the situation as if it were too mighty and opposed empires the Lord our God is one he has no rivals or contenders for the throne and if we were truly aware of who it is we harm when we harm another it would not be possible to inflict that harm the question of whether evil is ever consciously performed or whether it is just what happens in the absence of good is far too complex to own a simple straightforward answer indeed it is bound up within the mysteries of creation and duality themselves and the Zohar rarely deals with simple questions which is why its circling echoing debates often require the reader to partake with the rabbis of the very thought processes themselves that sometimes lead to answers or conclusions too deep for words, yet Nonetheless accessible to a mind sufficiently still to become a mirror for the heart for those who desire it diligently enough the Zohar can teach us how to think with the heart and how to feel with the mind it is a process sometimes referred to as transmuting base metals into gold bear in mind though that no one would want a heart of gold since it is a light heart that lives long although they often punch the very envelope of the mind's ability to understand and to understand itself, so. That which sees can see itself, the rabbis always manage to enjoy themselves as well they laugh as often as they weep so should we 358 now Moses kept the flock of Yitro his father-in-law the priest of Midian Shema 31 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying my beloved is mine and I am as he feeds among the roses Sure Hashem 216 Rabbi Shimon said woe to people who do not pay attention and do not know that all the worlds arose in one thought at the moment it arose in thought before. Hashem to create his world and with this thought were they all created as it is written in wisdom have you made them all Tehillim 10424 and with this thought which is wisdom this world and the world above were created 359 he stretched out his right hand and created the world above which is Zeir and he stretched out his left hand and created this world which is Malchut this is what is written my hands have also laid the foundation of the earth which is Malchut and my right hand has spanned the heavens which is Zeir and when I call to them they stand up together Yeshua 4813 all of them were created in a moment and he made this world corresponding to the world above the model of all that is above emerged below for there is nothing below that has no root in the higher worlds the sea is the model of all that there is below on the earth and it is all one he created angels in the higher worlds he created people in this world he created Olivia and in the sea as is written to couple the tent together that it might be one Shema 3618 360 it is written about Adam for in the image of Elohim made him and bear sheet 96 and yet you have made him a little lower than the angels Tehillim 85 if people are so precious with their actions yet they perish from the dust of the well meaning they perish through the clipot that cling to the dust of Malchut which is called well how can they come to draw sustenance from the well and he chose those above angels and he chose the children of Israel he did not call those above children but those below he did call children this is what is written you are the children of Hashem your Elohim Devarim 141 he called them children and they called him father as is written for you are our father Yeshua 6316 and also my beloved is mine and I am his sure Hashem 216 he chose me and I chose him 361 he feeds among the roses he grazes among the roses even though the thorns surround them meaning the clipot. And no other can feed among the roses as he another explanation of he feeds among the roses is that as the rose is red and the nectar that is sucked from my tea is white so the holy one blessed be he leads his world from the attribute of judgment alluded to by the red to the attribute of mercy which is alluded to in the color white as it is written though your sins be like scarlet they shall be white as snow Yeshua 118 362 Rabbi Abba was traveling on the road with Rabbi Yitzhak they came. Upon some roses Rabbi Abba took one rose in his hands and continued walking Rabbi Yossi met them and said it is certain that the Sheshanah is here I see a rose in the hands of Rabbi Abba and that he has to learn from my tea much wisdom because I know he took it only to teach that wisdom 363 Rabbi Abba said sit my son sit they sat down Rabbi Abba smelled that rose he said the world is definitely maintained only by the scent for it is the secret of the mokin of the illumination of Chakma that Radiate from below upwards as does scent because I see that the soul is maintained only through the scent therefore we smell the myrtle at the end of Shabbat in order to draw the mokin of the illumination of Chakma which is the secret of its scent as already mentioned 364 he opened the discussion saying my beloved is mine and I am as he feeds among the roses sure Hashem 216 meaning that my beloved is mine and I am as because he leads his world with roses the rose has a scent and it is red yet squeeze it and it turns white but its scent never leaves and the Holy
Column from which source is Chakma and Rabbi Yehuda said that it is written and they cut themselves according to their fashion with swords and lances till the blood gushed out upon them. I may 1828 but they knew that they would not get from the attribute of judgment which is Malchut what they wanted, namely to draw the Chakma from above to below which all idol worshippers want, except with red, meaning through the left column which is red and they therefore cut themselves with swords until blood gushed over them in order to attract the red. 366 Rabbi Yitzhak said moreover red and white which are left and right are always close and the scent arises from them both. This is because the Chakma which is in the left is not able to illuminate without being clothed with the light of Shesedim that is in the right and therefore as the rose is red and white so is the scent of the offering and the offering itself is of red and white come and behold from the scent of it. In sense some of the spices are red and some are white, namely the frankincense is white, pure myrrh is red and the scent rises from red and white, therefore he leads his world in roses which are red and white, and it is written to offer me the fat and the blood, Yashiskal 4415, the fat is white and the blood is red, 367, correspondingly a person who offers his fat and blood is granted atonement for the one is red and the other is white, just as the rose which is red and white is not cast to turn completely white save in fire, similarly the offering is not cast so as to turn it completely white except in fire, now one who fasts and offers his fat and blood does not get in so as to turn completely white save in fire, for Rabbi Yitzhak said through the fasting of man his limbs become weakened and the fire gains control over him and at that time he must offer his fat and blood in that fire and that is called the altar of atonement, 368, this is what Rabbi Lazar would pray and say. When he fasted it is revealed and known before you Hashem my Elohim and the Elohim of my fathers that I have offered up before you my fat and blood and I have seated them with the heat of the weakness of my body may it be your will that the scent that rises from my mouth at this moment shall be as the scent that rises from an offering in the fire of the altar and you shall favor me 369 so we find that a person offers in his fasting the fat and blood and the scent that rises from his mouth is an altar of atonement therefore they instituted prayer in place of the offering with the stipulation that one should intend that which we said Rabbi Yitzhak said from here and further it is written everything that passes through the fire you shall make it go through fire and it shall be clean Demet bar 3123 meaning that through the fire it has been returned to be entirely white Rabbi Yossi said when the temple was in existence a person would offer his sacrifices in this manner in the secret of the red and white and the scent that rises from them and its return to whiteness through the fire is explained and he is granted atonement now the prayer of the person atones for him in place of the offering in that way of the intention concerning the offering 370 another explanation of the passage my beloved is mine and I am as he feeds among the roses sure Hashem 216 just as the roses have thorns prevalent among them the holy one blessed be he conducts his world with righteous and wicked people just as the roses could not exist without the thorns the righteous would not be recognizable were it not for the wicked for Rabbi Yehuda said how are the righteous recognized because there are wicked people another explanation he feeds among the roses he leads his world in six years because the word Shishanim roses I as composed of the letters Shishanim six years and the seventh is Shabbat to Hashem another explanation among the roses means by those who study the Torah because Yeshanim has the same derivation as Shona to study section 54 now Moses kept the flock Rabbi Shia begins the discourse on the title verse by explaining that as a worthy shepherd guides his flock to good pastures and treats them tenderly God guides his children on the straight and righteous path we learn that God saw that Moses was a wise and considerate shepherd over Yitro's flock and he knew that Moses would lead Israel with these same qualities. Therefore God made him king over all of Israel Rabbi Yehuda then expounds upon the qualities and benefits of a good leader of Israel Rabbi Yossi follows this discussion with a discourse on Moses' journey to Mount Sinai we learn that both Moses and the mountain were prepared for each other from the time of creation as soon as Moses saw it he knew it was the mountain of God and he was drawn to it he saw birds flying from the mountain and falling at his feet and interpreting the sign he led. Israel far away into the desert and ascended the mountain alone from this there follows a discussion of the fiery flame in which God appeared to Moses we learn that this flame represents judgment since the flame appeared at the time of Mincha in their discussion the rabbis also explained that because the evening is a time of judgment and the morning is a time of mercy it is proper to eat bread in the morning and meat at night the relevance of this passage the section 2 is of events importance outlining for us the pivotal moment in human history that is also the turning point in every human life like the previous passage this one is not susceptible to simple exposition either would man have stood face to face with God talking with him like a friend and receiving the law if there had been no Moses are the 10 suggestions for a decent life in a righteous society natural law does every person instinctively know right from wrong or is this knowledge earned through Suffering why does God seem to require suffering from those he befriends why does Moses require the counsel of Yitro why does he allow Aaron to construct the golden calf what does this signify why does Moses have to veil his face from the people what is the meaning of the cloudy pillar or pillar of cloud in which God appears why do we need to know every last detail and measurement of the ark is the section analogous to the building of Solomon's temple if so why the special significance of a craftsman who specializes in bronze casting in both accounts and what relevance can all this have for us now these are the kinds of questions that will be posed and handled often recurring throughout the many many pages ahead until an answer has been delivered to head heart or soul or all three what is most relevant here is that we are witnessing the blueprint for a righteous society on the drawing board and will learn that without righteousness there is no world indeed no creation for it Sometimes appears that the creation exists so that we can learn to be righteous in it and it is sustained solely by righteousness by righteousness too will we see God who is a hidden treasure waiting to be found and wanting to be found since for this did he make the universe there should be a sense of on the reader at this stage knowing that he or she is about to discover not just life secrets but God's very own secrets if the Torah is the key then the Zohar is the lock in which it turns. 371 Now Moses kept the flock of Yitro his father-in-law the priest of Midian Shema 31 Rabbi she opened the discussion saying a psalm of David Hashem is my shepherd I shall not want Tehillim 231 Hashem is my shepherd means the shepherd of mine in the same way that a shepherd leads his sheep and brings them to a good pasture to a fat pasture to a place of a stream of water he straightens their path with righteousness and justice also of the Holy One blessed be he it is written he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul 372 Rabbi Yossi said the way of the shepherd is to lead his flock with righteousness to distance them from stealing to lead them on a plane and at all times the rod is in his hand so that they do not turn off right or left so does the holy one blessed be he do he hurts Israel leading them on a plane with the rod constantly in his hand so they will not turn right or left 373 another explanation of now Moses kept the flock Rabbi Yossi said no that as long as the shepherd is skillful in managing his sheep he is ready to accept the yoke of the kingdom of heaven if the shepherd is a simpleton it is said of him there is more hope of a fool than of him Mishlei 2612 374 Rabbi Yehuda said Moses was wise and knowledgeable in leading his flock come and behold we learn this from David and he is tending the sheep by Shmuel 1611 which teaches us that he was very wise and tended his sheep. Properly and appropriately the Holy One blessed be he therefore made him king over all of Israel and why sheep and not cows because the children of Israel are named sheep as written but you my flock the flock of my pasture are men Yashiskel 3431 and like the flock of sacrifices like the flock of Jerusalem Yashiskel 3638 375 as one attains life in the world to come due to the sheep when they are offered upon the altar he who leads the children of Israel properly attains due to them. Life in the world to come furthermore he who herds the sheep takes the lambs to his bosom when they use give birth so that they will not tire and be fatigued and the shepherd carries the lambs after their mothers and pities them so should the leader of the children of Israel lead them mercifully and without cruelty and thus did Moses say that you should say to me carry them in your bosom Bimidbar 1112 376 as a good shepherd saves the sheep from the wolves and lions the leader of Israel if he is good saves them from the heathen and the judgment of below and of above and guides them into the life of the world to come Moses was such
Far away into the desert Ibn Rabbi Yossi said since the day that Moses was born the Holy Spirit did not move away from him he saw through the Holy Spirit that the desert was holy and prepared to receive upon it the yoke of heavenly kingdom what did he do he led the flock to the desert Rabbi Yitzhak said far away lit after the desert and not in the desert for he did not want them to come into it but led them away from the desert 379 and came to the mountain of the Elohim to Horeb. Shema 31 he alone came without the sheep Rabbi Yitzhak said there is a stone that draws and receives metal and the metal jumps on it when it sees it so with Moses and Mount Sinai when they appeared to each other he jumped on it this is what is written and he came to the mountain of Elohim to Horeb. 380 Rabbi Abba said they were designated from the six days of creation the one together with the other on that day the mountain quaked before Moses when he saw him entering it and jumping upon. If the mountain quieted this teaches us that they were happy with each other 381 Rabbi and I said Moses knew that the mountain was the mount of the Elohim is written and came to the mountain of the Elohim we learned what Moses saw on that mountain he saw birds fly spreading their wings yet not approaching it 382 Rabbi Yitzhak says he saw birds flying and soaring from their falling at Moses' feet he immediately noticed it and stood the flock away from the desert and entered alone 383 and the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush Shema 32 Rabbi Tanshim said it was the time for the afternoon prayer upon which the attribute of judgment has sway Rabbi Yoshan and said that it is written Hashem will command his Chesed in the daytime Tehillim 429 it mentions the attribute of Chesed not the attribute of judgment Rabbi Yitzhak said when the light sets until it descends it is called day which is the attribute of Chesed once it descends. It is called evening which is the attribute of judgment as written and Elohim called the light day Bear sheep 15 384 Rabbi Yoshan and said the time of Mincha is from the sixth hour or less as we learned Rabbi Yitzhak said that it is written at evening you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall be filled with bread Shema 1612 at twilight the time of judgment you shall eat meat and it is written and while the meat was yet between their teeth the wrath of Hashem was inflamed. Against the people, Demidbar 1133. This is because at twilight, the judgment of Malchut has sway, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Since that time is considered Chesed, it is also written, The mercy of El endures continually lit all the day. Tehillim 523. And an Elohim called the light day, which is in the morning. 385. Rabbi Tanshim said, The one is red, and the other is white. Red at twilight is written, At evening you shall eat meat, and white in the morning is written, And in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Rabbi Yitzhak said, It is written, And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it towards evening. Shema 126, which is the time to execute judgment. Rabbi Yehuda said, We have deduced from the two daily sheep. One is offered to correspond to the attribute of Chesed, and the second corresponds to judgment. 386. Rabbi Yehuda also said, Why is it written, The one lamb shall you offer in the morning? Demidbar 284 instead of it. First lamb but the one lamb soul one to corresponds to the attribute of Chesed for it never says of the second that it was good. 387 Rabbi Tanshim said Isaac therefore composed the prayer of Mincha which is corresponds to the attribute of judgment. Rabbi Yitzhak said from this woe to us for the day declines for the shadows of the evening are lengthened. Yermea 64 for the day declines is the attribute of Chesed for the shadows of the evening are lengthened for the attribute of judgment has already gained the ascendancy. Abraham composed the morning prayer corresponds to the attribute of Chesed. 388 the sages taught why he appeared to Moses in a fiery flame which is judgment at the time that Moses ascended on Mount Sinai. Rabbi Yaakov said and the time caused it meaning it was the time of judgment namely the time of Mincha. Rabbi Yossi said everything meaning the flame of fire the name Horeb and the bush is all rooted to one stem it is written he came to the Mountain of the Elohim to Horeb Shema 31 and at Horeb you angered Hashem to Barum 98 and an angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush Shema 32 meaning they would eventually be like a bush as it is written as thorns cut down burned in fire Yeshua 33 12 the place caused it for the children of Israel would eventually send there and become like a bush therefore he appeared in a fiery flame which is judgment that burns up the wicked as written thorns cut down burned in fire section 55 out of the midst of a bush Rabbi Yehuda first explains that the burning bush is an allusion to the fire of Gehenna that punishes but does not utterly destroy the wicked thus it signifies God's compassion towards the wicked we then learn that God appeared to Moses in the flame of fire because Moses was unlike all the other prophets and only he was able to approach the flame without being burned by it this was because Moses' soul was drawn from a place from where no other was drawn. His unique connection to mercy allowed him to confront judgment without fear. Rabbi Shimon then establishes that although Bilam was Moses' counterpart, Bilam drew strength from the lower crowns and he acted according to impurity below, while Moses drew from the holy crown above and his actions were performed according to holiness. This follows the duality inherent in all aspects of the universe. Finally, Rabbi Yoshanan refers to Rabbi Yitzhak's interpretation of the title verse to explain that the burning bush was a sign to reassure Moses that Israel would not succumb under the burden of their oppression. The relevance of this passage, while it is an awesome prospect, the burning bush is also here defined as a gentle, reassuring symbol. Its flames, much like the fires of love that give delight and do not burn, or the supernal light in which form God first manifests himself within creation. Another analogy would be atomic. Energy used for peaceful purposes, a raging white hot holocaust that destroys nothing, aware that they are about open the vault of God's secrets. The rabbis are now intent on gently leading us into take our place at their feet with deceptively simple answers to even more deceptively simple questions. Few symbols are more relevant or potent as the burning bush, though, and the section allows us raise it high into the soul's dark night as guiding light and emblem of the power that binds the atom and also rages within the molten inferno of stars, and yet also lights our way with the promise that not so much as a hair on our head will be ever be in danger of burning. The Zohar at this point begins to feel like a mighty ship whose engines turbines are gathering speed, whose vast wheels within wheels begin to turn faster and faster, turning the waters into foam as it heads for open sea. 389 Rabbi Yehuda said, From here we learn the compassion of the place, meaning of the Holy One, blessed be he. Towards the wicked for it is written and behold the bush burned with fire Shema 32 to punish the wicked with it as mentioned above but the bush was not consumed but meaning that they were not utterly destroyed burned with fire is all the same an allusion to the fire of Gehenna meaning even though the fire appeared to Moses who was righteous it is nonetheless an allusion to the fire of Gehenna which is for the wicked but the bush was not consumed so it does not destroy them utterly. 390 another explanation of and the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire Shema 32 he asks why did he appear to Moses in a flame of fire and not to the other prophets Rabbi Yehuda said Moses is not like the other prophets for we learned that everyone who approaches the fire is burnt by it yet Moses approached it and was not burnt as it is written and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where the Elohim was Shema 2018 and, and the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of Fire out of the midst of a bush 391 Rabbi Abba said in the subject of Moses we should observe it with supernal wisdom why is it written because I drew him out of the water Shema 210 this comes to teach us that one who is drawn from water which is Jesus does not fear fire which is judgment Rabbi Yehuda said because we have learned the place from where the soul of Moses was derived no other person was derived Rabbi Yoshan and said he was composed of the ten levels of Zeir and Benazis written he is the trusted one in all my house Bimidbar 127 which is the Mukba it is not written the trusted of my house which would imply the trusted of the Mukba but rather it is written he is the trusted which means the trusted of Zeir and which is higher than the Mukba blessed is the portion of the person whose master testifies of him thus 392 Rabbi Dimi said is it not written and there arose not a prophet since in Israel like Moses Debarim 3410 and Rabbi Yehoshua Bar Levi said. In Israel none arose but among the nations of the world there did arise and who is he is Bilam so how can you say that no other person was hewn from the place that
Words of Rabbi Shimon, it appears that there are those above and those below right and left mercy and judgment. The children of Israel and the heathen, the children of Israel utilize the crowns of above which are holy, the heathen utilize the crowns of below which are not holy. Those of Israel are of the right and those of the heathen are of the left. Nevertheless, the upper prophets of Israel differ divided from the lower prophets of the heathen. The prophets of holiness are separate from it. Prophets that are not from holiness. 395 Rabbi Yehuda said, just as Moses differed from all the prophets in the holy supernal prophecy, Bilam was similarly separate from the other prophets below the magicians of non holy prophecy. Moses nevertheless was above and Bilam below and many levels divided them. 396 Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Yitzhak that Moses thought and said, perhaps heaven forbid the children of Israel will expire from this hard labor as it is written and Looked on their burdens. Shema 211. Therefore, the angel of Hashem appeared to him in a flame of fire, and he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. Shema 32. That is, they are enslaved to hard labor, but the bush was not consumed. Namely, they do not perish in exile, as mentioned above. Happy are Israel, that the Holy One blessed be. He separated them from all nations and called them children, as it is written, You are the children of Hashem, your Elohim, Devarim 141.